you know on your zoom uh, there is a, you know the name that is getting displayed is pushpalata narawat uh, if you can okay. just ask pakej ji to uh, just okay. on okay. that and uh, the name can be <laughs> changed yes ma'am uh richard did you send it to uh, faculty members also university ma'am i have sent ma'am i have sent it not only to school of languages i have sent it to everybody including registrar okay. office and okay. uh, everybody so we have had uh, quite a few registrations so everybody will be joining in uh, okay. actually it was supposed to begin at 10 but um, i had uh, i have i have asked the students to join a little before 10 so that we did we we were greedy about your time also so so um let me just uh, introduce myself to everyone uh, i am dr richard joshi pande assistant professor in charge department of english and uh, today we are here to um to 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 inaugurate this uh, the academic study of children's literature a workshop by uh, jointly organized by dun university and uh, room to read and uh, we have for the inaugural address and the welcome address and the inaugural lecture we have with us honorable vice chancellor ma'am uh, professor surekha dangwal Pro honorable vice chancellor doon university okay. professor surekha dangwal is the honorable vice chancellor at doon university dehradun she has served as the head of department modern european and other foreign languages at chandi garhwal university shrinagar garhwal has over 33 years of teaching and research experience she has been a recipient of the prestigious dard fellowship germany she has been engaged with national and international assignments in the field of english studies and women studies she has been a visiting faculty at tarleton state university texas usa her research interests focus on south asian south asian uh, women studies diaspora literature literary theory she has published several research papers popular articles she has translated into english the works of several local poets several writers she is the author of several acclaimed books she has done several research projects in the area of post colonial studies several phd uh, scholars have done their phd under her several mphil scholars have done their mphil under her she is the member of many prestigious uh, uh, bodies in literature like south asian literary association she has been the member and convener of several committees of several universities and institutions across india so those her who know her like i do as her former former student from garhwal university she is as erudite as she is generous without further ado i welcome honorable vice chancellor ma'am professor surekha dangwal ma'am to inaugurate this event with her ardently awaited lecture ma'am please thank you so much dr richa uh <clears throat> good morning to all the participants of this workshop on the academic study of children literature organized by uh, jointly organized by room to read us8 and department of english doon university it is my proud privilege to extend a warm welcome to each one of you on behalf of university and especially i feel privileged in welcoming our today's special guests and his esteemed scholars and his speakers uh first of all i would like to welcome alicia berger associate director literacy room to read global office then we have dr anto thomas uh, he is from saint thomas uh, college dr usha mudiganti from ambedkar university and dr preeti joshi from university of delhi we have dr sakti brata asena program director room to read india dr diti bias academic head children literature and education and the learned scholars associated with this mission of room to read uttarakhand chapter uh, mukesh notyal a well known famous author and artist of children literature shri nand kishore hatwal ji he is again a very well known personality from scert uttarakhand we have manohar chamoli another famous children writer and my special thanks to ms pushpalata rawat 
a person instrumental for this event especially she is behind this event she came to me took my interview and we discussed about the possibility of such event in dune university then we bring dr richa joshi into it and uh, i really i'm very happy that she is there to organize it on behalf of dune university so my warm welcome to organizing team of this workshop and i really appreciate the efforts of dr richa uh, joshi she is head department of english dune university uh, i know her as a student as well as she is very talented faculty member and a voracious reader of english literature as i am associated with her since her phd in 2011 12 in uh, hnb gadwal university uh, my another student dr manjulika is dr manjulika in sonali lakheda dr aditi best they all are associated with department of english all the students of english uh, department my special love to them being a member of english literature fraternity a warm welcome to all the faculty members of the university especially the faculty members of the department of uh, different five foreign languages in the university uh when uh, richa was reading about me and talking about my specialization so children literature has never been but i don't know that this is only the branch of literature very very close to my heart and i love to read uh, books related to children literature and when pushpalata came to me and she has shown me a lot of uh, pictures and caricatures depicting the uttarakhand culture and a very cute nice uh, poems and stories and how through cultural corridors uh, we can inbuilt or we can instill uh, the the culturally rich heritage of any region around the world in the mind of children but uh, uh, if i talk about children literature i feel that this is at the same time very very responsible work to be done and room uh, um, of the uh, what is what is exactly richa room to read yes this room to read is doing that responsibility is bearing that responsibility on its shoulders as i feel that research around the world shows the importance of children literature and through this children literature we are giving access to children to all varieties of literature it's extremely extremely important for their overall growth not only is reading literature important in developing cognitive skills to be able to succeed in a school or work setting but it is valuable for other reasons as well and when i feel what are the reasons to uh, to make our children um, uh, these books available to them and to inspire them to motivate them to read i feel that it is important because it provides students with opportunity to respond to literature at the same time it gives students appreciation about their own cultural heritage as well as those of others it also helps children develop emotional intelligence and creativity by transmitting important literature and themes from one generation to the next lot of stories are there Uh, our grandparents they narrated those stories uh, they told those stories to us and the same way uh, i i transmitted those stories to my children and i hope they will transmit it to their next generations and it is from one society to uh, the next uh, generation of a particular society to particular nations and in this way i feel that quality literature does not tell the reader everything he she needs to know if we provide everything in a very judgmental process within a framework within a structure to provide children that it stops their imagination to think it stops their their power of taking decision or their ability to take decision i think a good literature a quality children literature allows some difference of opinion and provide a space for dissent while analyzing literature multi dimensional understanding for a subject is possible we know being a student of literature in a reader response theory 
that as many as readers are there, as many as responses are there, as many as viewpoints are there. And it is in the roots of children literature to teach us to respect others' viewpoint, to teach us, you know, there, there should be nothing like anything imposed on us in one manner to follow it and not to follow it. So whenever we provide provide any kind of framework to our generation being a capacity of, of the head of the institution or a teacher or a head of the family or a fellow creatures. We always keep these things in mind that we should have some kind of liberty and respect for others' point of view. And when I say children literature provides an avenue for students to learn about their own cultural heritage and at the same time, culture of other people. It is crucial for children to learn these values because developing positive attitudes towards our own culture and cultures of others is necessary for both social and personal development. When we talk about other cultures, one should be very, very careful as I, as I told that it is a responsibility of we people to provide a literature to the student which, which provide them a very, very open and liberal mindset. And it is very carefully selected literature and books to recommend to our children. And the responsibility is doubled when we see the outburst of technology, when we see the series of things, you know, our children at home watching uh, morning to evening during this pandemic. What they are watching, the violence, the filthy language, the abuses of the adults, the lot of stuff of the um, uh, 18 plus things are there. But the student of 9, 10 years old and ten year, the tender age students or children are watching all these stuff. We feel ourselves very helpless when we talk about quality children literature when we talk about what kind of books to be recommended to them. And when we see our children, you know, all the time playing in their Android phones, their iPhones and their laptop, watching whatnot because they want new things every time. And every time there is no series to be launched and no pictures, no new pictures to be launched. And if they are there, what kind of pictures and series are there? So again, it becomes very, very important that we should instill a habit of reading in our children. Because when we say don't uh, watch your uh, TV screen or your Netflix every time, then what is an alternative? It is our duty to provide them an alternative to read. And when we don't know what to recommend and what not to recommend, when we don't know what is healthy and what is not healthy, what is classic and what is not classic, then what kind of recommendation we will have for our children. And I feel that there are many stories and folk tales which, which contain blatant stereotypes. When I say that we are carefully and responsibility is there to select the books. Why? Because in children literature too, in the name of children literature, we have certain folk tales, we have uh, certain story books, which contain some kind of stereotypes and inaccuracies about certain culture, groups, and genders. The Cinderella stories are there, very, very famous. Among children, the rough-faced girl is there, Sister Sky is there, the depiction of Native Americans in a very, very misguided way, the, the uh, selection of a particular gender, especially the female, in a very, very misguided way, and we provide them so they understand uh, they, they not only understand, but they structure or they develop a structure about the role of men and women, the gendered role of a particular gender in a society. When we talk about a healthy classical literature, we have Mark Twain's An Adventure of Tom Sawyer. We have Mark Twain's An Adventure of Huckleberry Bean. They are considered the masterpiece as the immortal friendship of Huck Finn and the Negro boy Jim. And we know the student of literature when they both are floating on, the, uh, on their shanty, on their small uh, boat uh, in, on a, in a River Mississippi. Everything is very good between them. They, that time, they did not feel or they don't feel like 
uh, Negro and white and non-white, they don't have that feeling. But as soon as they touch the shore, the word of the adults are open in front of them. And they start asking the question, who is this Negro boy? Why, why? Uh, okay, there is... There is one panelist talking that I should use Hindi as well. That's very good. Uh, I, I thought that Department of English is involved. So that was, again, stereotype and misguiding in my mind. So what I feel is that Finn, the adventure of Huck Finn, Mark Twain, is very famous. When they are in the river Mississippi, they are both traveling. Jim is a Negro boy. Huck Finn is a white boy. और जब वो जा रहे हैं तो उनकी फ्रेंडशिप नेचर के बिल्कुल नजदीक है यू नो चिल्ड्रन लिटरेचर नेचर वाइज भी सेंसिबल होता है सेंसिटिविटी डालनी चाहिए तो वो उनके पास वाटर है उनके पास अनएंडिंग रिवर मिसिसिपी है तो वो दे हार्डली बॉदर अबाउट देयर कॉम्प्लिकेटेड रिलेशनशिप बट एज सुन एज दे टच द शोर वो आते हैं कहीं पे उनकी शैंटी वो बांधते हैं और उतरते हैं people started asking the questions and people started telling them like ye kon hai ye are you a runaway uh, negro who you are you know their identity start revealing and start people start talking about them so very undue situation is there so very nicely mark twain handled the psychology of children very very nicely handled that they are away, away from all these madding crowd. They are away from these hustle and bustle of the city life. They are just what they are, you know, in their, in their uh, natural way, they are talking to each other when they are children, as we say, children are innocent. In India also, we have Jatak Katha, we have Panchatantra, Ramayan, Mahabharat, and in 20th century, Chanda Mama, late 20th century, Champak, Chacha Chaudhary, we, the children like, um, uh, when I was a child, we grew up by reading these stories. And these stories depict culture as an important piece of society that is to be treasured and valued. Or ye jo champa, chanda mama, or ye jo sari chijan jinko padke hum badebe. Or jin me Rupert Madok ka naam apne suna hoga ki unhone kaha tha ki Ramayana Mahabharat ka jo animated version hai. वो अमेरिकन चिल्ड्रन को बताना चाहिए और एक बार उन्होंने उसका कॉपीराइट खरीद लिया था सो व्हाट आई एम टेलिंग कि दीस काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स अगर वो उसमें भी अगर आप स्टीरियोटाइप निकालेंगे तो इट इज अ मैटर ऑफ रिसर्च अगेन कि आपका जो बॉडी शेम है कोई मोटा आदमी है उस पर आप हंस रहे हैं कोई काला आदमी है उस पर आप हंस रहे हैं और कोई जेंडर वाइज आप कोई डायलॉग उसमें है तो आप कैसे जेंडर स्टीरियोटाइप इन इन सारी चिल्ड्रन बुक में देखते हैं तो वो सारी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी हमको देखनी है वाइल प्रमोटिंग चिल्ड्रन लिटरेचर इन एवरी कल्चर इन एवरी रीजन वी हैव टू सी दैट व्हाट काइंड व्हाट काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स एंड व्हाट काइंड ऑफ threats and challenges uh, because we are providing it we are telling that they have their tender age and tender mind or a koi slate or hum kuch likhne ja rahe hain to jo hum likhenge uski identity kyunki ek bachcha koi bhi identity leke paida nahi hota lekin hum uske andar wo identity dalte hain to jab wo hum usko wo identity de rahe hain to we at the same time we should be very very careful about what kind of identity we are giving to our children through these books which we feel that very nice kuch bhi आप खरीद के लिए आए और उनको दे दें तो वो एक उनके दिमाग में एक स्ट्रक्चरिंग होती है जो कि डेंजरस होती है एंड एज आई सेड इन द बिगनिंग दैट चिल्ड्रन चिल्ड्रन लिटरेचर हेल्प इन सस्टेनिंग इमोशनल स्ट्रेंथ इन चिल्ड्रन सो उनकी जो इमोशनल क्वेश्चन आप कहते हैं कि आजकल आईक्यू से ज्यादा कंपनीज और मल्टीनेशनल uh, और कोई भी इंस्टीट्यूशन आपको एज ए ह्यूमन बींग देखना पसंद करता है और ये देखता है कि आप एज ए ह्यूमन बींग कितने वाइबल हैं और कितने आप अपने फेलो क्रेचर का ध्यान रखते हैं उसके आधार पे आपका सिलेक्शन भी एक सर्टेन uh, होता है तो ये जो इमोशनल क्वेश्चन है या इमोशनल इंटेलिजेंस है या इमोशनल स्ट्रेंथ और सिक्योरिटी है ये चिल्ड्रन को चिल्ड्रन लिटरेचर के माध्यम से कैसे मिलेगी इट कंटेन्स न्यूमरस मोमेंट्स ऑफ क्राइसिस आप देखते हैं जो बहुत अच्छा चिल्ड्रन लिटरेचर होता है वो आपके सामने मोमेंट ऑफ क्राइसिस पैदा करता है कि व्हाट टू डू एंड व्हाट नॉट टू डू इफ वी से कि बच्चे को ग्रो करने दो आपका काम है कि उसको गलत और सही बताना नहीं है आपकी अपनी डीट्स से गलत और सही 
उसके आगे रखा होता है एंड लाइफ इज नथिंग बट आर चॉइस बिटवीन गुड एंड इविल एंड इवन गुड एंड इविल आर नॉट एब्सल्यूटली गुड एंड इविल इट इज इट डिपेंड्स इट इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन आर अपॉन आर वे ऑफ लुकिंग एट द थिंग्स व्हिच इज गुड फॉर मी मे बी नॉट गुड फॉर यू व्हिच इज इविल फॉर मी मे बी may not be evil for you but whatever ek mota mota hame jhoot nahi bolna chahiye hame hame apne se aapko lagta hai ki koi humanity crisis mein hai jaise is samay hai meri or se uske liye kya help ho sakti hai humko ye dekhna hai mujhe kya mil raha hai agar hum saksham log hain to mujhe kya de raha hai koi us pe zyada dhyan nahi dena main kya de sakta hu main kya de sakti hu उस पे ध्यान देना है ये सारा चिल्ड्रन लिटरेचर जिसको आप संस्कार कहते हैं सारा फैमिली से नहीं आ रहा या आपके चिल्ड्रन लिटरेचर से आ रहा है उस सिलेबस से आ रहा है जो हमने बचपन में पढ़ा तो कितनी बड़ी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी आप एक ह्यूमन रेस तैयार कर रहे हैं अपने चिल्ड्रन लिटरेचर के माध्यम से तो हमारे ऊपर कितनी बड़ी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी आ गई है ये भी आपको देखना है बिकॉज वी इलेबोरेट द मोमेंट ऑफ क्राइसिस वेन कैरेक्टर्स मेक मॉरल डिसीजन एंड कॉन्टम्पलेट द रीजन फॉर दियर डिसीजन मैंने ये डिसीजन लिया उसके पीछे का मॉरल जानना जरूर खाली मैंने एक डिसीजन लिया आपको लगा ये तो बहुत ही बेकार डिसीजन है एंड आपने कुछ मेरे ऊपर इम्पोज कर दिया या मैंने आपके ऊपर इम्पोज कर दिया यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड द मोरलिटी बिहाइंड दैट द जजमेंट took by that particular characters at the particular moment and that moment is a moment of crisis us moment of crisis mein aapka decision jaise uh, you all are aware about a story of a crocodile and the ducks one crocodile a child crocodile was being brought up by the family of ducks when crocodile is a power you know crocodile is at the center the people of literature understand the binary the people of literature understand the post structuralism and modernism and derrida and lot of other thinkers you know jo literature ki cheer cheer phad karte rehte hain so i am not very pro to the uh, theories but i love theories to read that what people talk about it what what um, how we anatomized and analyze uh, the viewpoint to wo viewpoint mein aap dekhte hain ki center aur uh, margin ki jo theory hai to wo power hai crocodile ke paas duck to aapko pata hai sweet duck तो वो जो डक्स हैं, वो उसकी फैमिली बन गए क्योंकि उसने उन्हें पाला चिल्ड्रन लिटरेचर की स्टोरी के अनुसार वेन ही रियलाइज हिज स्ट्रेंथ ही वॉन्ट्स टू गो बैक टू हिज स्पेशज वापस जाना चाहता है लेकिन वो ये सोचता है कि पहले मैं डक्स को खत्म कर दू अब उसके अंदर एक कॉन्फ्लिक्ट है ये मेरी फैमिली है जिसने मुझे पाला जिसने जीवन दान दिया इनको जो बिट्रेयल है जो मेरे दिमाग में एक साजिश चल रही है या दिमाग में मन में आ रहा है क्योंकि वो पावर का गेम है कि मैं इनको मार दूं तो ये क्या सही रहेगा मैं शुड आई गो बैक टू माय स्पेशीज दैट इज वन थिंग शुड आई गो बैक टू माय स्पेशीज आफ्टर किलिंग ऑल द डक्स दैट इज एनदर थिंग सो इन दैट मोमेंट ऑफ क्राइसिस फाइनली द मॉरल ट्राइम्स एंड वॉट इज द मॉरल he has to stay back to his family nurturing them at the moment of crisis because they nurtured him at the moment of uh, crisis and and with that anyone know the uh, name of the story please write i have just you know uh, remembering those uh, crocodile stories ki wo kai bar aapne suna bachcha jangal mein pal jata hai fir uska behavior fellow क्रेचर्स के लिए क्या होता है जो हमारा बिहेवियर है फेलो क्रेचर्स के लिए मोगली की स्टोरी आपने देखी रुडियार्ड कीपलिंग की स्टोरीज आप जंगल बुक आपने देखी तो वो जो मॉरल है वो जो एक क्राइसिस है कि अगर उसका जो आ, साथी है नो मैटर बेयर है नो मैटर वो वुल्फ है नो मैटर वो मंकी है वो उसका साथी बन गया वी ऑल आर फेलो क्रेचर्स यही हमको सिखाया गया हम सब फेलो क्रेचर्स है कोई बड़ा नहीं है कोई छोटा नहीं है तो अगर हम सब एक जैसे हैं जो रामायण के थ्रू भी बच्चों को सिखाया जा सकता है कि आ, हम सब एक हैं बंदर थे और जटायु थे और जामवंत थे हम सब एक हैं और हम कैसे एक मानव की हेल्प कर रहे हैं यू you नो know? तो हमारे अंदर जो एक भाव है कंपैशन का काइंडनेस का दत्ता का टू गिव सो टू गिव शुड नॉट बी लाइक टू गिव इट शुड बी लाइक जैसे लाइफ इंश्योरेंस का एक लोगो है दोनों हाथ यू 
this should be the give it should not be the give you know to receive and to donor and donate or ye feeling aur uske baad hum bole humne to itna donate kar diya humne to kya nahi kiya to aapki wo giving ki feeling bekar hai wo manav jo crisis jo humanity hai us humanity ke khilaf hai ki aapne kya diya agar iska bahut zyada prachar prasar hota hai to it is bad so meaning thereby ये सारी इनेट हमारे कुछ संस्कार हैं जो चिल्ड्रन लिटरेचर के थ्रू आते हैं और आ भी सकते हैं सो वेन वी से दे वॉट अदर थिंग्स चिल्ड्रन लिटरेचर कैन प्रोवाइड दैट इज द अदर थिंग इज एक्सपेंडिंग एंड नर्चरिंग द इमेजिनेशन इज वन ऑफ द वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल्स ऑफ चिल्ड्रन लिटरेचर एंड इमेजिनेशन देखिए अगर आप मुझे कहें कि हैरी पॉटर का आठवां वॉल्यूम क्यों नहीं निकाला रोलिंग ने तो मेरा अपनी ओर से मींस उसके बहुत सारे रीजंस हो सकते हैं उन्होंने किताब सेवन के बाद निकाली भी थी बहुत सारे रीजंस हो सकते हैं बट मेरी नजर में रोलिंग की जो इमेजिनेशन है वो एक्सपैंड हो गई वो एग्जॉस्ट हो गई अब आप कुछ भी नहीं लिख सकते देर इज सम इलास्टिसिटी इन आर इमेजिनेशन सो इमेजिनेशन की भी एक लिमिट है तो आप सेवन वॉल्यूम्स ऑफ हैरी पॉटर में देखते हैं कि इमेजिनेशन कितनी अनएंडिंग हो सकती है बाय कैलकुलेटिंग द रीडर्स ऑफ हैरी पॉटर कि जो रीडर्स ऑफ हैरी पॉटर हैं हाउ इंपॉर्टेंट दे आर हाउ यू नो हाउ हाउ इंपॉर्टेंट देयर लर्निंग इज सो मीनिंग देयर बाय एक इमेजिनेशन के बाद आपका जो एक्सपेंशन है वो एग्जॉस्ट हो सकता है फॉर एग्जाम्पल we say that i remember i really like the song of the hindi film daddy toffiyon ki deewaron par latke gubbare aur barfiyon ka ghar hota aur chhat hoti you know it is from the point of or from the lens of children children love chocolates children love toffees children love balloons children love everything so from that point of view we start imagining and the the senior people like guljar sahab they understand the imagination of children and according to that you know they write songs to attract children or children ki sensibility ko wo bahut attract karte hain the people of my age knows very well the immortal lines of hatkar baitha chand ek din mata sayu silwa de ma mujhe unka mota ek jhingola that gives us what kind of imagination the imagination each the imagination each uh, person or each phenomena of nature be it sun or moon or river or trees inka kya struggle hai hum to inhe taken for granted le rahe hain agar aap nature ke phenomena ko taken for granted nahi lete to hum nature ko itna damage nahi kar rahe hote hum nadiyon ko itna rok nahi re, lete apni apni grid ke piche hum pahadon ko itna khod nahi dete keval apni grid ke piche हम पेड़ों को इतना काट नहीं रहे होते अपनी ग्रीड के पीछे ये चिल्ड्रन लिटरेचर है हटकर बैठा चांद सो मैनी मुझे वो याद नहीं आ रहा है बट ये हटकर बैठा चांद एक दिन एक ग्रीड एक आपके अंदर एक सेंसिबिलिटी पैदा करता है कि चंदा मामा को भी एक जहां से दूसरे जहां की यात्रा करने में ठंड लग सकती है इट इज नॉट ओनली यू जब बच्चा अपनी माँ से क्विल्ट मांग रहा होता है अपने ऊपर कहता है कि मुझे ठंड लग रही है तो माँ उसे बताती है कि वो चंदा मामा जो पूरी रात यात्रा करता है वो कह रहा है मेरे लिए भी एक स्वेटर बुंदे मां ताकि मुझे ठिठुर ठिठुर कर यात्रा पूरी करता हूं मैं पूरी सो सेंसिबिलिटी फॉर नेचर सेंसिबिलिटी फॉर फेलो क्रिएचर सेंसिबिलिटी फॉर योर फैमिली सेंसिबिलिटी फॉर सिंगल सिंगल फेनोमेना ऑफ नेचर दैट इज वॉट चिल्ड्रन लिटरेचर इज ऑल अबाउट एंड वी टॉक अबाउट आई ऑलरेडी टॉक अबाउट रोडियार्ड कीपलिंग जंगल बुक जंगल जंगल आग लगी है दैट्स गुलजार साहब गीत वेरी नाइस एंड वेन एवर आई टॉक अबाउट चिल्ड्रन लिटरेचर आई वुड लाइक टू शेयर अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल बुक विद यू विच आई विच इज वेरी क्लोज टू माई हार्ट ट्वेंटी ईयर्स बैक वेन रिच आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट आई वॉज अ डैट फेलो वेन आई वॉज इन जर्मनी एंड माई पॉलिश फ्रेंड वॉज देयर यूस्टीना शी गेव मी अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल चिल्ड्रन बुक टाइटल्ड द लिटल प्रिंस for my daughter she was just 5 6 year old and she was here in india and she told this is a gift from my side to your daughter and because i was there and 3 4 days left 
uh, for me there in uh, my last uh, three, four uh, days I stay in Germany, I started reading this book. I just thought, okay, what is this book all about? And I read that book in Germany itself. This book has a lingering effect in my mind even today. This is this I will suggest uh, to each one of you, to every participant, please read this book. It's a fantastic book. In this book, the narrator begins with a discussion on the nature of grown-ups. And that narrator, he ch his child himself, he just exposed our world you know, to the readers. He stripped it off. He just, you know, we become just helpless when he's talking about us. And when I was reading it, I thought it is me as a grown-up. This fellow is exposing me as a grown-up. I really behave like this. And it is fantastic, he says, that grown-ups' inability to perceive important things, quote-unquote, ki poem hai ki we forget to see the nature around us. Our eyes, our eyes, keval wo dekhti hai, jo hum dekhna chahte hain. Aur hamari eyes, nature ki beauty, logo ki beauty, logo ki atma ki beauty, dekhna hi nahi chahti. To usme kya kare? This is our inability. We are, hume kehna chahiye. We are not good people. Ye kehne mein mujhe koi sharm nahi hai ki we are grown up like this. We don't understand the pain, the trauma. Hum kisi aur hi baaton mein ulaj ke reh gaye. समाज को हमने मिसगाइड कर दिया पूरी तरीके से कि ग्रोन अप को यह चाहिए तो समाज पूरा उसमें लग गया मुझे एक घर नहीं चाहिए मुझे सात घर चाहिए तो पूरा समाज उसमें लग गया कि उसने कहा मुझे भी चाहिए सात नहीं तो चार तो मुझे भी चाहिए तो हम एक पता नहीं किस दौड़ में लग गए तो वो उस इनेबिलिटी को एक्सपोज करता है एज अ टेस्ट टू डिटर्मिन इफ अ ग्रोन अप इज एज इनलाइटेंट एज अ चाइल्ड ही शोज देम अ पिक्चर डिपिक्टिंग अ स्नेक Which has eaten an elephant? वो कहता है देखो मैं आपको हमसे कह रहा है नरेटर मैं आपको अभी बताता हूँ कि grown up हमारी दुनिया को नहीं समझ सकते तो वो एक यू स्केच उस लिटिल प्रिंस में वो स्केच भी बना हुआ है एंड वो स्केच बनाता है ये फ्रेंच राइटर एंटोनिन डे सेंट ने लिखी है तो और तीन सौ से ज्यादा भाषाओं में इसका ट्रांसलेशन है इट इज वेरी पॉपुलर बुक और वो एक कैरिकेचर सा एक स्केचिंग बनाता है और उस स्केचिंग में वो एक स्नेक को एक एलिफेंट को एक स्नेक ने अजगर ने निगल दिया और जब निगल दिया तो वो उसको यूं बनाता है क्योंकि निगल दिया तो पेट में एलिफेंट तो पूरा डाइजेस्ट होगा नहीं वो उसके पेट को यूं ऊपर करके और सोलन अप करके दिखाता है और फिर उसके दो एजेस को यूं करके दिखाता है वो इसको अपने फादर के पास ले जाता है कि देखो ये क्या मैंने बनाया है द ग्रोन अप ऑलवेज रिप्लाई द पिक्चर डिपिक्स अट वो जितने ग्रोन अप पे ले जाता है वो कहते हैं ये हेड बनाना कौन सी मुश्किल बात तुमने तो हेड बना दिया हेड तो मैं भी बना दूंगा लो हेड बन गया सो दिस हैट हर्ट हिम वेरी मच उसे लगता है मेरी इमेजिनेशन मैंने हाथी को अजगर ने निगला उसकी पिक्चर बताई जो मैंने देखा जो मैं समझता हूं कि निगलेगा तो कैसा लगेगा ये मेरी इमेजिनेशन तक पहुंच ही नहीं पा रहे आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट द Adult, the grown-up world, they are not able to understand कि ये बच्चा क्या क्या रहा है। इसका elephant उनको दिखता नहीं है। फिर that narrator becomes an uh, uh, aircraft pilot, and one day, with in his imagination, but the story goes on like this: his plane crashes in the Sahara, far from the civilizational world, where he is unexpectedly greeted by a young boy nicknamed the Little Prince. Now. that is that is the that is the point the crucial point of this book the prince has golden hair a lovable laugh and will repeat questions until they are answered and the narrator has an eight day supply of water and must fix his aeroplane there so these eight days of plenty of events very lovely events you should read them so what happened the prince asked the narrator to draw a sheep the narrator first shows him the picture of the elephant inside the snake which the narrator surprise the prince interprets correctly wo kehta hai ab main isko check karta hu ye meri imagination samajhta hai ki nahi little prince kehta hai oh my god ye to elephant nigal diya snake ne and this this narrator surprised how he understood quickly how he understand my 
फीलिंग्स और माई इमेजिनेशन इसका मतलब मेरी ड्रॉइंग इतनी अच्छी है एंड बट आफ्टर थ्री फेल्ड अटेम्प्ट एट ड्रॉइंग अ शीप द फ्रस्ट्रेटेड नेरेटर ड्रॉज अ सिंपल क्रेट क्लेमिंग द शीप इज इन उसे शीप बनानी आती नहीं है एक क्रेट बनाता है उसमें दो होल बनाता है स्केचिंग इज देयर ओनली इन द बुक और वो कहता है वेर इज द शीप लिटिल प्रिंस आज और नरेटर कहता है इसके अंदर है शीप दिख नहीं रही है द प्रिंस एक्सक्लेम्स दैट दिस इज वॉट एग्जैक्टली द ड्रॉइंग ही वॉन्टेड वो कहता है वॉन्डरफुल शीप यही तो मैं चाहता था वो शीप तो मेरे को दिख ही रही है वो देख के मैं क्या करूंगा ड्रॉइंग में आई वॉन्ट this kind of drawing so it is all about the understanding of you know you understand the word of children or not you understand the word of uh, you know their imagination their emotions they are little little things humne to bachpan chheen diya bachcho ka puri tarike se we are talking about at a very tender age about their career about their maths about their skills about their packages you know सैलरी देयर मल्टीनेशनल मैं देखती हूँ नाइन टेंथ का बच्चा जब हमें लगता है कि अब इसको शेक्सपियर के क्लासिक से थोड़ा एक्वेंट करा देना चाहिए टेम्पेस्ट बता देना चाहिए एंड थोड़ा सा इसको जूलियस सीजर भी पढ़ा देना चाहिए एट दैट एज द चिल्ड्रन आर एक्सपोज टू अ वर्ल्ड विच विच इज जस्ट यू नो जस्ट इवन आई डोंट लाइक दैट वर्ल्ड बट वी आर इन टू इट This is our helplessness that we are into it. अगर मुझे कोई कहता है कि एक राइटर मुकेश नोटियाल हैं या मनोहर चमोली जी हैं या अटवाल जी हैं या लॉट ऑफ स्पीकर स्पीकर आर विद अस टूडे वट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन अ राइटर एंड स्पेशली द चिल्ड्रन राइटर एंड अ कॉमन मैन आई ऑलवेज फील दैट अ राइटर इज अगर सारे लोग संवेदनशील हैं तो एक राइटर ज्यादा संवेदनशील है सारे लोग अगर इमोशनल हैं सारे लोगों में इमोशंस होते हैं राइटर पे थोड़ा ज्यादा हो सारे लोग अपने चीजों को देख पाते हैं राइटर को ज्यादा देख पाता है दैट इज द पोइटिक जीनियस दैट इज द ऑथर्स जीनियस द ऑथर ऑलवेज हैज अ वेरी वेरी डिफरेंट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू एंड वेरी डिफरेंट लेंसेज इन द आइज अलग लेंस है उसकी वो अलग तरीके से देख पाता है चीजों को अप्रिशिएट कर पाता है समझ पाता है तो पहले पूरे बच्चों की एक मनोविज्ञान समझना उस मनोविज्ञान के आधार पे लिखना ये देखना कि कहीं हम स्टीरियोटाइप तो नहीं कर रहे हैं ये देखना कि हम वेमेन को कहीं बहुत वीक तो नहीं बना रहे वेरी वेरी डिफरेंट थिंग्स आर देयर विच वी नीड टू इलेबोरेट इन चिल्ड्रन लिटरेचर एंड आई थिंक दैट आई एम वेरी होपफुल अबाउट अबाउट दिस वर्कशॉप द आउटकम्स एंड आई लव टू वेन एवर आई गेट टाइम i will definitely want to connect with my speakers of today's workshop because i love to learn lot of thing about about this uh, children literature bahut sari samvednaye aisi hain jo abhi children literature hamara abhi bahut ek branch of knowledge aisa nahi hua richa se main baat kar rahi thi ki ab hum syllabus badlenge inka jo hamare aaj ki workshop hai वो भी चाहते हैं कि क्या हम बड़े बच्चों को चिल्ड्रन लिटरेचर एक ब्रांच की तरह पढ़ाएं क्योंकि बहुत सारी यूनिवर्सिटीज में लगाया शायद रिचा ने लगाया होगा लेकिन किस तरीके से लगाया दैट वी हैव टू कलेक्टिवली लुक इन टू इट एंड वी वांट टू इंट्रोड्यूस दैट दैट थिंग टू आर चिल्ड्रन सो दैट दे कैन अंडरस्टैंड आप बच्चों को किसी के आगे भी डांट देते हैं आप बच्चों को मुझे याद है एक कॉन्फ्रेंस में गुलजार साहब आए थे और उन्होंने एक इतनी अच्छी कहानी से चिल्ड्रन लिटरेचर पे बोलना शुरू किया था लखनऊ में वो कॉन्फ्रेंस थी इंग्लिश टीचर्स की कि उन्होंने कहा कि एक बच्चा बहुत ही कीमती पेन लेके घर आता है ठीक है और वो किसी उसके फ्रेंड के जीजा जी ने गिफ्ट की होती है उसके फ्रेंड को और राजू कहता है मुझे एक दिन घर ले जाने दो मैं अपने बस कबर्ड में रखूंगा देखता रहूंगा कितना खूबसूरत पेन है जब वो पेन लेके आता है उसकी मदर ये अनुमान लगाती है कि पेन तो बहुत महंगा लग रहा है हमने तो दिया नहीं ये जरूर चोर के लाया चार लोगों के आगे उसको एक थप्पड़ पड़ता है कि चोरी करता है फिर वो बताता है कि ये चोरी नहीं है फिर जब वो बहुत मारपीट होती है तो बताता है कि ये तो मैंने बगल के अपने दोस्त से लिया उसकी माँ उसका कान पकड़ते हुए ड्रैक करते हुए बगल के दोस्त के आले यू नो वी आर एक्सपोजिंग चिल्ड्रन की तुम दोनों चोर हो या नहीं हो उसको लेके जाती है और वो बच्चा जो जो डर जाता है जो देख लेता है हाथ में पेन है राजू के कान पकड़े हैं माँ डांट रही है और जीजा जी ने जब वो पेन गिफ्ट किया था 
with with the price tag you know you remember the movie three idiots jab hum har cheez ke price bolte hain this cloth is very costly this watch is very costly aur tab hum uski importance batate hain apne bachchon ko ye nahi batate ki ye kitni important hai एक शूज कितना इंपॉर्टेंट है उसे लिटरेचर की नजर से नहीं बताते उसको पैसे की नजर से बताते जूता तुम्हारे लिए पांच हजार का खरीदा गया सो रिमेंबर इट्स इंपॉर्टेंस हम जूते की इंपॉर्टेंस नहीं बताते हम उसको ये नहीं बताते कि लाखों करोड़ों लोगों के पैर में जूता नहीं है लाखों ऐसे बच्चे स्कूल जाते हैं जिनके पास शूज पहनने को नहीं होते हम उसकी वो इंपॉर्टेंस नहीं बताते हम उसे पैसे से इंपॉर्टेंस बताते हैं तो नहीं समझेगा कि समाज का एक बहुत बड़ा वर्ग आज भी इन चीजों से वंचित है तो जब वो उसके घर में ले जाते हैं तो जीजा जी समझ जाते हैं कि राजू ने मेरा दिया हुआ इतना कॉस्टली पेन अपने दोस्त को दे दिया तो जीजा जी भी बीच में तड़का लगाते हैं हाँ ये तो पिटना चाहिए इसको मैंने बताया था इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो पेन इज पेन आप पेन की इंपॉर्टेंस उसकी इमेजिनेशन के साथ जोड़ के बताइए पैसे के साथ जोड़ के मत बताइए सो दैट स्टोरी आई स्टिल रिमेंबर की हम बच्चों को बस में सीट नहीं देते हैं हम बच्चों की रिस्पेक्ट नहीं करते बच्चे जब बड़े बड़े बैग लेके अपने कंधों पर जाते हैं और हम खाली कार चला रहे होते हैं हम उनके लिए कार नहीं रोक सकते बिकॉज वी डोंट नो वो किसके बच्चे हैं बच्चों को रिस्पेक्ट देना इंडियन सोसाइटी तो बहुत ही अलबेली सोसाइटी सेंस में है कि हमारा तो कॉपी है बच्चों के ऊपर अमेरिका में तो थोड़ा सौ नंबर भी है कि उसको घुमा देंगे तो पुलिस आ जाएगी तो बच्चों को पेरेंट्स को जेल हो जाएगी लेकिन यहाँ तो कोई सौ नंबर नहीं है अगर कोई माँ मार रही है और आप इंटरफेयर करते हैं तो माँ कहती है आपको मैडम जी क्या प्रॉब्लम बच्चा तो मेरा मैं कूटू मारू जो मर्जी करू मेरी मर्जी हमारी वॉयलेंस कि आप मैथ्स लो जिस बच्चे को मैथ्स नहीं आती आप फिजिक्स लो जिसको फिजिक्स नहीं आती आपने तारे जमी पर पिक्चर देखी जो थोड़ा सा फिजिकली चैलेंज्ड बच्चा है जो डिसलेक्सियन है उसको हम कह रहे हैं पड़ोस का बच्चा देख 99 परसेंट ले आया व्हाट इज दिस आई आई होप दैट दिस वर्कशॉप विल कंसिडर ऑल दिस वॉयलेंस थ्रू आर वर्ड्स थ्रू आर डीड्स थ्रू आर इम्पोजिशन ऑफ सब्जेक्ट्स ऑन चिल्ड्रन थ्रू आर लिटरेचर थ्रू दियर बुक्स कौन सी बुक्स देनी है नहीं देनी इन सब प्रॉब्लम्स पे डिस्कस करेगी और वो कर रहे होंगे क्योंकि ये रूम टू रीड इज अ मिशन ये एक मिशन है और मैं इससे इतना इम्प्रेस्ड uh, हूँ और इतना अच्छा मुझे लगा कि ये भी एक मिशन है और जो बच्चों के लिटरेचर को प्रमोट करता है लिटिल uh, प्रिंस की स्टोरी के साथ आई आई रिमेंबर राजेश रेडीज फेमस शायरी एंड आई वुड आई वुड लाइक टू कंक्लूड विद एट दैट मेरे दिल के किसी कोने में एक मासूम सा बच्चा बड़ों की देख कर दुनिया बड़ा होने से डरता है न बस में जिंदगी उसके आपने देखा कोविड में मर रहे थे सब इधर उधर उधर जिंदगी पे तो बस है नहीं हमारा पता नहीं अगली सांस ले पाएंगे या नहीं ले पाएंगे न बस में जिंदगी उसके न काबू मौत पर उसका मगर इंसान फिर भी कब खुदा होने से डरता है सो so, ये जो हमारी पावर के लिए एक थस्ट हो गई है खुदा बनने की एक प्रवृत्ति हो गई है कि जहां हम रहे हमारे चारों ओर पावर स्ट्रक्चर्स रहे और इनसिक्योरिटी हमारे अंदर होती है कहीं वही इनसिक्योरिटी वही पावर ग्रेबिंग वही मानवता से दूर जाने की एक प्रवृत्ति बच्चों के साथ बच्चों के लेवल पे आके बात ना करने की प्रवृत्ति अपने फेलो क्रिएचर्स को कुछ ना समझने की प्रवृत्ति हम क्या ये प्रवृत्ति अपने बच्चों पे तो नहीं डाल रहे हैं इस बात का हमको ध्यान रखना चाहिए विद दीज कप let's i really really appreciate the organizers our department of english under uh, richa joshi's guidance our all faculty members and this room to read mission us8 and the people who are speaker today are really welcome not only welcome but i extend my heartfelt thanks thanks to all of you that that you are here to teach our children uh, to give respect to children this is my uh, if you if you want to say what is the take away of my these 40 minutes talk i would like to say that my humble request to all of you to give respect to our children children hamari ek saajhi virasat hain jis din hamare andar ye bhav aa jayega ki sare bacche hamare hain वो किसके uske parents se aapke koi koi baat ho sakti hai usko kinare rakh dijiye उस बच्चे से आपका कुछ नहीं है वो बच्चा अगर आप कहते हैं कि देश का भविष्य है तो उसको रिस्पेक्ट देना सीखिए जहां भी आपके अराउंड चिल्ड्रन है उनसे पूछिए उनसे बात करिए उनके लेवल पे जाके बात करिए वो साइकिल चला रहा है उसके लेवल पे उसको रोक के बात करिए कि वाई ही सो हैप्पी वाइल राइडिंग हिज बाइसाइकल बिकॉज ही इज देयर ही इज देयर देयर इज वन थिंग शायरी वंस मोर इट इज द फर्स्ट टू लाइन आर वेरी वेरी फेमस 
दीज आर मेरे दिल के किसी कोने में एक मासूम सा बच्चा बड़ों की देख कर दुनिया बड़ा होने से डरता है हमारे अंदर एक बच्चा हमेशा जिंदा रहता है नो मैटर व्हाट एज इज आई एम एट प्रेजेंट बट अंदर मेरा एक बचपना है इस वर्कशॉप का टेक अवे है कि उस बचपने को हम जिंदा रखें क्योंकि जो सो कॉल्ड बड़ों का वर्ल्ड है जो हमने बना दिया जिसमें मैं भी पूरी तरह से भागीदार हूं मेरे पूरी तरीके से उसमें पार्टिसिपेशन मैं अपने को कभी अलग नहीं कर रही हूं कि मैं आपको लेक्चर दे रही हूं तो मैं बहुत ही ज्यादा सब चीजों का ध्यान रख रही हूं पता नहीं मैं कितनी चीजों का ध्यान नहीं रख रही हूं आई एम वर्किंग एज अ हेड ऑफ द इंस्टीट्यूशन आई एक्सेप्ट दिस आई रियलाइज इट आई आई कन्फ्यूज इट बट फिर भी मेरा ये कहना है कि हमको अपने अंदर का बच्चा कभी मरने नहीं देना हमको अपनी शेयरिंग बच्चों के साथ कभी खत्म नहीं होने देनी हमें बच्चों का डिस्पाइट दिस टेक्नोलॉजिकल आउटबर्स्ट डिस्पाइट दिस मैनुपुलेटिव वर्ड डिस्पाइट दिस मनी बेस्ड होल थिंग द इकोनॉमी द रिलेशन एवरीथिंग पावर रिलेशन ये सब होते हुए भी हमको बेसिक इन एक्सपीरियंसेस इमोशंस को खत्म नहीं होने देना है और सारे ऑर्गेनाइजर्स को सारे स्पीकर्स को सारे पार्टिसिपेंट्स को मेरी बहुत हृदय से आभार है मेरा उनको बहुत धन्यवाद है और मैं उनका बहुत ही दिल खोलकर अभिनंदन करना चाहती हूं कि आप एक ऐसे टेरेन में गए हैं अपने रूम टू रीट के माध्यम से कि जो आने वाले दिनों में पहाड़ में रहने वाला वो बच्चा जो शेफर्ड की जिंदगी गुजारता है जो काफल के फल लान लाता है और उसके बाद सोचता है कि दस रुपए के कहीं बिक जाए उसकी मासूमियत को उसके काफल की सेंसिबिलिटी के साथ जोड़ के समझ पाएंगे और जो बच्चा अमेरिका में नेटिव अमेरिकन रह रहा है उसको उसकी नेटिविटी के साथ समझ पाएंगे जो अफ्रीका में रह रहा है उसको उस पूरे रिचुअल्स उस पूरी फोक टेल्स उसकी उतनी रिच जो अफ्रीकन एक कल्चर है उसके साथ समझ पाएंगे एक एक Uh, काला कॉन्टिनेंट उनको नहीं कहेंगे ब्लैक कॉन्टिनेंट जो वर्ड्स व्हाइट रेस ने पैदा कर दिए पावरफुल रेस ने व्हाइट का मतलब फिर सारे व्हाइट नहीं है एक पावरफुल रेस ने पैदा कर दिए उसके साथ हम अफ्रीका को नहीं देखेंगे हम एक अलग वर्ल्ड में उनको देखेंगे जितने फेलो क्रेचर हमारे नॉर्थ ईस्ट से जुड़े हैं हमारे साथ और नॉर्थ ईस्ट में रहते हैं जो पहाड़ों में रहते हैं जो कंदराओं में रहते हैं जो ट्राइब्स हैं जो वनों में रहते हैं उन सब का अभिनंदन करते हुए मैं ये गुजारिश करूंगी कि हम अपने चिल्ड्रन लिटरेचर के माध्यम से ऐसे संस्कार भरे कि हम सबको एक ऑब्जेक्टिवली देख सकें एक ऑब्जेक्टिवली एसेस कर सकें और अपने बच्चों के ऊपर कोई कंडीशन ना लगाएं अपना लव को कंडीशनल मत करिए उनके लिए आपका लव अपने चिल्ड्रन के लिए अनकंडीशनल होना है वो पढ़े वो ना पढ़े वो होशियार बने वो आइंस्टीन बने वो ना बने सब नहीं बन सकते सब इंजीनियर नहीं बन सकते सब डॉक्टर सब यूपीएससी में नहीं निकल सकते सब क्रिकेट की टीम में नहीं खेल सकते बहुत कम परसेंटेज है वो कुछ भी करे उन्हें प्यार चाहिए वो एक उनके अंदर दे आर गिफ्टेड विद विद अ साइट एक अंदर उनकी एक साइट है एक डिविनिटी है अगर वर्ड्स कहता है चाइल्ड इज द फादर ऑफ मैन ठीक और मैं कई मुझे बड़ा दुख होता है लोग कहते हैं अरे ये तो अपने बाप का भी बाप है यानी पूरा मैनिपुलेट हो गया जबकि वर्ड्स का तो जो अंदाज था उसने कहा वो स्पिरिचुअलिटी जीरो टू फाइव ईयर बच्चे के अंदर जिंदा रहती है वो डिविनिटी उसके अंदर जिंदा रहती है जो हम उसके बाद भूलते चले जाते हैं भगवान से दूर होते रहते हैं तो हम फादर किस बात के हैं वो चाइल्ड हमारा फादर है जो भगवान उससे डायरेक्टली कनेक्टेड है वो ईश्वर उससे डायरेक्ट बात करता है वो कभी मुस्कराता है अकेला बैठ के कभी वो ट्री को देख के खुश होता है कभी वो चिड़ियाओं के पीछे भागता है कभी वो तितलियों को पकड़ता है उसके अंदर भगवान जिंदा है इसलिए वो हमारा फादर सो विद दीज वर्ड्स आई एम रियली रियली हैप्पी फॉर टूडेज दिस वर्ड ऑफ अ नोट ऑफ वेलकम टू ईच वन ऑफ यू हृदय से आभार हृदय से अभिनंदन थैंक यू सो मच thank you ma'am uh, for your absolutely delightful lecture very extremely erudite especially would like to thank you for transporting students like me uh, back to our classroom where you we would you would hold us in rapt attention i can tell you ma'am ne kabhi hame latar nahi lagayi kabhi hame judge nahi kiya 
हमने कितनी मिस्टेक्स की मैम ने बस विद अ पैट ऑन द बैक एंड वी न्यू समटाइम्स इट वाज अ टैप ऑन द रिस्ट समटाइम्स इट वाज अ पैट ऑन द बैक बट शी नेवर जज्ड अस एंड शी अलाउड अस टू एंगेज इन एब्सोल्युटली वेरी वेरी ओपन हैंडेड एंड ओपन माइंडेड वेज सो थैंक यू सो मच मैम आई एम श्योर एवरीबॉडी इन द चैट बॉक्स is resonating with what i'm saying those who have heard you in class um know how much of a beautiful and absolutely emotive talker mm-hmm. and emotive uh, orator you are so absolute privilege we are going to be greedy so we are going to mm-hmm. keep on asking you for more from time to time so thank you so much for this lovely mm-hmm. talk so uh, if i may um, can i uh, are there any questions for ma'am i know if i start us string of questions the on the chat box i can i can see plenty of compliments i can see uh, just uh, so many compliments um so <laughs> ma'am is so used to them and she's always uh, very unaffected with compliments people will keep on praising her and she uh, you know we uh, she knows she registers but she's uh, never affected by Uh, too many compliments so but you can keep uh, keep praising her. i mean that that that's just how it is it's always like that <laughs> yeah somebody says i wish i could be her student <laughs> well <laughs> you have to be very lucky for that <laughs> and i may also share with you all um, before i introduce the next speaker let me just share uh, this little thing with you all um she she joined as vice chancellor doon university and secretly uh, of course all of us who have studied uh, in her class were very very happy uh, doubt needless to say but she joined here and the first thing she comes and says is um, you know who are your students and i would like to engage and that is uh, something that is so typical of ma'am i mean i wouldn't uh, wonder if she'd said anything else because that's how she is she's always with a smile on the face she's always ready to answer questions and um, she's willing to engage so she taught ba students ba first year students uh, or third year students and uh, unfortunately the lockdown happened and other batches couldn't get to hear from her but ma'am we are going to hold you on that one and we are going to trouble you again other batches are also feeling very greedy <laughs> so so we are going to do that uh, with that uh, please allow me to is alisha with us uh, uh, alisha burger uh, uh, do we have alisha with us uh, hello alisha uh, um, so alisha has more than 20 years experience in children's literature she's a former editor at penguin simon and scuster and dolling kindersley she is currently the global publisher for room to read which is a non-profit organization that seeks to transform the lives of children by focusing on literacy and gender equality room to read has grown into one of the world's largest international children's book publishers under her leadership and is now active in over 20 countries and 35 languages Alicia graduated from the prestigious Stanford University with a degree in cultural anthropology and lives in California's Bay Area with her husband and two young children. So welcome Alicia and uh, uh, please uh, carry on from here. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here talking with all of you. I would say today it's today for you and night for me. <laughs> But I always love to talk about children's books and so I'm very excited to do so at the beginning of your um your talk series today. So let me see if I can share my screen. Okay. Can people see my screen? Yes. Okay, yes. great. Thank yes. you. Okay. Got it. So um play that's the beginning. Now uh, okay, let me make it start. There we go. Okay. That should that should be there, yes? <laughs> okay, I see lots of yeses. Um so Well, I didn't understand everything. Um <laughs> my Hindi is not so good. Um I did 
um, understand that the vice chancellor was talking about imagination and the child inside of all of us. Um, and I think that was a very good um, way to move into what I plan to talk about today, which is how children's literature can bring us all together, both us with our children, the children we care about, the children in our lives, and also the child inside of us. Because I think we all have, if we are interested in children's books and children's literature, there is a part of us that never really grew up and perhaps did not want to. So I know that's true for myself and I imagine it is also true for many of you. So um, I hope to have an interactive presentation. So I will be asking some questions and please answer them in the chat. And hopefully I will be able to see your answers and kind of thread that through the presentation. So um, how else to best start a presentation about children's books, but by reading one. So I thought I would read a recent favorite of mine, Leave Me Alone by Vera Brosgold. And I will be asking you right now a question I would ask any group to which I was reading this book. Um, from the cover, what kind of story do you think this is? Any ideas? You can put them in the chat. Oh, go ahead. If I saw someone raise their hand as well. If you want to just put it in the chat. Oh, Grim. Yes, exactly. It has that kind of sensibility of Eastern European sort of forest kind of tale. Oh, you can see my comments. Look at that. <laughs> how interesting. Oh, okay, interesting. So you can see how I'm cheating a little bit. Let's see. I'm not sure. Um, uh, Alicia, would you want to put it on a slideshow? Um, I thought I did have it on slideshow, but let me try yeah. that again. Um, let's see. I'm not sure. I'm just press F5. Just press F5. F5? Yes. Does that work? Can you see that now? No. no we How strange. Um, let's try. No, I don't know. I, I click, click slideshow and then present, but that uh, seemed to be on the bottom. On the bottom, do you see uh, this one like this that? One. Can you still see my my notes? Yes, we can. <laughs> I don't know why. Yes, Let's see if I can change the display settings. How about like that? Yeah, it's fine. Now. Okay, I think it's because I was using two monitors. <laughs> Apologies. Well, you had many good ideas um, about what this book was about. An adult who's disturbed by all the children. <laughs> yes. Um, everyone wants to ask her about her problem. She wants to be alone. Yes, so a lot of great clues to the story. All right, now we'll go ahead and read it. Okay. Once there was an old woman she lived in a small village in a small house. With a very big family. <laughs> I love her expression here. Winter was coming. That meant she had some very important knitting to do. But it wasn't getting done. Her grandchildren were very curious about her knitting. Were you supposed to hit the ball with a stick? Could you eat it? Could you make your brother eat it? The old woman was at the end of her rope. So she made her bed as neatly as she could. She swept the floorboards until they more or less shone. She drank tea from her samovar. She packed up her things in a big sack and as she left, she shouted back, leave me alone. The old woman walked through the deep, dark forest. She made a fire so that she could see what she was doing. Then she sat down and began to knit. The bear family was very curious about the light from her fire and about what she might taste like. Leave me alone, the old woman shouted. 
but they didn't listen because bears don't speak English. So she picked up her sack and left. The old woman climbed higher and higher up the mountain. She reached the top and climbed on to the moon. The old woman climbed up the mountains. You know what, I think I have that paint out of order, but let's pretend we didn't see that bit. The old woman climbed up the mountainside. It was cold, so she found a small sheltered place. Then she sat down and began to knit. The mountain goats were excited to have a visitor, especially one that brought snacks. Leave me alone, the old woman shouted, but the goats were too busy fighting over the red ones, which they all agreed were the best. So she picked up her sack and left. So now she's, let's see, I'll go back because I had them out of order, but this is where we are now. Well, she's climbed up onto the moon, leaving those little goats behind. And now she found a rock that was shaped like a chair. She sat down and began to knit. The little green moon men had never seen a woman before, old or otherwise. They examined her with her handheld scanners that went beep boop. <laughs> she looks like she loves that. Leave me alone, the old woman shouted, but the little green moon men couldn't hear her because they didn't have any ears. So she picked up her sack and left through a wormhole. The void on the other side of the wormhole was very dark and very, very quiet. She was absolutely, completely, utterly alone. It was perfect. Soon she had no more yarn and 30 little sweaters and she was alone. So she put the 30 sweaters into her big sack. She swept the void until it was a nice matte black. She had a cup of tea from her samovar. Then she picked up the sack and left through another wormhole. When she came out the other side, everything was right where she'd left it. And she didn't say a word. I just love that ending. I feel like it's so perfect. Um, as my son said, she doesn't say anything because she's just happy now. Happy that she has 30 kids. I counted them. Um, <laughs> so I love that about sharing this kind of story, ending on a note like this and knowing that my son has experienced the emotions, not only of himself, but of this adult and thinking about something from her perspective. Um, he's clearly learned a little bit about math. He's counting in the pictures and his curiosity is so fun and just the delight that we can share together with a story. So with that, I'm going to turn a little bit more academic um, and think about what is children's literature. So just if you could throw things out there into the chat, when you think of what is children's literature, what do you think of? And yes, I agree, it's beautifully illustrated. I love that illustrator. Anyone? Curiosity, yeah, simple, easy to read. <laughs> That's beautiful, a world made of cookies and cream. <laughs> That's gorgeous. I wanna read that book now about a world of cookies and cream. Yes, literature for children below 12 years old, stories from oral tradition. Yeah, wonderful. Everyone has a great idea. And so um, I kind of start out with this more general idea of what children's books could be. And this is more about formats and genres, right? Fiction, nonfiction. Um, you could have books for very, very young children, as, as some people have pointed out. Um, for older children and young adults. So we go all the way from little babies, toddlers reading books. I have also a one-year-old who picks up books, she's chewing on them, but she's learning something as she's doing that, right? And then all the way up through books for young adults. So children's literature is really, really wide and varied. Um, <clears throat> I love the things people are saying too. I could get very dis distracted. Um, and so thinking about kind of other themes that people have touched on in the chat, what is children's literature? Um, also, fine art, business, 
politics, right? Like I heard someone say, um, or I was reading written to inculcate values. So absolutely. So you're thinking about what is important in a culture, what kinds of ideas do we want to impart to children? What don't we want to impart to children? Um, and that varies, of course, across time periods, across history, um, across different areas of the world and different communities within those different areas of the world. Um, I know India is such a hugely varied country with many states and many languages. Um, so, so many different children's literatures, I'm sure, are exist and are possible. Um, language, I say here, science, graphic design. So thinking about art, there's that really fun bit too. How do we visually express ourselves as a culture? Um, technology is something you might not consider, but of course we need to be able to print books to share them, right? Or to be able to share them online. You know, somehow we have to get them in front of children and make it possible for, um, for everyone to share a story together. So, so many things are encompassed in children's literature. Um, it's really such a rich topic and I'm so excited that you have this opportunity in this talk series to really hear about it from so many different perspectives. And then people have also touched on some of these things already. Why is it so important? Um, education, so happy endings away from all the real world, something someone wrote. I think that's that imagination and imagining what could be, right? I've put possibility here because I think that as we all know, as people who've experienced stories, you can imagine worlds that you've never been to, places that you've never seen, um, and both places that exist, something that's real, but something that is fantastic as well, that might not exist or might not exist yet. Um, that's really the power of books and stories and really becoming a part of those story worlds when you're really young and you haven't had so many other ideas about how things are kind of stuck in your mind yet. And I've, I've put here windows and mirrors. So you'll probably hear if you study children's literature about this idea of books being both windows and mirrors. So what does that mean? Um, a mirror, something that reflects back to you things that are familiar to you. So the world right around you, um, your language, um, especially perhaps your mother tongue language, right? What you're hearing at home, um, the plants, the animals, the, the things in your world that help validate your experience. It's so important for children to have that familiarity in books. But it's also really critical to have windows, right? Where you can look out and see something you might never have experienced, something where it's like for a child on the other side of the world. Um, to grow up and that might be so different from your own context, but that you might share something through that story. So broadly, you can think about books as mirrors and windows and that we wanna have both of those things, um, not only as children, but also as adults, right? And then I've mentioned um, community, family, connection. So I think you all have, have had many of the same ideas in the chat and, you know, I'd kind of argue here, we, we think sometimes about literature being something very, you know, so important, and it is, of course, extremely important, um, but we think about it as something as very grown up, right? Um, there's famous authors in, in every culture, um, and we'll think about books for grown ups, those big, thick, heavy books, like that's what makes a literature important. Um, and I'd like to argue, actually, that children's literature is just as important, if not more so, for all of these reasons, right? And so varied, so that you're starting your journey and learning more about it and creating it, deciding what it might be for the children in your lives, the children in your communities, is really exciting. Um, now I'm going to dive a little bit into how we create it in a very broad kind of way, right? Um, I think some of the things we might think about at first would be making books, of course, what we have to get books and stories out there in the hands of children. So we need to have a supply of books and then we need to have demand. So we might think first kind of books that, that families can afford, right? And that can be a real challenge in, in many contexts where books are, are quite expensive. Um, and that's really just kind of the first layer, right? That you can, that you can access a book and that the book has been written. But when you go a little bit deeper, there are many layers that help 
make a book arrive in a child's hand and then that create an environment around that book and around those stories that make it possible for that book to reach that actual child. So on the supply side, creativity, I know, um, I love the story about the little prince and, you know, looking at something, how do you look at it slightly differently? Um, a wonderful theme and, and those creative minds who's making these books. Um, and then the creative experimentation, you know, I think um, about not only the author, but in a picture book, of course, the illustrator, what is the illustrator doing to bring a story to life? What is the editor bringing? What is the designer bringing? There's so many people involved in creating that book. And if, if you think about that last um, page of the book we were looking at, you know, that says, and, um, and she didn't say a word. If we had only those words, we wouldn't really know how that story ended. Um, we could imagine different ways, but we, we don't know where she, we don't know if her children came back. We don't know how she feels. And that, that image allows us to understand so much more than just the text, right? We suddenly know there's the 30 kids, they're all excited about their sweaters. Um, she's excited to be sharing them with them, that she no longer wants to be alone, right? She wants to be with her family and with the people she loves and cares about. And that was all brought visually. And I'm sure was part of a conversation between the author, the illustrator, the editor, um, kind of maybe there were different riffs and, and different times, um, different things they tried to kind of make that perfect ending. So there's so much that goes into to a book and you get those last perhaps 32 pages. That's a very traditional number of pages in a children's picture book. And there's probably been so many drafts and so many different things that have happened before those exact pictures and words arrive there on the page. Um, and then that goes into that knowledge and education of creators. So where do they get that kind of knowledge? Hopefully at universities like Dune University where they can come and learn, they can read other books and stories, get ideas to, to spin off of um, and talk about books with other, other creators. And then on the demand side, um, how do we make sure that those works of art that have been created, those books for children, how do they get into children's hands? And so, you need to have a whole community of support around that, right? You have family members, you have teachers who are reading to children, who are talking about books, who are excited about books. I mean, we all know if we have children in our lives, which so many of us do, that the example you set is perhaps the most critical thing, right? They watch you, they watch you so closely. And if they see you with books and enjoying books, they, they wanna climb on your lap and read with you. They, they wanna know what you're doing and, and how to be a part of it. And then there's that critical community, right? The librarians or people who are helping select books where you can go and you can ask someone about those books. Reviews is also really important. So when the children's book industry started in the United States, um, it really started on the backs of librarians and the, this huge gift from Andrew Carnegie of public libraries. And so he made sure there was a corner in those libraries just for children, right? Where it was okay if they had dirt on their fingers, it was okay if you know, there was a little snot in their noses and they, everything got a little dirty and a little messy, but that was for children to be there with books. And then those librarians kind of took it upon themselves to say, well, we think this book is better than this book and here's why. Um, and whether or not you always agree with someone's opinion, um, it's great to have that critical mind, to have people talking about books and talking about why one is so good versus another one. Um, and that's really how the industry grows, how the creativity grows um, and how people become interested in, in creating those opinions um, on their own. And then the government support for libraries and librarians, obviously, you know, these are pieces that are not that easy sometimes to create. Um, or sometimes there's a big desire and it's not that easy in the, you know, the whole machinations of the political machine, right? But that support and, and that advocacy um, for books getting into children's hands is so important in creating that community. And then that's all based on the knowledge and education of readers. So again, that those people who are helping get books into children's hands. So diving a little bit more into supply. Um, it's so important to have books kids want to read, right? I know that um, 
you know, we all want to share certain messages with children. And sometimes it's easy to be like, I'm going to make a book that says this, or I, I want children to learn to go to bed on time when I tell them or to listen to their elders or whatever it is. And, and those things are really important. And we want to weave those things in to a story, but the best children's books are the ones where a child will come to them on his or her own and really want to read it. Not because the child feels that they're being talked down to, right? But that because they recognize some part of themselves in that story. So I would say to have a varied supply of exciting content, you need inspired creators who've been exposed to the world of children's literature and its formats, genres, and creative possibilities creators who mix that knowledge with their personal and cultural histories, storylines that grow from creators' own childhood experiences, not from moralistic stories where they're trying to create an ideal child. And let's be honest, who among us was ever really an ideal child? Even if on the outside you seem to be, there's always lots of emotions, right? So I really believe that picture books with their marriage of art and text are where children's literature begins. And it can only flourish in the experiences children have with those books and sharing them with people they love and trust. And again, this is coming back to the, the idea of demand um, and this really interesting statistic. And I've shared um, a bibliography at the back of this presentation so you can look more um, at the study if you're interested in it. But there was a study done across 26 different countries, um, I think about 10 years ago. And they found that the presence of books in the home has a greater influence on a child's level, level of education than does the parent's income, nationality, or level of education. So just having books around um, can help just improve a child's life outcomes, right? Their, their level of education, which seems to maybe not have anything exactly to do with books sitting around their house. But this factor more than anything else was really found to be so critical. So if you can't get a lot of books in your home, maybe at the library, maybe you know, just being exposed to them, that's really so critical. Um, and then picture books encourage all different kinds of literacies. So visual literacy, right? It's not just the text, but how the text and the image work together. And in our really media centric world, that's a critical skill for a child to have, to look at a picture and think about it. Think about what is that picture trying to tell me? Um, and then to take themselves and say, is that something that I want to hear or, or put it through their own critical thinking, right? Um, reading skills, of course, building their own skills to be able to you know, learn their phonics and decode and all the important things in, in learning to actually read. Um, then social emotional development, thinking about others, thinking about themselves, um, their language development, explaining their own ideas, so much is really right there in the picture book. So, you know, I think we must encourage parents and, and teachers to read to children, to read together, to share picture books together, talk about them, and relate those stories to their lives and their language. So here I'm going to share a little bit about um, my own experience with Leave Me Alone. Um, that's my son, just tonight actually, um, when we were reading this story together. And, you know, the first place in this book where I think he really engaged, right, is this second or third page where her grandchildren are curious about knitting. Of course, it's really funny that this woman is kind of falling down and being just, you know, all balls of yarn in the air of these children run by and they're curious and, you know, they're wondering, can you make your brother eat this ball of yarn? Like, I think I laugh as an adult, but I know my son immediately thinks, oh yeah, you know, that, that's how I feel about my little sister sometimes. He's immediately kind of engaged in, in that story. And then this bit, now as an adult, of course, I'm laughing here. I know not only is she at the end of her rope, but that that's sort of, you know, a metaphor and it's visually true. She's at literally the end of her yarn. So it's, it's funny. So I'm enjoying this experience too as an adult and the child inside of me and the adult that I am, um, it's really, really fun. And then, you know, we see kind of her little um, routine before she leaves. And I know my son asked me, what's a samovar? And so we were able to learn a little bit about another culture that this is a sort of vessel in which Russians put tea. 
and that you can get your tea out of it. And so that was something fun to learn. You can also, of course, be having an educational experience with a picture book as well, right? This sort of window idea. And then of course, this part where both he and I kind of understand, like we both said to each other, leave me alone sometimes <laughs> for different reasons, right? Um, but it's something where that emotion we both relate to. And then here, I just think we're both surprised. That's one of the most wonderful things about this story is you're, you're reading it and you're reading along and you're like, okay, you know, she goes and sees the bear, she goes and sees the goats. And then suddenly she's walking onto the moon. <laughs> And, and your whole mind is thinking a little bit differently because this really unexpected thing has happened. And, and then of course, there's these little aliens with their beep, 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 beeps and with you know phones and all the electronics that kids have these days. This is very funny to see this very grim like, like story that feels so old fashioned. And yet here you are with these aliens and she can't even go into outer space without, without something bothering her, right? And then we've got the wormhole, which just, I think is so brilliant, both visually, right? That suddenly you're in a totally black um, environment with, with the visuals and you're, you're experiencing that emotionally and also through, through the story. It's, it's just done so well for that picture book experience. And so she's alone, it's perfect. Um, and we get to see her go back through kind of some similar activities. So this is a, something that happens a lot in children's picture books. To see that repetition is, we already sort of knew we watched her have a routine and now she has her routine again in a different way. And that, that's something that is just really nice, that kind of circular idea for a story. You'll see it a lot in you know, all kinds of stories, but I think it works really well visually in a picture book as well. Um, and then she goes back through the wormhole and here we are at the fabulous end to this story where our heroine is now happy and with her, with her grandchildren. So um, it's not only <laughs> me and kind of my own personal feeling about, um, about picture books, but there is a real science behind picture books and why it is that they're so fantastic. So I wanted to show some of this video and let's see if I can actually make it work here. Um, let's see, it's not actually seeming that it wants to work. So, all right, well, this video, <laughs> um, you can see it's also in the, um, will be in the bibliography. And it basically talks about the science of story sharing experiences. So I've summarized it here, um, but you can actually see these different parts of a child's brain lighting up when they are hearing and experiencing a story. So when they see pictures, their visual cortex lights up, when they hear words, their auditory cortex is lighting up. And then when children are talking back or answering questions about a story or engaging with a story, then their language centers are lighting up. So you really have a full brain experience in the story sharing. And I think that's really important to remember when you're talking about children's books and, and picture books and sharing them. Um, sometimes it can seem like it might be a bit frivolous or um, there, you know, there's, um, there's other things <laughs> like uh, the vice chancellor was saying that are seem really important, like studying for your exams and, and figuring out what your career is going to be when you're older. And actually this experience of being with a child, reading with them is so important to their learning and development in, in a really scientific way, as well as just a, a cultural and a, just a wonderful way. I mean, I think the bedtime story and you know, we make most, most stories into a bedtime story and in my family, we're able to do that. Um, and it's such a nice experience to just talk about a story with a child and with anyone really. So um, talking a little bit about Room to Read's work. Um, so we grow book ecosystems. Um, and I know my wonderful colleagues from Room to Read India have been, are hosting this, um, this session or this series of sessions. 
Um, and they are a huge part of helping create these about 3,000 books in 50 languages, 21 countries since 2003. We're constantly growing. So it's really fun. We, we make books around the world and then we're able to share them across different contexts. So that can be really fun for adding uh, a lot of windows for the children we work with. Um, and we're looking at both this supply and demand, right? We're looking at availability. So we want to help train local talent, to mentor authors and illustrators, editors and designers, to help expose um, anyone who wants to learn, anyone who wants to, to read children's books to what great children's literature can be, um, to help universities connect with course materials and work with publishers in, adapting books and languages, commercial and non-commercial, print and digital, and building libraries and stocking them. So we really do have quite a robust um, amount of work in the supply area. And we're also now really trying to focus on demand, right? So how do we create that, that world of, of readers who are so eager to share books with children? Um, through events like this, right? You're working with governments, advocating, um, and really working with parents and teachers so they understand at a, at a really deep level the wonder of reading and reading aloud, um, which is so uncommon in so many childhoods around the world for so many different reasons, right? Um, but we want to just try to get those books into children's hands. And last, an, an idea about how we might start to grow an Indian children's literature. Um, I. I'm so intrigued by the idea of, you know, what is the Indian picture book? You know, the Leave Me Alone is a, is a great example of kind of a riff on the Western picture book. And it turns some normal story ideas kind of upside down. Um, but in so many different places in India, obviously, you know far better than I what there's so many rich traditions of storytelling. So when you bring together art and text, what could you do? <laughs> what kinds of picture books might exist? Do they have words at all? It's a, a question that I have. Um, there's so many wonderful oral stories and you know, being able to share them with even parents who may not be able to read text, what can they do by looking at a picture and sharing that with children? You know, that's such an important part of reading as well. And then building a community of critique to improve um, the asking of questions about books and reading and determine what quality means for books in your context. Um, I've put a link here to a wonderful organization out of South Africa. Um, and it was actually founded by a woman named Eleanor Sisulu. And she had a book that she wrote right after um, <clears throat> Black uh, South Africans were allowed to vote. And it was called The Day Go Go Learn Go Go Goes to Vote. And when that book was published in the US and in the UK, she suddenly got all of these reviews and she thought, wow, this is amazing. I mean, that so many people are reading my book and also that they're thinking about it and, and spreading like the knowledge about this book um, around to teachers and communities. And so she wanted that to be possible for South African literature as well. And she started this website where um, books in indigenous, South African languages are reviewed and people can go and learn about them and find them. Um, can, could think about perhaps community support and win-win possibilities for building demand in small businesses. So there's a very interesting movement in China and Japan where mothers will work as almost a publisher rep and they'll bring other mothers in their communities into their houses or into a place in the community and share books that are coming out from that publisher or from a collection of publishers. Um, and that's a great way for people to, of course, get together and who doesn't love to get together. Um, hopefully that will be able to happen for all of us soon. You know, right now we're doing it all virtually, um, but it works virtually too, right? Coming together and talking about things we care about like stories and our children. And then there's communities like Storyteller Academy, which is kind of an online series of courses, um, which you can check out. And, and then there's a really interesting um, kind of uh, thoughts around technology that I, I had mentioned. But when children's books became really popular commercially in the United States, it was because suddenly the price of them dropped dramatically, which was because a group of of publishers got together and thought, we if we print a million copies at once, we can bring down the cost so much. 
But in order to sell those books, we need to get them everywhere we possibly can. And so that was when books first started arriving in supermarkets and um, in other places where families usually were. And that was really an amazing way to get more books into more families' hands and make them affordable because you get lots of economies of scale when you, when you print so many books at one time. And those were full color books. And if you're interested in learning more about that, there's a really interesting video on Room to Read's Literacy Cloud, which talks about the history of the American children's book industry as just um, to give ideas for other, other ways that children's books, book industries can grow. Um, and then the last idea, of course, is to create courses at June University with the support of wonderful Room to Read India team and the publishing community. So I know you are already starting to do that. Um, and I hope it goes really fabulously. So thank you all so much. And it's been a real pleasure getting to speak with you today. Thank you, Alicia. I wish to screen. Thank you, Alicia. That was wonderful, delightful, absolute delight to hear, and uh, especially the story as you read it out. Um, so that was really beautiful. And I know that you have a number of compliments here. Uh, anybody who, uh, you know, is, is the floor is open for question. If there's anyone who would like to ask any questions. Meanwhile, while you just decide what question you want to ask, I'm going to uh, thank Alicia for discussing at length the, uh, the kind of textual politics that goes into reading and the writing of text, which she spoke about. Uh, she also spoke at length about uh, the whole uh, mechanics of publishing and how we get children to read what we publish and so why it's such, a, um, it's such an important thing and how it's so important to read the way that uh, that we must uh, you know we, we must look for creative ways of reading and um, also uh, i i think in that sense you uh, you know both of you res both uh, ma'am professor vice vice chancellor ma'am and you kind of resonated on the importance of responsibility uh, in terms of reading you know the, the important responsible task uh, that 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 is uh, that that involves us as uh, uh, people around children, as caregivers, to be able to provide the right books to children to read. Um, so any questions? Uh, your, your narrative uh, rendering of uh, the sto short story shall stay with us uh, in, your, <laughs> in your beautiful, engaging voice. It shall, it shall stay with us. Um, OK, so thank you, Alicia. Thank you so much, and we hope that uh, you know, um, you are, we are going to be part of a longer association. I'm sure we are going to uh, do better things and more things together again. Um, so Fatima has a question. In fact, there are questions. Uh, if you'd like to take them, please. One is how do how to identify Chen Chenika Ding Dingra asks how to identify the topics that children would like to read about. I'm going to combine two questions. So she says, how do I identi how to identify the topics that children would like to read about? And Fatima Mustafa talks uh, asks, how can we bring in trauma theory into children's literature and choose books to develop the relevance of both? So would you like to take those questions, uh, Alicia? Sure. Um, you know, I in trying to think about what children would like to read, we maybe want to ask that question from the opposite direction, right? What would you like to read? What is the child in you interested in reading about? Um, I think that the, the most magical stories come from those places inside of us and those, the children that we once were. Um, and in terms of how to bring different kinds of really important topics for children together into books, I think, you know, there, there's more than one kind of, of children's book, right? There's so many different things that, that a book can do. And I think the picture book story, like the one that I shared, is more that one that comes from the creator. And they have something they want to share. They have something from their childhood, something that might inspire children. And then there's also books that are more practical in, in helping 
help children through certain experiences or to learn about a certain thing. And those might end up being a bit more didactic, which is okay. You know, we can have lots of different kinds of books in kind of the constellation of children's literature. There's another question. It says, is it necessary to study child and adolescent psychology to understand children's literature? I don't think so, personally. Um, you know, I think anything that you've studied <laughs> and anything that is part of you as a creator is going to make its way into the into how you express a story. Um, and then, you know, if there's a particular developmental moment in a child's life that it would be helpful to have a book about, like, my child has a book, <laughs> it's called, you know, The Power of No. <laughs> And it's all about, you know, how much he wants to say no all the time, but it also helps flip it around so that I, as a parent, have a little, have some tools to be able to help him think a little bit beyond that immediate reaction. So, like I said, there's, there's many different kinds of books. And I think it's important to have not only those books that kind of help parents and help do certain specific things, and also those books without any intention so they're, they're meant for the child to bring their own intention and their own ideas to it. Thank you so much. That was such a powerful thought, Alicia, and it's going to stay with us. Let the child bring his or her own intention into the book. That's, that's so wonderful. Golden nugget. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, so with that, I'd like to thank Alicia and I'd like to uh, welcome... Uh, Dr. Anto Thomas, Associate Professor at St. Thomas College. Dr. Anto Thomas Chakramakil is Associate Professor and Head of Research Department of English at St. Thomas College Autonomous in Thrissur in the state of Kerala in India. He has been awarded uh, prestigious international fellowships like a Fulbright Pre-Doctoral Fellowship to the National Center for the Study of Children's Literature, among many others. He was one of the keynote speakers to International Research Society for Children's Literature Biennial Congress in 2015. Apart from his scholarly journal article publications and two books, Subversive Ideals in American Children's Literature and German Enlightenment in British Malabar, Dr. Herman Gundart's contrib contributions to Malayalam children's literature, he has published in uh, journals he has co-authored uh, the Malayalam back translation and essay in Alice in Wonderland of Wonderland, published by the Oak Knoll Press, USA, 2015. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to welcome uh, Professor Dr. Anto Thomas. And uh, just, just a minute, uh, sir, before you begin uh, your, uh, your presentation, let me just inform the participants that uh, I am going to have a presentation uh, after Dr. Thomas and Dr. Mudi Ganti uh, at about 1.30. Uh, so uh, I, I'll, I'll pass the floor to uh, Dr. Thomas, please. Welcome, sir. Thank you, madam, for this uh, warm wishes of welcome to the workshop. Loud and okay. clear. Okay, thank you, thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. First of all, I would like to record my heartfelt appreciation to Room to Read India, the prime organizer of this workshop. And I would like to thank the authorities of the host institution, Doon University, for this wonderful opportunity that uh, has been given to me for this presentation. Now, to continue with my presentation the role of uh, children's literature in higher education. The last decade in India has seen an unprecedented growth in the attention given to children's literature, both within our Indian Academy and beyond it. This shift in cultural attitudes towards children's literature is a phenomenon that has attracted attention to highlighting the dual readership of children's literature, the child readers and the adult readers, 
their motives, perspectives, and values. Definitely, the status of children's literature as an academic field has dramatically enhanced in our country. Now, it's a field with a, a growing number of uh, scholars taking interest in it. Books and journal articles are published. Conferences and workshops are organized. And there are uh, a progressive number of doctoral researchers in this field. Children's literature has emerged as a vigorous and diverse area taught at graduate as well as postgraduate levels in many Indian universities and colleges, especially as a part of a BA English or MA English programs. Children's literature studies in higher education today implies to be involved in an exciting and rapidly changing list of topics what are these topics? The topics I would say include defining the field of children's literature, the history of children's literature, genres of children's literature, concepts of childhood, and so on. Besides, as children's literature is eclectic, it accommodates uh, diverse critical approaches uh, including reader response theory, new critical approach, psychoanalytic point of view, um, structuralist or post-structuralist or post-modernist perspectives, uh, views of uh, Marxist criticism or feminism, and so on. Now, I would like to focus today on two significant aspects of children's literature studies. Firstly, children's literature and childhood in our Indian context. And secondly, to indulge in a brief session on globalized childhood and children's literature. But prior to these discussions, let me continue a little more further with my introduction. The premier question while discussing the role of children's literature in higher education is what is children's literature you may think it as a very easy topic but defining what children's literature is isn't that easy in fact it is notoriously difficult to arrive at an all agreeable definition of children's literature the difficulty rises to issues in answering a series of other questions like what is a child what is literature what is childhood is there a universal childhood what is indian childhood etc now there could be no children's literature without real children. However, childhood is obviously far more than a simple biological stage of childhood. Philip Paris uh, treatise, Centuries of Childhood, published in 1962 contributed much to the concept of childhood, thus making children's literature a respectable academic pursuit in higher education. There are myriad ways various societies throughout their history conceive the idea of childhood. A society's concept of childhood is a a pivotal in determining the shift from instruction to amusement as the central principle of a children's literature. 
Now, for example, we have uh, um, the romantic concept of innocent childhood or Victorian fantasies in the concept of childhood and so on. In fact, how much has Indian English children's literature moved away from didactic moral tales uh, of uh, uh, the first uh, decade of our independence in India to pleasurable stories for the entertainment of children in our contemporary times? I would say this is dependent on our shifting notions of uh, childhood. It is cultural studies that reveals this shift in paradigm to recognize that the child, like other cultural objects, is socially constructed. So we may examine our sentimental attachment to certain images of children. I would like to draw your attention to the dangers of perpetuating the romantic image of the child in our particular social reality in Indian context. In other words, there is a challenge in our contemporary times to make books, pictures, movies, toys that do more for children than merely cater to upper class, upper caste, adult fantasies of childhood. Moving on to the second question, what is children's literature? On the one hand, what is regarded as children's literature, even in our contemporary times, is to some extent arbitrary, subject to historical circumstances. On the other hand, the children's literature specialist from Israel, Zohar Shavit, a professor of children's literature, in her work, Poetics of Children's Literature, published in 18, 1986, argues that children's literature develops not arbitrarily, but in the same systematic way across different societies. We also must take into account the critical insights of uh, uh, the American critic Neil Postman, whose work, The Disappearance of Childhood in 1982, into our consideration. Postman argues that uh, gradually the concept of childhood disappears. Is it the media, television, or ICT, that is the cause of a, a drastic shift in our perceptions of childhood. There are a number of contemporary discourses concerning how children become adultified these days, and adults become childified. Few would deny that uh, increasing globalization in our 21st century Indian context, uh, the concentration of uh, capital in multinational conglomerates uh, has resulted into the insignificance of uh, local versions of childhood. We now tend to think in favor of a multiculturally acceptable generic child and oftentimes, this child is a child created with the uh, influence of the Western media. Uh, to be more precise, uh, the Disney as the main property of uh, our concepts of childhood. Having dealt briefly with uh, this introduction, I now move on to the two significant topics of my discussion. The first topic is uh, a discussion on Indian children's literature in the context of our childhood, Indian child.
compared to the Western children's literature, it's only recently that a childhood has begun to be studied in India seriously. The first scholars to begin this work were Sudhir Kakar and Ashish Nandi. While Sudhir Kakar's book, The Inner World, a Psychoanalytic Study of Childhood and Society in India, published in 1978, focused inwardly to produce a psychoanalytic reading of Indian Hindu male childhood. Ashishnandi looked outward, offering a post-colonial perspective in his uh, studies. Later on, Ruby Lal, in her work, Coming of Age in 19th Century India, The Girl, Child, and the Art of Playfulness, published in 2013, explicates how colonial as well as native reformist discourses focused on girlhood. This work is a radical shift in the general perception of upper caste male Indian childhood to a study on female childhood. Her research reveals that the Indian construction of female childhood only emerged in the 19th century through a process of a nurturing, education, and playfulness. Ruby Lal's uh, study on girlhood is not something very unique. Earlier, Michelle Super in 2011, in her work, Contemporary English Language, Indian Children's Literature, Representations of Nation, Culture, and the New Indian Girl, examines Indian girlhood from a variety of perspectives to argue that fictional female characters in English language children's literature in India perform an ideal national gender identity by their powerful voices, by their clothing, and by wielding their bodies as tools that allow them to meet national aspirations. By focusing on what she calls the new Indian girl, Michelle Super, a Canadian scholar of uh, uh, Indian children's literature, shows how children's literature is bound up in nation and identity formation, usually with a, a utopian bias. Superl, in her study, has delineated the polemics involved in the portrayal of central characters in Indian children's literature in English as representative of hegemonic groups. She depicts the way childhood is ideologically constructed to maintain the power structure. While fictional heroes and heroines work together to achieve social transformation, the central characters portrayed in Indian English children's literature, super argues, are homogeneous rather than diverse. Thinking again about the importance of uh, constructions of girlhood, she goes on to observe that many contemporary Indian children's fiction in English deconstructs uh, traditional notions of female childhood and portrays girls as active, independent, liberal, and empowered. They have their agency. The female child protagonists make use of their agency to improve their own lives and those of others who are around them. Thus, 
um, the 21st century has seen a host of uh, scholarly studies on Indian childhood. Indian childhood, real childhood, imagined childhood, from historical, socio-cultural, political, as well as literary perspectives. You may even recollect my own study on the polemics of Indian childhood in my 2017 essay published by Edinburgh University Press in the journal International Research in Children's Literature, where I argue that there are multiple Indian childhoods and Indian childhood is not a homogeneous single entity. I argue a distinction between the forces of cultural homogenization in the past that have helped to reconcile representation of Indian childhood to modernity and the current attempts at cultural homogenization, which resist and subvert this reality that there are multiple Indian childhoods. Indian childhood is constructed essentially as syncretic and hybrid. It is a part of our post-colonial resistance to the threats of uh, this uh, homogenized child. Now, uh, let me speak a little on children's literature in the context of uh, globalization. Children's literature has its link with the capitalism, marketing strategies, and economic progress. And this is actually historical. From the very beginning of children's literature, children's literature had a tie with the capitalism and marketing strategies. I, what I speak of is uh, the modern children's literature in the West. Children's texts inescapably implicate capitalist enterprise and are subject to the internationalization of global trade and markets and the development of multinational publishing companies. This global research imprints itself spatially and enables the sale of, uh, for example, Harry Potter series or other contemporary Western books for children in many languages and locations now, resulting to crowd out children's books produced locally. Book publishing has responded to the new realities of globalization by becoming an information industry with business organized not so much around the manufacture of goods but rather around the generation of rights for sale. Many publishing companies now cash in on the ambitions of parents for their children in a global world, producing informational materials in the form of book products and the computer packages. This tendency is particularly evident in our country, which do not have a, a long history of children's literature production uh, in the sense of Western children's literature. If we go to an average bookshop, more than half the floor space is devoted to products intended for parents who want their children to improve their children's spelling, mathematics ability, geography, or their general knowledge. These products cater to high density populations where places in universities and other institutions are highly competitive so that parents want the best possible opportunities for their children. Yet, 
counter developments are visible there are resistance in many countries like our song government and art organizations or even ngos continue to provide support for national literature and particularly for regional children's literature rhetorics of globalization tend to foreground notions of the global village where the world's children are assumed to enjoy uniform access to products and texts the global village is however differentially available to children and young people depending upon their material circumstances so i have presented briefly two contexts children's literature in india in the indian context and uh, uh, the globalized globalization and the impact of globalization on children's literature and uh, allied material we may say that uh, indian childhood has come into a stalemate situation because uh, uh, there is, there are different uh, multicultural versions of childhood but then there is uh, there has been a traditional attempt to homogenization of childhood apart from the traditional attempt to homogenization of childhood today in our contemporary times we would find that uh, there is an attempt to, to Uh, national consciousness uh, a bourgeois nationalism that is trying to bring in a particular sort of homogenization of indian child now before we conclude what is the solution to this stalemate situation on indian child the suggestion i offer is that significant changes can occur in our literary construction of indian childhood when the voices of regional authors are no longer feeble let them express their identity freely promotion of regional children's literature in india and the wide translation of these regional children's literature is the key to unlocking the puzzling thresholds of a indian child the second solution is more as to provide a symbolic model or an image on indian children's literature what can indian india offer as a model to the globalized world of children literature here i would like to seek resort to feminism i argue that feminism has steered the pivotal discourse in indian children literature today why do i say so? you can look at uh, the number of uh, contemporary indian children's uh, uh, literature authors uh, and uh, you would recognize that uh, take most of these uh, indian authors or children's literature of contemporary indian english for example most of the authors are women women with a progressive mentality so i think it is uh, pertinent to have this comprehensive literary metaphor to link feminism and indian children's literature in our globalized context recently the delhi based uh, uh, children's writer deepa agarwal edited an anthology of indian children's literature and named it uh, spinning yarns the best children's stories from india just published in 2013 but i am hesitant to take this image of spinning to signify the soul of 
Indian English children, Indian children's literature. I consider spinning as a uh, worn out metaphor of Eurocentric discourse on feminism, which is a, a metaphor linked to European fairy tales and children's literature. Also, the art of spinning is quite linear. It is monotonous. Whatever be the intellectual weight of this metaphorical identification, I don't think uh, spinning is the right image. Definitely, an alternative model or image is needed to link Indian feminist perspectives and children's literature. My hunting for uh, a substantial image has arrived at uh, the process called quilting. Quilting is uh, an Asian art form that gained popularity later on in Europe and America. Quilting essentially is uh, uh, sewing pieces of uh, ripped clothes into a design. Quilt as textual discourse views it, it is a metaphor for women's creativity, which has been smothered by patriarchal hegemon. So I would like to borrow this image of quilting. And I would suggest that uh, the children's authors, most of them are women. They are contributing uh, to this quilt by publishing their works in children's literature. Apart from that, who else contributes to this quilt? Another significant contribution to the quilt pattern of Indian children's literature is offered by the publishers and editors of our contemporary period. I would say Tuliga or Katha or Thara or Pratham, Young Zuban, Karadi Tales or even Duck Bill. They are all contributing to this quilt pattern of Indian children's so literature. They promote non sexist, inclusive, multicultural books for readers of all age groups. Most of these uh, indigenous publications for children uh, are also uh, soundly known in the international arena. And they are spearheaded by strong women personalities. And they do not hide their feminist concerns in their publication policies, I would say. So quilting as a metaphor is relevant in the cultural diversity of India to imagine a unified national identity through literary production for children in our globalized context. It's a powerful symbol for women's creativity that has actually taken fire in the country in our contemporary times. Now, last but not the least, when we speak of uh, the contributions to the quilt pattern, I would say Another significant contribution to this quilt pattern is from that of uh, the contributions of non-profit organizations uh, who promote children's literature and children's reading habits, like uh, Room to Read, of course. They are promoting the concepts of Indian childhood in our globalized context. The contributions of these uh, organizations like a room to read actually now lays open as an excellent topic for even doctoral research in children's literature in the context of uh, Indian children's literature, Indian childhood in the contemporary globalized age. Thank you. Now, uh, before we open up for discussions, uh, I take this opportunity to make a, a short academic announcement on children's literature. Recently, editors of an international writing assignment have uh, contacted me to 
um, the edited volume to write a chapter on young adult literature in India. The editors have submitted uh, their writing project to a renowned international publisher. Uh, they are from Europe and they have contacted me and they have uh, demanded to write an essay on young adult Indian English literature as well as uh, on young adult literature in Hindi and Bengali. This is the theme of the writing project for India. Now, I require the assistance of a, a, a genuine scholar to co-author along with me this essay on Indian uh, young adult literature. I do not know Hindi and Bengali. That is the reason why I'm looking for a co-author. I look forward to contacts from this auspicious audience of uh, the workshop in Dune University which I'm sure definitely the participants include scholars in children's literature who can, let's say, uh, co-author with me. So please feel free to contact me for uh, joining in this collaborative venture. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. That was a very uh, enlightening lecture. You spoke at length about Indian childhood in terms of a syncretic and hybrid, hybrid identity. You spoke about publishing and reading as, as a capitalist venture in the context of globalization, market production, commoditization of children's literature, the role of governments and NGOs in the production of children's literature, the idea of government NGOs supporting regional and, and national uh, children's literature. You also spoke uh, about the key ideas that you left the audience with to think about, contemplate about, in terms of uh, giving regional writers their due space, a very uh, more capacious space, if I may say so, than already exists. A lot of work we all know is going on in our own state in Uttarakhand. Uh, several books our own uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor has, uh, has translated many short stories and the work continues. It's a, it's a work in progress. And uh, uh, then, you know, uh, critics like you and writers like you are uh, uh, writing uh, critically and writing so well on this front as well. So, and also you spoke about uh, what India can offer as a model to children's literature. We all know that children's literature as such was a time, was something that as a genre uh, was really, you know, something that achieved this golden age in, uh, from 1860 in, in Britain to around the Second World War. But we have our own idea of, uh, of children's literature and we must now uh, show that to the world in a larger way than we already have. I uh, request you to just uh, uh, try and engage with a few questions that have been put up uh, in the light of the very, very enlightening talk that you have uh, uh, regaled us with. The first question is, can a children's book be a window to adult problems or does it need to be light and happy only? Ask Rikshi Negi. I'm just going to combine two questions. Uh, each time so that uh, it's easy for you to address them. The second question is by Appala who says, how do one, does one go about and help children identify stereotyping in books? Her question is, how does one go about and help children identify stereotyping in books? So would you like to address those uh, first? Um, the, uh, can you repeat the first question, ma'am? Just uh, um, the second is on yes, stereotyping. Yes, I, I will write away. Uh, the the yes, the first question is: Can a children's book be a window to adult problems, or does it need to be light and happy only? Well, um, it depends upon the perspective. Mm -hmm what your motivation is in uh, children's literature. There are two types of children's literature and the way, the perspective of looking at children's literature. One is to focus on the child, the real child. And when you focus on the real child, you tend to be very, very, very careful. And we have our adult perceptions. This is something that the child cannot accommodate. 
this is a concept that the child cannot take in. For example, traditionally, um, concepts like death or sex have been uh, eliminated from children's literature, traditional children's literature. But researchers uh, have probed into this topic and uh, can we say that the children aren't aware of uh, the stark reality of death? They are in their own ways. So, uh, one need to get into the perspective of the child and there are cultural barriers. The Indian culture, how our culture looks at a childhood, how our culture looks at a, um, our perspectives of children, literature, all this matter. And uh, can Adults' problems be addressed in children's literature? Sometimes they can be. They can be addressed. At least how the child looks at the adult. You can, we can say, let's say, uh, I, I do not know whether um, the audience uh, um, have uh, read certain significant uh, uh, American works of uh, children's literature, like Harriet the Spy. Harriet the Spy. Harriet the Spy of uh, Louis Fitzhugh, written in 1960s, uh, 65 or something. Many contemporary women, American women, would say that uh, they have developed uh, feminist perspectives uh, because during their childhood, re they read Harriet the Spy. So, adult problem can be presented through works for children. Some of these works for children, which deal with such uh, problems of adults, may not be, let's say, uh, popular or uh, may be banned, may not be, let's say, uh, popular uh, in the sense that uh, it may not keep up with uh, the didactic principles of children's literature, but they do, there are ways uh, in which so it all depends uh, there cannot be any hard and fast rule that says this is only the topic that is meant for children our concept of a uh, children childhood so and children's literature yes yes uh, the stereotyping i would say uh, that is yes. uh, i hope i have answered even both of these questions together so um, the, yeah, st the, st the, st the stereotyping, oh, you need to, let's say, get into the, um, uh, we can analyze it probably with the reader response theory, taking into the concept of a reader response theory, how to read along with children, uh, getting the responses from children then how they get uh, the stereotypes uh, like uh, uh, sexist or racist uh, um, ideas that are hidden in children's literature. We can guide them probably through reader response methods. That would be one ideal method. Okay. I hope. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Thomas, uh, there's a request by one um, by by Soumya. She wants to. She's very impressed with your lecture, and she would like to get your email ID if possible, so that she can get yeah. in touch with you and uh, uh, confer with you further. Uh, there is yeah. also uh, there is also uh, Sharwani who'd like to ask you a question related to Michelle Pearl. She's uh, she, her question is, can you please elaborate on the works referred to by uh, Michelle Superl while discussing the proactive female protagonists and construction of girlhood in Indian um, children's uh, literature? Uh, are there any uh, folk tales or folklore in your knowledge as well that throw light on this aspect of uh, children's literature? Yes. Um, to, To speak of um, um, Michelle Super, she, uh, she did her uh, doctoral research from Newcastle University in England. She visited me during her doctoral research. I, I think she came to all of uh, 
uh, India. She visited India. She stayed in India. She uh, did her, her research uh, uh, on more than 100 or so books of, uh, let's say, um, the um, late 20th century and early 21st century uh, Indian English children. So her book is, uh, uh, it's available. Uh, it's a uh, contemporary English language Indian children's literature representations of a nation, culture, and the new Indian girl. Actually, it is her doctoral research, which was later published by Routledge Publications. Till, uh, um, if you type Michelle Super in the net, I'm sure you will get this book. This is uh, one of the most significant uh, works on Indian English children's literature written by a Western scholar. Uh, children's literature, representations of nation, culture, and the new Indian girl. It's a, it's a critical yes. work. Yes. yes. Sorry. Sorry. So is there anything you'd like to say or should I ask the next, next question if I may? Okay. Oh, okay. Please continue. Uh, the other question, uh, there are two questions actually uh, asked by different uh, participants. I'd like to uh, combine them. Uh, so one question is how and when should one, Ria Jain asks this question, how uh, does one, uh, how and when should, uh, in, how should one introduce children to the LBG, uh, L LGBTQA QIA, uh, community? And uh, the other question that uh, is, uh, is asked is by um, Sanjukta, who asks uh, people uh, sometimes uh, hope and they, they believe it's a mandate that children's story as a mandate should be a moral story. So is it necessary to teach children something always or uh, that it should convey a message or just not let, let children read for fun? Okay. okay. I think, sir, uh, yeah. in, in, his, in the start of Sanjukta, if I may, uh, at the start of his session, he said, uh, there's no children's literature without a child. So yeah. he yeah. was very, um, I think that's a very poignant thought. Um, but sir, please, please, please answer it. Yes. Now, the first question was, uh, how and when should uh, um, a parent or uh, an adult uh, introduce um, um, topics like LGBTQ to children? I think we don't need to be so earnest about that. Let the child demand. The, ch the children will be inquisitive in the present contemporary society. Uh, so I think the first question is quite... Uh, uh, answer because uh, we don't need to take the initiative. Let the let the child be inquisitive, and that I would say is the correct time to introduce the topic. Uh, if not, the child will learn slowly. Now uh, we adults uh, have a patronizing as well as colonizing attitude. We think that uh, everything should be introduced to us. There should be, let's say, opportunity for children to explore on their own uh, in the library. They can explore on their own if the child is uh, given ample opportunities for that. The second was, uh, uh, should it be mandatory to have a message out? Now, if the message is explicit and uh, if it is uh, uh, direct, I think it would be very boring to our contemporary children. But there cannot be any children's literature, I would say, because children's literature can exist only with the real child. Although adults can read and take pleasure and make a lot of critical studies on children's literature, but Children's literature proper can exist only with the real child. And when it is with the real child, obviously there will be some element of message in it, but often as sugar-coated tablets, hidden, not so overt, it will be there. And 
it will not be direct. The child may not, let's say, directly know it, but slowly it will work behind the scene, not on the stage. Now, children's literature, for your information, is the only genre of literature that is written uh, with a specific age group. If you look at a, a book for a child, it will be said for the age group, uh, eight to 10 year old children to read, or 10 to 13 year old children to read, 13 to 16 year old people to read. We never publish uh, any work in adult literature saying that this is meant for people at the age group 50 to 55. So this age restriction also has to do with uh, what is the level of didacticism that is given to children? And I would say that uh, children consider it as highly obsolete to have direct messages given to them in their writings for them. I think it's Thank you so much, Dr. Thomas. Uh, thank you for sparing the time. Thank you for being so generous uh, in answering all the questions. You have uh, painstakingly and effortlessly uh, answered all the questions and I'm sure that our audience has a lot to process uh, long after we finish with the workshop. Thank you so much. And also for the opportunity that you um, let, you've given to uh, young scholars to reach out to you especially concerning the book that you're writing and the, the chapter that no, you're writing. So thank uh, you so much. Th th uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Rita Joshi for uh, being so patiently uh, uh, listening to what I say and especially when I lost my uh, internet connection. So thank you for the good words of uh, introduction uh, as well as for steering this uh, discussion so, so well. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, Dr. Thomas. Um, with that, I would like uh, to request Ms. Aditi Bisht from our department. Aditi Bisht uh, is um, assistant professor at the Department of English, Toon University. And uh, um, Aditi, would you please, um, I request you to please introduce our next speaker, uh, Dr. Usha Mudiganti, please. Over to Aditi. Thank you so much, ma'am. So uh, now next we have Dr. Usha Mudugandi. Uh, she is an associate professor in Ambedkar University. Uh, ma'am teaches English and is associated with the School of Letters and the School of Undergraduate Studies. She's also a deputy dean of the School of Undergraduate Studies of a university. Her research interests are study of childhoods in literature, gender studies, and popular culture studies. Her interest in the study of childhood began during her master's degree in English at the University of Hyderabad. Through her MPhil dissertation at the University of Hyderabad, she has highlighted the lack of substantial depictions of girlhood, even in Bildang's Roman novels, with girl protagonists in late Victorian and early modern England. She obtained her PhD degree in 2007 from the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi, for her thesis on the reification of childhood. Her book on the child in literature, titled Toying with Childhood, is forthcoming. So uh, I would now like to welcome you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Aditi, for the introduction. And uh, uh, thank you, Room to Read, for for contacting me about this. Um, and thank you to uh, Doon University for this opportunity to uh, present my thoughts on children's literature and subtext. Um, so I am, uh, I have been listening to Dr. Andrew Thomas's uh, uh, lecture and uh, uh, thank you Dr. Thomas uh, for this, uh, uh, for uh, this extremely erudite uh, presentation that you gave on uh, uh, children's literature in India um, and uh, uh, it's sort of I feel that it sort of sets the stage for uh, what I have prepared for the day uh, and uh, um, it also gave me like uh, uh, the uh, 
the energy and the enthusiasm when I saw the questions being asked. Because uh, uh, when I saw the questions, I was oh, these are these are people who really, really are interested in children's literature, uh, and um, and in the uh, academic study of children's literature, uh, which is very heartening. So. Uh, uh, with with that, I would like to begin um, what I wanted to actually say or speak about children's literature today. So uh, uh, when we when we talk of children's literature, I uh, I mean uh, I joined Dr. Andrew Thomas's uh, speech uh, a little late, and therefore I don't uh, uh, know what uh, is the context from where he um, emerged. Uh, into the argument. So what I really actually followed was his argument. And um, but the context, the context that I wanted to bring to everybody's notice is uh, this, uh, this idea of when we when we start saying children's literature, what is it that we really mean? What do we mean when we say children's literature? Now, with people uh, like the students of Dune University, who are, uh, I think, all of them young adults. Um, I mean, uh, please don't be offended when I say that. But uh, what I mean is that, you know, uh, you people are people who have, uh, who are adults, of course, in the legal sense, and who have also uh, probably attained uh, uh, the legal age of adulthood. And therefore, you would like to believe that you are, uh, you are adults. And that's wonderful. And uh, I am I'm not for a second doubting that, right? All I want to say is that, you know, when we start these categories, when we say, this is a child, this is a young adult, this is a teenager, this is an adolescent, what really are we doing? We are using some sorts of parameters. And we are using these parameters to be able to say that, you know, you, the use of these parameters help us to understand what really is uh, useful for this person. What is it that might interest this person? What is it that this person would like to read? What is it that this person is, uh, would be able to access uh, cognitively, emotionally, intellectually, um, and uh, 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 socially? Right. So what are the various things that we uh, categorize as being good for various categories? Right. And that is exactly how when we look at uh, children's literature, we start with this idea of, uh, first of all, what is a child and then what is children's literature? So, uh, you know, this this seems like a fairly commonsensical sort of a thing, because as Dr. Thomas was pointing out, if we walk into an average size bookshop, um, literally half the books in the bookshelves are uh, are targeting children and are saying that these are for children, right? So, uh, uh, mm, and people who go to buy these books, um, if if these people are children, they are probably going with somebody who is uh, older than them, and therefore is a young adult or uh, an adult who is saying that you know, uh, well, I will guide you into picking up a book that is appropriate for you to read, right? So, uh, uh, which comes, uh, which brings us back to this idea that what really are children reading, and uh, what is it that children are uh, getting to read? Right. So when we when we ask these questions, then we are actually then going back to this moment where uh, where we began, which is saying that what is appropriate for a child to read. Right. And therefore, we are also looking back at this moment where we say what is really children's literature. Yeah. Uh, and how is it different from every other kind of literature? So let me just briefly take you to this uh, point where uh, these questions probably started being asked, right? These questions probably started being asked when um, publishing and printing became uh, accessible and uh, uh, inexpensive and 
education or literacy uh, was uh, gaining um, uh, uh, some um, uh, <clears throat> um, traction, yeah? Uh, which means that socially people were thinking that it is important for people to be educated, for the masses to be educated. Because you see, it was not like always and forever, everybody uh, had equal access to education. From the 21st century perspective and from the, from the privileged sorts of perspectives that we all, despite our heterogeneous experiences, despite the um, levels of inequity that we face the uh, uh, we we in from our current location are actually quite privileged the fact that we are joining this webinar and the fact that we are able to um, do webinars uh, tells us that we are privileged right so uh, l allow me that uh, uh, that descriptor uh, for now and let me continue with this idea that when we say that we are privileged and we look back at say two centuries and three centuries what we are looking at is a moment where people uh, did not have access to literacy and education at the level at which we currently have right however because of various kinds of social cultural changes from the 17th century onwards uh, although although printing was invented in the middle of the 15th century and there were various sorts of uh, uh, books printed there were uh, there were pamphlets printed there were all kinds of things printed um, printing was supremely expensive and book bookmaking was supremely expensive and therefore nobody really uh, thought of book buying or uh, producing books to target audiences the way uh, in the 21st century we now think right so considering all these sorts of things books that were written and books that were bound and books that were sold were sold to people who were highly literate highly educated and uh, were of the category that we would now think as rich or elite right so uh, uh, which only means that really very very few children accessed books and the ones who accessed books in the uh, uh, in the early 17th and 18th centuries were children of a particular class and uh, uh, quite a lot of them were actually uh, books that were specifically written uh, or prepared handmade sometimes uh, by their family members and uh, it is uh, um, uh, in the Fairly recent research in children's literature uh, revealed to us that uh, uh, the exact date when uh, people uh, uh, can trace back this sort of unique designer books was 1740 by a woman called uh, um, uh, Jane Woodward, who uh, uh, hand wrote uh, cards and books and various sorts of things to che to 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 be able to uh, uh, engage with her children in ways in which she would be teaching them right so uh, uh, so literally the beginnings of children's literature shows to us that children's literature started with a pedagogical intent huh so what I mean by that is that children's literature in its absolute first sort of forms in the Western world was started with an intention of teaching children. Now, what is it that children are being taught? Sometimes children are taught the basics of literacy. Sometimes children are taught the ways of the world. Sometimes children are taught uh, wisdom. Sometimes children are taught uh, the, uh, the, uh, the um, cultural uh, belief systems of their culture. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so primarily then, we can safely say that the beginnings of children's literature was with a pedagogical intent. And 
children's literature surprisingly enough even in contemporary times retains this pedagogical intent and uh, uh, large parts of children's literature large numbers of stories and uh, um, fiction uh, that is written for children uh, whether it be stories or novels or um, oral tales or read aloud stories various sorts of things retain a pedagogical intent and uh, uh, there is a sense of a guided reading when it uh, uh, when there is a when there is any sort of conversation around reading and childhood so when we are taking two things together we are, when we are taking reading and childhood together we are talking about a pedagogical intent as being one of the primary aspects of uh, uh, children's literature yeah now this is one aspect one primary uh, peg through which one can look at children's literature however there has also been from a very long time from uh, um, absolutely let us say from um, the late 19th century onwards uh, there has also been this aspect of looking at childhood and the uh, the essential beliefs about childhood and therefore saying that you know what is it that interests children what is it that engages children how can children be taught things without losing their audience what how is it that we can um, interact with children from the perspective of childhood right so uh, therefore there there was also then in childhood studies this attempt to look at the history of childhood and and we are still talking about the western world okay so uh, we are looking uh, and we are talking about what is it that, what is uh, when we look back at the history of childhood where do we say we start noticing this uh, 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 this being called a child right now uh, you might you might think is she being absurd uh, why is it that children are not noticeable right i mean when a child is born we know a child is born and therefore we know that you know uh, there is uh, there is something called childhood yeah so uh, why is she being so absurd i'm sure you're thinking that right so let me quickly then explain and elaborate what i mean when i say that you know noticing a child i don't mean noticing biological childhood yeah i know that you know from the minute a child is born we notice a child and we know that there is something called childhood and uh, uh, the child from its birth has particular sorts of requirements right the first requirement the child when it's born an infant is a completely dependent being and depends literally for its life on adults on caregivers right so so then it should not be surprising at all to believe that the child is attended to the child is noticed and childhood is noticed as a biological phenomena childhood is noticed however uh, when we look at the history of childhood and we start talking about the history of childhood we realize that uh, for a very long time uh, people believed that uh, uh, the child that could walk and talk could be integrated into adult society which meant that the minute a child acquired the ability to walk by itself and to start talking the child found its way into its community and learned within the community learned from the ways of the community and learned its uh, roles its place its uh, life and its life expectations from what is around in the community which of course persists even now undoubtedly right all children do not learn everything about how to be and how to behave 
uh, only after being taught and told. Children observe things. Children observe what's happening around them. From the time children are very, very young, even before children start walking by themselves, and even as children acquire language, they do that out of observation. So children are learning. Children are learning from the second, from the minute that they are born, right? A child who cries out when it's hungry has already learned that it needs to indicate that it is hungry and therefore gives a signal that I am hungry, feed me, right? So, uh, which means that children are literally learning from the minute they are born, yeah? It's not like children need to be actually overtly trained into every single thing. Children make meaning from what is around them, right? And they have always been making me meaning from what is around them. And therefore, assuming that children need to be taught every single thing is also problematic and something that probably all of us who are interested in children and in childhood should start wondering about and should start saying that, huh, now where is it that we learned this idea? So I'm borrowing from what Dr. Uh, Thomas was saying that uh, um, we have this colonial idea that this uh, of colonizing, right? So uh, the idea that, you know, unless we are told something, we will not be able to learn it ourselves and we will not be able to do it ourselves. If as adults we are told that, we get very offended. But we believe that all children need to be always told what they, need, what they should be doing. However, children from the second they are born survive only because they understand that they should express what is it that they feel and what is it that they want. And they try and try and try to express. However, we also as adults should have the ability and the patience to listen to what they are trying to express. But considering that we talk about childhood in formal settings where we are talking about uh, teaching the child or um, dealing with the child or um, civilizing the child or training the child, we, we try to learn ways in which this teaching and civilizing and uh, training can happen where we are sensitively looking at the child. So primarily we are saying that I want to engage with the child, I want to understand the child and I want to sensitively look at the child. The reason we are saying all these things is also because of the fact that there was a moment in history when people really started understanding that it is not sufficient to nurture a child till the moment that the child starts walking and talking and we can then allow for this child to go into the world and to say that, you know, I am, I am prepared for the world and I will learn by myself. You see, so that is where history of childhood says that most people who uh, look at the history of childhood agree that uh, uh, that moment of this clear differentiation between there being a separation from the world of children to the world of adults can be traced back roughly to the um, mid uh, in the Western world to the mid 17th century. And from then on, there was this uh, focused looking at childhood. Yeah. Uh, so this focused looking at childhood that we're talking about in the Western world, <clears throat> let us say, started somewhere around the 17th century. All right. And uh, that is when uh, it was believed that, you know, children should be trained, uh, uh, 
children should have some opportunities that are different from adults there are some sorts of uh, special ways in which children need to be treated and all these things started showing in what was being written for children therefore and what was then started being considered as children's literature so the beginnings of children's literature was a moment where we started saying that children need to be taught and uh, there are specific things that need to be told to children and uh, children should not be allowed access to specific kinds of knowledge right and leslie fiedler calls this the beginnings of the cult of childhood yeah and uh, leslie leslie fiedler uh, said this in 1957 so it's uh, uh, it's really not a new term right and uh, 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 it's really not a new essay either uh, the the one in which leslie fiedler said this right so there is then for something called the cult of childhood and then there are all these things that start when we start talking about the cult of childhood one of the things that uh, seems to be uh, the absolutely essential aspect of what we can how we understand childhood uh, seems to um, be in the spectrum of uh, uh, innocence and ignorance right so a lot of the guided reading a lot of uh, uh, the uh, uh, pedagogical intent towards childhood seems to be uh, at the point where we are talking about the child being ignorant and therefore quite a lot of this guided reading is trying to teach the child various things and uh, primary level books that are written for children absolutely basic books if you look at books even in india or abroad um, today if you start saying i want to buy a book for a child the first thing you will think is what is how old is the child if the child is of the age where the child can be read aloud to and will understand the language in which i am reading then you are talking about a child who is around 3 or 4 years old right and therefore you are looking at books that are what are called phonics yeah where uh, you are teaching the child or you are uh, you are looking at read aloud books right where you are while you are reading aloud to the child you are teaching the child what is the world what is it that the child is entering uh, who are the people that the child is going to engage with there is somebody called mama there is somebody called papa and there are people called uh, baby sister baby brother uh, if there are or there are po- there are possibilities of baby brother and baby sister right uh there are friends there are there is a grandmama there is a grandpapa there are probably two grandmamas and two grandpapas right so what we are doing therefore is introducing the child into a heteronormative family and we are uh, explaining the child gender roles and we are uh, showing the child through literature what the world seems like what is it that papa does what is it that mama does and what is it that uh, the child is expected to do what is it that the child will learn and what is it that the child will eventually do like go to school right and uh, what is it uh, uh, if a baby brother is a, or a baby sister is being anticipated what is it that the child should prepare himself or herself for right so we are preparing the child to join the adult world through uh, these books that we are teaching uh, we are bringing to the child even if it were a read aloud book or if it were a book that were uh, uh, to be read by the child right so primarily then every book that is written for a child works with a subtext the sub the subtext of these books is to prepare the child for the world right for the child to make meaning out of the word to be able to access the world all right so primarily it is the word that is going to lead the child into the world 
however the child is already in the world even in a pre word stage right so i believe that what is important for people who are dealing with children is to also understand that the child is already in the world in a pre word stage and if we start doing that the possibility of making the books that we bring to children becomes richer we would we would be able to curb our impulses to be so colonizing or patronizing or um um normative and therefore we would not really think that uh, uh, every childhood is similar we would have the space and the ability to believe that there is a possibility of differentiation when we are looking at childhood there is a possibility of there being various sorts of differences within childhoods and children's literature will carry those sorts of differences within childhood right so uh, uh, when i was speaking to uh, uh, the the people from room to read i was telling them that you know um, i don't think that uh, indian children's literature lacks this it does not indian indian children's literature from the beginnings of time did begin with a pedagogical intent now i would like to think that children's literature in india began with the panchatantra tales because they were specifically narrated to children by a man called vishnu sharma right so which means that there was a sense that you know children need to be trained into the ways of the world uh, through being told these stories yeah so the panch if we look back at the panchatantra and we say that that is the moment when indian children's literature began then india after the panchatantra india has such a rich and colorful history including hundreds of years of uh, multiculturalism and multilingualism that there is literally uh, an entire ocean of uh, uh, children's literature no wonder then indian indian children's literature there is this tome called the katha sarit sagar right the reason it is called katha sarit sagar is because it's literally a sagar right it is it is talking about various streams of stories joining together for a particular sort of audience called the child right and this child and this audience that we are looking at as the child is not some monolithic being it is accounting for the multiculturalism and the multilinguality of this audience when we are talking about this person called the child in india right now after that there were these moments where we were uh, uh, moved into a sort of homogenizing of every sort of category yeah so this is what is the ideal child this is what is the ideal man this is what is the ideal woman i like to link it with india's colonial experience right and therefore i like to uh, say that uh, um, during that colonial enterprise of being able to uh, rule over a large landmass it becomes easy to say that you know uh, well it is quite simple actually because this is the ideal and if everybody just follows this ideal uh, you know we can provide for this ideal we can sufficiently provide for this ideal and that is how this entire idea of a homogenizing takes place right and this homogenizing of childhood into okay uh, every child will have one papa and one mama and one older brother or one younger brother or one older sister and one younger sister hum do hamare do right perfect picture and the perfect picture looks perfect because it needs to look perfect because that is the perfect picture that can get facilitated 
and therefore uh, it becomes very very difficult to cater to that perfect picture and talk about the richness of the experience of childhood nevertheless i believe that there has always been in india this uh, uh, little group of people who have been engaging with childhood and have been centering the child and have been focusing the child and writing for the child right and writing about childhood now uh, one of my favorite books for children is a cbt publication and a very very old publication this is the book it is called life with grandfather and it's by a man called shankar it came out first in 1965 and uh, 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 this book it came out first in 1965 okay uh, when i was in born and uh, uh, it's been around forever right uh, to me it seems like forever right because it's been around from before i was born yeah now this is a book that is written purely from a child's perspective and uh, uh, it is talking about a childhood and it is talking about a child where a child is recalling a childhood and a childhood that was set in rural south india and a very loving and encouraging sort of a childhood where grandparents are bringing up a child right now i have many issues with this book also as a scholar who is looking at childhood i will be able to find issues in everything right uh, now for instance i would want to ask why is it called life with grandfather why isn't it called life with grandparents because there is a grandmother also have we forgotten the grandmother she is the one who was doing the cooking she was the she was the one who was doing the feeding right and therefore i'm saying that you know why is it that shankar is not talking about the woman in the women in his life why is he only talking about the patriarch of his life right so there is a possibility to be to ask these questions of something like life with grandfather also however what i really like about the book is the fact that it is actually centering the child and talking about the experience of childhood there are generations of uh, people who will tell you that i really enjoyed reading life with grandfather when i was a child and this is a cbt publication right it's not a fancy publication of any kind i bought this 20 years ago for 23 rupees right uh, however uh, uh, yes uh, so uh, however the point is that uh, uh, children who are reading this now today will ask these questions they will ask these questions that why doesn't it say life with grandfather grandparents why isn't he saying life with grandmother only if there is a possibility of some adult reading it aloud with the child and explaining to the child that well the world changes right and the way people look at the world changes the way in 1965 an old man called shankar when he was sitting down and writing this probably he was doing this in somewhere in the early 1960s let us say right when he was already a very old man hmm? probably he was looking back at his childhood which was in the 1920s and 1930s in rural south india and for him grandfather was the most important figure in that family right which is why he's saying life with grandfather however that night that need not be the case in 2021 right so uh, uh, so the point is that you know there are all these books there are all these books now i have a lot of uh, cbt books with me uh, there is this one called short stories for children which has some very interesting stories now yes yesterday i was reading this one called read aloud stories right and in this one i noticed one story in which uh, there is uh, uh, there is something about a uh, it is by somebody called pratibha nath and it's called cat and mouse and pratibha nath eventually wrote many other books for children okay now this was also written in uh, 19 uh, it was printed for the first time in 1990 yeah which means that uh, it it was worked upon in the late 1980s when i was myself a child right so uh, when pratibha nath is talking about uh, uh, reading aloud to a child she is talking about a very young child okay and she uh, she has this 
a short story called Cat and Mouse, in which she is talking about a cat re reading a big book for cats, and she is talk and uh, a mouse outwitting the cat. Immediately for everybody in my generation, it reminds us of um, Tom and Jerry, because that's what we saw on television, right? Doordarshan ka zamana. And uh, uh, and we thought that, you know, why is it that this cat, which is such a grown up and so big, is always being outwitted by this chotu mouse, right? Now, this Jerry. Now, Pratibha Nath is saying, uh, if, the, if the cat is uh, looking at the book, big book for cats, the mouse is also looking at the big book for mice. So what I really loved about this story is that there is humor in it and it's very short. It is actually of the kind that you can talk to and explain to a two, three year old child, read aloud to a three year old child and the three year old child will laugh at the joke but will also understand in some way, in its own way, understand that there is a possibility that there is a big book for mice also, which means that there is a possibility for a big book for little children also, right? So it's all about centering the child, actually. So there are lots and lots of these sorts of books which are already there. Now, uh, uh, and there are books that are trying to, in the 80s and the 90s, and, uh, you know, women of my generation who were writing for children, uh, who, women who were slightly older than me, who were writing for children, yeah, uh, whom I had read as a researcher, uh, like, for instance, Deepa Agarwal or Devika Rangachari or Manorama Jaffa, yeah, uh, they were also in their own ways, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, they were uh, they were also uh, in their own ways introducing this ability of focusing the child, talking about the heterogeneity of childhood, right? And therefore, it's not as if these books do not exist. Yeah, it, it's just that we need to really keep looking for these books, and uh, we need we need to when we are talking to children, we need to point them to the changes in the worldview and therefore tell them that, well, this is an old book. This is how the world was at that time. But it's not like this anymore. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, well, uh, as uh, uh, Ms. Dipali Agarwal pointed out to me that, you know, we are, uh, we are probably nearing the end of our session. So, um, uh, can, uh, so I will just stop here. But uh, 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 please, uh, if there are any questions. Thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, it was a really uh, very great, you know, in-depth analysis you did of children's literature. Such an interesting session. Uh, yes. So uh, before we uh, proceed to the question and question and answers, uh, next we'll have a lecture and presentation by Dr. Richard Joshi Pandey. So uh, yes, if anybody has any questions, so. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, Yashika writes that, you know, this reminds me of uh, Peregrifical questions. Uh, yes, it, it went quite viral where she talks, uh, she's asking her mother that, you know, why are things uh, man-made? Aren't women supposed to make stuff? And uh, she's a little girl of four or five years old. Then it went quite viral uh, a few weeks back. So, uh, yeah, so uh, the question is, ma'am, uh, uh, you mentioned the subtext of a book about a family and how it reveals gender roles. How could one not stereotype? I mean, aren't we confining it uh, like a boy is your brother because it usually exhibits photos and titles like that. Even the type of families depicted in books that have this uh, as that format. What is the best way to deal with this? And one more uh, question along with that, the role of academic psychological study in children's literature. Um, well, they are two, two separate questions and uh, both of them, if I want to deal with them uh, 
in great detail will take a lot of time however uh, i think that you know for the first one i would say that there is a variety it's about actually when we are picking up a book for a child as an adult to read aloud or to buy we need to be a little careful and we need to spend some time looking for a book that is not reiterating these stereotypes if we do not want to reiterate these stereotypes uh, towards uh, with with children in our families yeah uh, so that is that is the uh, that is where i will leave it for now because we are really running short of time right the uh, the second one uh, where uh, uh, there is this uh, uh, query about uh, the academic okay. reading of children's literature and uh, uh, um and there was another term that was used could you uh, would uh, can you request you to just repeat yes ma'am the role of academic psychological study psychological study the uh, role of academic psychological study yeah so which is uh, which is where my uh, area of research actually lies right uh, but uh, uh, but the, uh, but the point is that that will also take a lot of time so i would like to only say that you know what happens when we are looking at children's literature from an academic perspective and we are doing a psychological study of children's literature there is a possibility of doing a psychological study where we complete completely forget the fact that it is written for children right and we go into uh, a deep analysis of what could be the subtext of uh, this writing and uh, and there is a lot of it that's given to children um, whereas while while children's literature is analyzed academically by adults and not by children right, right. children's literature is read by children right so when uh, when we are doing an academic reading of children's literature and doing a psychological reading of children's literature there is a possibility of our saying that okay well there are all these underlying motives which are not all that innocent yeah and uh, uh, this is what we are presenting to children now whether we are going to be judgmental about it or not is a different thing altogether whether we are going to say oh this connects back to the 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 life history of the writer is an altogether different matter right but if we are doing a psychological reading of children's literature and we are saying what is it it does to the psyche of the child yeah that is going to help us a lot more in bringing to the child literature that the child might enjoy as a child instead of doing a psychological reading where we say that you know we are doing the psychological reading of children's literature where we understand that the motive of the writer was not about uh, fun yeah so uh, in fact in the previous session i had seen a comment question where somebody was saying uh, uh, is it derogatory to call children's literature nonsense literature yes uh, ma'am that question. was a, yes that, that was a very good uh, observation you see the thing is that we do call it nonsense literature only because children's literature also allows for the subversion and allows for a lot of uh, um, adults to talk about a lot of things that they mm-hmm. cannot yeah yes. yeah uh, but uh, uh, as the latest question just said by uh, very in in it blighton it was just to fun just to have fun right which yeah. is precisely why in it blighton survived right? right despite so much of discouragement despite so much of stereotyping despite so much of racism in in it blighton we should be above board and say that you know there were all these things in it blighton right despite that everybody is reading in it blighton even now because in it blighton always centered the child and asked what is it that children want to read yeah so when we are uh, uh, when we are uh, critically analyzing children's literature uh, and we are saying that you know well this is about fun all right but in it blighton probably children should not read we should say it because you know it is actually encouraging racism yeah yes. if that is the kind of work we do then probably we'd be able to present bring a lot more richness to what we bring to children yeah 
so uh, uh, i mean uh, can i can i just say that can i stop here or uh, uh, if there are more questions i i am fine but i i suppose you people have other sessions to uh, uh, lined up and and in fact even i have a class after this so okay. so, <laughs> so can i can i just say that you know if i have i can take one more question or something if you have the time or can i just say that you know i really enjoyed interacting uh, even on chat with all the questions and that i was uh, following and reading and um i uh, uh, really enjoyed uh, listening to dr thomas and the uh, the question answer session after that yeah uh, thank yes, you so yes. much for this opportunity yeah. and thank uh, you so much yeah uh, so uh, uh, i can uh, uh, yes yes ma'am uh, you quite a few questions you answered actually you were uh, kind of reading the chat box also and <laughs> you clubbed in all the questions so thank you so much for that and uh, you know it's it's a great uh, you know uh, perspective that you open to all of us so thank you thanks a lot and uh, yeah so uh, over thank to, you very uh, much uh thank you so over to uh dr richa joshi pandey ma'am uh, uh i'll introduce her aditi first uh, okay, so it has been a wonderful journey with uh, dr richa and i think like introducing her i am now learning new shades about her <laughs> so uh, dr richa joshi pandey uh, currently assistant professor and in charge at department of uh, english school of language in dune university and she has been here for almost 7 years now uh, she completed a phd with hnb garhwal university and the topic is quite interesting historical excavation in the fictional and selected non fictional work of amitav ghosh and as we are all see dr richa is moderating this session no doubt she has organized participated presented papers in various national and international conferences workshops and seminars she has published also widely in various journal of national and international repute interesting to know her areas of interest uh, medical humanities environmental humanities indian writing in english literary theories and criticism and most important gender studies so welcome dr richa for the last session of the day which in fact uh, gives an overall overview of this workshop that how this was uh, like a uh, overarching workshop which has different dimensions of children literature over to you dr hr thank you dr thank you pushpalata ji uh, it's been wonderful associating with you um, extremely generous and with your time and with uh, the way that you handle everything so um i know this is the last session but i hope i do justice to your time i know it's very precious to have you listening to me so i hope uh, i uh, do justice to your time um i would like to share a presentation uh, without uh, uh, i i can i just directly start with the with the presentation yes thank you uh, dr mudi ganti it was a pleasure listening to you uh, and i'm sure we get to connect in future as well so my topic today is Children's literature and overview and a tone setting. So early childhood is an ideal time to support children in gaining knowledge about the world and about themselves as active participants in it. And I was, as I was talking, I, I don't know where uh, my connection got disconnected. Uh, children have a very immersive way of reading. They are extremely intimate with what they read. They are. their views of the world are not yet formed and so they are yet very open to new experiences far more open with delight and wonder to new experiences they also have a lot of credibility in what they you know a lot of credulousness in what they uh, read children reading gives children opportunities to see aspects of their own identities reflected back to them as well as opportunities to explore the lives and experiences of people and places distinctly different from their own and when they see when this uh, kind of reading happens where the child is able to uh, have a kind of his own intention unfolding take shape 
this kind of reading actually counters the kind of agency that might like to subdue uh, an adult run, reading as an adult run activity, in the sense that multiple agency by the child then unfolds. Okay. So uh, can we have the next slide, please? Literature illuminates what it means to be human and makes accessible the most fundamental experiences of uh, life, love, hope, loneliness, despair, fear, and belonging. I've, I've already read this slide. Can we, can we take the next slide, please? Mirrors and windows. I'm once again going to talk about mirrors and windows. Uh, children, and especially international children, uh, literature, you know, it, the way that it's it looks at young people's access to literary mirrors and windows. Uh, if you look at translated uh, texts as such, it's not always the case that translations actually bring young readers into contact with another culture. Sometimes there are limitations with it. However, it's important to have children read a diverse range of texts, uh, translated texts, multicultural encounters, cultural, intercultural exchange of that kind. Um, so coming to mirrors and, and windows, you know, when books act, act as mirrors, readers see themselves reflected in the literature, be it in the text, in the illustrations, or in the combination of the two, aspects of their own identities are reflected back to them. They feel a sort of connection. They feel that their their identity is validated, they, their experiences, their stories, the way they interact with the world around them, their friends, their day-to-day -day crises are validated. There is a sense of being seen, being, being included. Uh, windows for literature to truly support and increase in global mindedness, in not just literature as, uh, you know, in terms of circulation in a global village, but in, in, in the sense of global mindedness and intercultural knowledge and global mindedness. Children, readers should have access to books that act as windows, opportunities to move beyond personal experiences, to observe the experiences, cultures, traditions of others. Now, whether translations really limit diversity more than stimulate it, there are problems with translation as well. So it is sometimes, you know, a translator has to make choices, has to make important choices related to foreignization or domesticization for the text as a whole or for specific textual elements also. So sometimes, you know, associations referring to food and drink, for example, now these things matter enormously to children. They constitute a very important part of the affective content of any children's book. So for example, in the Persian translation of Alice in Wonderland, uh, there was, a translation of Alice in Wonderland in 1928, where wine was translated to soda, because that would be acceptable by Persian readers, child readers. Again, in the 1965 version, this was completely omitted. So uh, the next slide, please. Childhood is a contextually, now we're going to talk about the problem of other minds. There's, you know, a whole range of debate about consciousness. Nobody really knows anything about consciousness, how it happened, the conscious algorithm. We don't really know, we can't decipher it. So the problem in defining childhood and ch children's literature, childhood is a contextually qualified register. It's historically contingent and therefore multiple. Childhood and children's literature are blurred, inseparable, and temporally and spatially variegated depending upon their ties with the local. Now, normally, if you look at children's literature also, what is it that you define as children's literature? How do you define? To define something is to limit it. So while you know it more and more, if you tend to define it, you know, you want, you end up limiting it. So, a text by children, about children, any text, would it be children's literature? In that sense, any text could be potentially, you know, it could count as children's literature. So any text by Dickens or even pornography, but that's too broad a range. We don't usually in, uh, involve pornography in children's literature. Moreover, children's literature caters to mixed audiences. 
like Huckleberry Finn, Peter Pan, The Little Prince, Jatak Tales, all our mythological books, our local folk tales. They all, uh, if somebody's read this brilliant short story by Vidya Sagar Notial called Bhens Ka Katia, you know, these are, uh, and several other stories, the list is countless. And uh, so um, stories, you know, and the way that they are told and read, not one homogeneous essentialized category. There's so many childhoods, we are in it together in this world. We are in this post-human, transhuman world together, but we are not the same. Childhood often marked by biological immaturity in the sense that even if you look at the Piaget scale, which looks at childhood and uh, theorizes childhood and growth, childhood is, is seen as something that, you know, involves the growth uh, in terms of a child who's just a, a miniature adult, a diminutive adult, in the process of becoming an adult, not able-bodied enough, not individual enough, not uh, mature enough. So from immaturity to maturity. So those are legal demarcations of caliber and choices made available to this whole template called childhood. So childhood is often marked by the age-bound adult imposed. And it has all the, you know, uh, usually this if you look at even children's literature, as the speaker before me was mentioning, this field is heteronormative and lacks primary multidimensional disabled characters, for example. Not only do you know, categories of, um, of race, gender, class percolate into, uh, from, from society and from the discourses of society into children's literature, you see them reflected in the way that, that children's literature at large is read. Children's literature tends, seeks to evolve progressively towards a better understanding of children and childhood by incorporating different ways of including children inside. Okay, so children, though they're engaged, though children's literature engages them immersively and intimately, the book again is something that is designed. It is designed nevertheless. So the responsibility rests with the designer for the child reader's own good, what we perceive as good. And so somebody else was talking about nonsense. And you know, as a derogatory term, no, what, why do you, uh, not you, but why do we have to, uh, you know, own up to sense as, uh, again, an, uh, you know, a very potent term in our lexicon? Why does sense have to be something that uh, is a marked term in our, uh, in our idiom? We bracket sense and we leave out nonsense. Why? Okay, so the next slide, please. Why children's literature? Children's literature is important because it provides opportunities to respond to literature. It facilitates the child's appreciation about their own cultural heritage as well as those of others, helps develop emotional intelligence and creativity, nurtures growth and development of the child's personality and social skills, and transmits important literature and themes from one generation to another. Can we have the next slide, please? An overview of Indian children's literature in English. Now, if we look at uh, you know, the way that Indian uh, folklore is, is read, India, in fact, has the greatest living oral narrative tradition in the world. It fulfills the needs of every young and growing child in that he or she gets his complete story quota orally. If you look at Indian um, folklore, it's rich and very, very imaginative, and it remains the most interesting source for children's literature. You look at the Panchatantra, which was written in 200 BC, the Jatakas, the Puranas, the Ramayana, the Mahabharat. Indian mythology is something that's not specifically for children, but it's most popular with children. The Panchatantra tales in the oral narrative are believed to have found their way into tradi the traditional folklore of almost every country in the world. And if you look at the Panchatantra along with the folk tales, for example, the folk tales of Uttarakhand, you know, there's several bird and beast fables, which are local fables in, in Uttarakhand, animal fables. These uh, sources are these from these sources are so predominant and they remain the society's traditional vehicle of 
of social and moral instruction. Now, these are tales of animal wisdom. These are tales of cunning, foolishness. You will never uh, have to scurry too far to find stories about the clever quail, uh, an intelligent crow, a smart jackal, or a stupid tiger. These fables, these fables in their many retellings, many adaptations, they really make the rich tapestry of the country's multilingual literature. Again, uh, the Children's Book Trust in the 1950s, the National Book Trust in the 1970s, the IBH and Thompson Press publishing work by Shankar Pillay, and the range of other writers uh, that you see wrote with a lot of integrity. Their work continue to be read by children today. Can we have the next slide, please? Works by Sukumar Dutt, uh, Ray, uh, Rasatirjit Ray, Rabindranath Tagore, R.K. Narayan, Ashoka Mitran, Bashir, Salman Rushdie, Vikram Seth, uh, Rush, uh, Ruskin Bond. Now, all these books also, uh, they're the first and the third category, the Jatak tales and the, uh, the Panchatantra and the, these, these contemporary writers. These writers are, you know, not writing specifically for children. They're writing works that uh, cannot be that you know that are laid claim to by adults as well as children. Uh, another feature of children's literature is that half of the children's of children's books published in India appear in English, while only seven percent of children actually speak English. So those that again includes that involves a kind of textual politics where you know the responsibility rests with uh, the gatekeepers, so to speak, of uh, books that that you know adults make available to little children so uh, for example you know with publishers literary reviewers uh, all these uh, these uh, parents teachers now i'm going to refer to a quote by ak ramanujan where he uh, talks about he says Ev even in the most urbane and westernized indian household there exists behind the prim exterior another india it lives in tales of passion and trouble told to children by their grandmothers and servants as the dust descends. Related in languages from Tamil to Kannad, these stories turn the diurnal hierarchy on its head. Their heroes are beggars who are really gods and princesses forced to labor as servants. Consciousness gives way, the unconscious surfaces, the disciplines of the father, tongues, the classical Sanskrit, so official and universal English are imposed later in childhood, but the Indian psyche is first swathed in the mother, la mother language. A cousin away, a train ride away, and mostly no further away than the kitchen. And I'd like to draw your attention to a few books, if you can see me. You know, these are contemporary writers writing books for children. Grandma Suitcases of Stories by Suti Agarwal. Sudha Murthy's Grandparents' Bag of Stories. Sudhamurti is the magic drum and other favorite stories. Sudhamurti is the grandma's, the grandma's bag of stories. The greatest children's stories. As against these, you know, books by Enid Blyton are often called um, wintertime stories, um, uh, summertime stories. Again, there is this, the magic of the lost temple. Uh, the Gita for children. So um, the next slide, please. Now I'm going to discuss with you a, a very interesting um, experience about reading this book, The One and Only Ivan. This book, so it so happened that my, my daughter uh, my daughter, yeah, somebody says there's a constitution for children. So my daughter comes to me and asks me, uh, Mama, how, how do monkeys help us? So monkeys had been plundering her favorite, uh, ma ma her favorite mango tree and uh, she was very upset about it. So she asked me, how do monkeys help us? I asked her a counter question. I asked her, how do we help monkeys? And she uh, answered by saying, well, monkeys help us by eating some of, the, some of our mangoes um, so that we don't get an upset stomach. Now, between these two questions that, uh, that, that you know, the moment of exchange between my daughter and me, um, 
there was in fact a, a, a sort of a question a, a sort of uh, uh, you know exchange set up in my in my mind now this is a there's a separate kind of debate and argument that lit up in my mind about countless repetitive cyclic formulae questions that i learned as a child and then i passed them on to my daughter forged in our education system our education system is a remnant of colonial modernity it's a mass education industrially produced education system where it's not exactly clearly clear sighted but basically it rests on our ability to force a uh, certain uh, to forge forth certain nationalistic subjects you know subjects who are nationally useful people who uh, go on to make national subjects and and become uh, you know uh, this kind of education serves national and nationalist interests good na produces good national subjects planetary conscious people good uh, global citizens so the the story here this is about a certain kind of education you know after all education as we know it is only a story it's only a story that we tell ourselves as a culture this story this kind of education is meant to prime us for the perfect static able bodied human non human individual non dual individual in that sense so this this itself is a kind of morality story you know education as we know it today and the kind of stories similar to the kind of morality stories that we tell children but the point is that we invented these stories to serve us we don't have to find ourselves sacrificing our lives in there in the service so these the story about education being a certain formula where you churn out good marks and give importance to a certain class 1 followed by class 2 followed by class 3 regardless of what the child likes or wants to learn or feels or uh, or, or or experiences we all know that uh, yuval noah harari talks about uh, you know if he talks about knowledge he doesn't say knowledge is is something that you know is just an influx of information the how how plan, planetary conscious uh, child can i can i can i um, can i make as a parent how um, how how uh, you know nationally conscious child can i can i make how useful how utilitarian can, can you know can can my parentage really be knowledge is experience times sensitivity so our experiences as we uh, as we uh, experience while we do things while we make mistakes uh, and learn from them and our sensitivity okay so when the moments of crisis strike uh, what really grief is what really happiness is what it would mean to be put in a box what it would mean to be free is something that we need to explore experience and be sensitized by doing by reading by experiencing first hand now there are enough studies to show that you know sometimes we tend to we often tend to humanize animals in our in our stories we often tend to humanize animals in the sense that give them human attributes and there are enough studies to show that by humanizing animals we usually underestimate animal cognition we usually ignore the unique abilities of other creatures this is not only bad science but it prevents us from understanding and valuing other animals on their terms so while this exchange was happening between my daughter and me about how do monkeys help us followed by how do we help monkeys i uh, you know went on a litany of discourses and i thought i am doing a very good job as a parent i explained to her about our own evolutionary history about um you know ecology and forests and seed dispersal and how animals you know they are they young ones they move around and then they Uh, throw the seeds and that's how forests reap you know they replenish themselves and so i gave her this huge knowledge overdose expecting um, you know patting myself on the back at the same time and expecting my child to now uh, assimilate everything and uh, be able to really um, learn from this exchange that i've had with her educate her now uh, if uh, can we have the next slide please so Uh, you know uh, how does a, a child really really question the child really really seeks to ask questions so that day um, i gave her a book i gave her this book ivan the one and only ivan this book is based on fiction but this uh, inspiration for this imagined tale is in a true story it's about ivan a real gorilla who now lives in zoo atlanta 
and on the way to the happy ending he spends almost three decades in a in a in a sort of a in a mall where he's put on display and like a marketing um figure and uh, he doesn't see anybody of his own kind there's no other um, gorilla with him now he's a silver back and he's meant to be a protector and so the author writes a very beautiful weaves an entire tale around him and uh, gives him a voice gives him agency and it's his story he's narrating the entire story and he also plays out his destiny of being the mighty silver back even though he is uh, really uh, as i said living in a mall he's 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 not he's living in captivity and he ultimately plays out the destiny of having someone to protect and going ahead and protecting that person, that that uh, creature now um uh, you know as i as i as i look for words uh, and you know uh, it, this is it's a book about ivan who um is living in captivity in this mall and with him are uh, he forges some very interesting relationships uh with uh, an old elephant she her name is stella and she is uh, she was in a circus and she had suffered a, a wound at the circus because she was made to stand on her hind legs and wally about in the circus and uh, the wound actually left of it was a festering wound and she was thoroughly medically ignored in the end while she is in the mall itself she ultimately dies because she is never a uh, vet is never brought to her she is in a lot of pain and she engages with ivan there's also a baby elephant who's brought later on and this baby elephant is called ruby and ruby is a protege for stella there's also bob who's a very uh, interesting he's a dog and he also has a he's a very opinionated dog and he's also got he also is friends with uh, with uh, ivan there are also some human friends he has one of them is uh, the caretaker's daughter julia and uh, julia is the one he chooses ivan chooses to fulfill a promise that he's made to stella on her deathbed the promise he has made to stella is that he will somehow rescue ruby the little elephant the baby elephant who stella really loves and is concerned about terribly concerned about even at her deathbed and he says that he will rescue her and somehow send her to a zoo so uh, sometime during the narrative somebody asks what is a zoo and she says he says well uh, stella says a zoo is a place where humans make amends where they uh, keep animals in a protected environment and make sure that they are with others of their own kind so um, so he ultimately strategizes a very big plan where he makes these little drawings and his drawings i mind you the way that its narrative is written is it's not an it's not a sentimental uh, it's extremely unsentimental in the way that the narrative is handled so there is a there is a there are drawings that this uh, that this elephant uh, and that this uh, gorilla makes and it is in the form of a jigsaw puzzle and he's supposed to uh, somehow communicate to julia which he succeeds in saying that you know this is a jigsaw puzzle and that put it together both of them share this love for art both julia and 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 ivan and in fact julia is the one who gives him the paints and so they she may he makes these little drawings which have to be put together like in a jigsaw puzzle and then he also writes h o m e home something he's learned from julia because she does her homework while she sits with the uh, these animals in the mall so somehow he gets he gets to communicate non verbally to julia through his art he and his fellow artist julia ivan and his fellow artist julia somehow uh, he manages to convey to her that he would like to see ruby in a home and like in a jigsaw puzzle with several pieces and he puts she puts them together and she uh she she decodes this message that he wants to give her and that is the crux you know the rescue that he has planned is not for himself but the rescue that he's planned is for ruby the little elephant the baby elephant and while i read this story and he succeeds he succeeds mind you so when he succeeds ruby uh, you know is in a zoo and in the same zoo is ivan 
eventually they're happy. But even while he was in a mall, he was, uh, you know, he had forged these very interesting relationships with other animals, very meaningful and, uh, uh, you know, interrelationships, meaningful interrelationships with these other animals, Stella and Ruby and Bob the dog and uh, Thelma the macaw and uh, Julia, the, the daughter of uh, the caretaker. And I'm going to read out uh, a small excerpt from this novel to you. It says, once I asked Stella if she'd ever had any babies, she shook her head, I never had the opportunity. You would have made a great mother, I told her. Thank you, Ivan, Stella said, clearly pleased. I like to think so. Having young ones is a big responsibility. You have to teach them how to take mud baths, of course, and emphasize the importance of fiber in their diet. She looked away contemplating. Elephants are excellent at contemplating. I think the hardest part of being a parent, Stella added after a while, would be keeping your babies safe from harm, protecting them. The way silverbacks do in the jungle, I said. Exactly, Stella nodded. You would have been good at protecting too, I said confidently. I'm not so sure, Stella said, gazing at the iron bars surrounding her. I'm not so sure at all. When I read this page, it immediately transported me to my days as a physiotherapist. When I used to treat this lady in a ward, uh, she was this uh, really morbidly obese lady uh, who had had a stroke. And she would regale me every day with stories about cooking and about recipes and how her sons, her two sons loved her cooking and that they would go great lengths to be able to convince her, cajole her, coddle her into cooking for them. And only, uh, you know, only she, they would only eat food cooked by them, she would tell me, by her, she would tell me. And, uh, you know, uh, even though after that, she would land up with a lot of knee pain. So he would end up, they would end up uh, massaging her legs for a really, really long time and uh, somehow just uh, have their mother uh, cook for her. Uh, so this was a story of affection. After a month, I realized that she had been actually discharged, in fact, the story of abandonment. And when I read this page, immediately, the first thing that struck me, the trope of abandonment. Now, when my daughter, I asked her about, uh, you know, can, did you read the story? She um, summarized it for me. There were a few factual inconsistencies. But while she was weaving her grandmotherly web of oral narrative around me, tables turned, what drew me was her unquestioning, credulous empathy. So while my reading of the work was something that really left me with uh, feeling an innate sense of abandonment, I immediately could have identify with Ivan as a subject of scientific study, as a, as a relic of the human laboratory and the human signature on animals. The, the kind of otherness and oppressive categorization that we, uh, that we make on other beings. And the first thing that she had to say about Ivan was an exclamatory uh, mark that she said. She said, do you know, Mama, he could draw and paint. He's the only gorilla in the world who can draw and paint. This is not really in the story. He's not the only gorilla who can draw and paint. What is important is that without anything of the fantasy, without any moment of disbelief, okay, there was purely magic in her eyes. She could just simply marvel at the possibility of art and the artist. So she could forge a kind of cultural connection, something of herself and her friends in this novel and its various characters. This kind of reading, there was nothing, you know, while I felt that uh, okay, I have, um, you know, I asked her, do you think Ivan was uh, was very sad? He said, no, Mama, he was very happy. He had so many friends. He had Stella, he had Ruby. He was very happy. In fact, he never missed the jungle, uh, which is not exactly true. But this is how she read it. Now, so I, for once, was really, uh, uh, you know, I, I had just before that given her this great, global gyan about ecology and evolutionary history and thought that, you know, my, my pathway to becoming the ideal component of this education system where I'm teaching my daughter the right kind of critical thinking and, 
and and uh, you know scientific inquiry and um, post scientific inquiry and you know the way to live with others ethical being and uh, ethical living and um, emotional intelligence i thought you know these are these really sounded like hard bottom he uh, top heavy words they really just uh, uh, you know sort of made me realize that this kind of transaction with the child's reading is a work in progress it's collaborative uh, this reading that the child does is never simplistic nor predictable nor predetermined the engagement of the story invites curiosity and questions about different possibilities of learning and so as we want to comprehend the social construction and the varied conceptualizations of childhood educational and pedagogical discourses need to be foregrounded we need to look at several entry points in the shaping and remodeling of the way we um we said these oppressive categories at work like race class gender we need to see different forms of alternative forms of reading we need to have you know appreciate new appeals that children have to new registers you know the way that new appeals and registers uh, 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 immediately um sort of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, come in they, they sort of make make their inroads into the child's mind this relationship this inter relationship between the book and the child's reading of it is never simple never straightforward never unambiguous if there are possibilities to misread and that needs to be encouraged because uh, the more active and the more dynamic engagement the more open and the engagement uh, is 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 better because i've run activity excluding their own voice and agency in the process that would ultimately intend to impose a static ideal of childhood childhood purity uh, where you know childhood would become just simply and simple and formulaic it would expect the child mind to be automatically more active uh, than ruminant so slowing down the reading so uh, in envisioning possibilities of alternative forms of of reading of forming atypical relationships with other creatures with other animals with other people so it says somewhere in the story uh, elephants are also after all people you know um, so so this is what i wanted to uh, talk about can we have the next slide please children do not move think or speak in a straight line but neither does their imagination or creativity the it is this energy and happiness that we use uh, to help guide them into successful pathways the next slide please so it's important to read stories read multiply how we read is very important and how we allow misreadings to happen is also very important uh, what we call misreadings again uh, can be just alternative forms of reading so with that uh, i'd like to uh, close my presentation conclude my presentation so thank you richard for that uh, engaging session and uh, looking at children literature as a mirror and as a window window of like exploring something new and mirror something which helps to reflect and the issues that you brought forth about looking at uh, the childhood and the children literature from different perspective about different literature that are available in india in english language and that uh, particular data that you shared it is only 7% of children who are uh, comfortable with english but still we have so much of literature in uh, english in the country i'll take up uh, some questions which are that have come in to you so there was a question that uh, was earlier somebody has written uh, just give me a second uh, so in this technology driven world how can we draw children's interest towards book so that was one question so should i read all the questions or you take one by one uh well i think uh, how many are there i i can't see them there are four five of them yeah okay um you could if they overlap you could just read all of them once and then i'll make a note try and make a note okay. of them okay just, so this one was uh, regarding the technology part second there is a question that has come up on the youtube uh, by sudim som he has asked about what is the difference between story reading and storytelling one hmm. and secondly is talked about 
our children sensitive to the gender of their grandparents as far as storytelling is concerned so this is one okay and i am going to first otherwise get too okay. much storytelling and reading that's precisely uh, what i was talking about you know when we tell stories we expect children to assimilate stories in a certain way we uh, as i told you you know i told my daughter a lot about evolutionary history expecting her to be particularly sensitized and assimilate all this global gyan that i gave her whereas she just slowed down and while she really had inconsistencies in the stories that didn't exactly match she's only 7 so there were she and she's a very she loves to read and um, while some of her facts she didn't get quite correct but the fact is that what was really important was she could just in a certain flow in her own flow she could assimilate what she had to and what really took her was the sense of affection that she built she actually intimately intim, intimately and immersively immediately connected with these animals and with other creatures that are so different you know the kind of window that these books can open you to imagine something beyond the self which is uh, you know we always want to impose uh, our view versions of uh, what we imagine other creatures would say feel think and behave like but whereas you know children ha- are extremely they have an innate intelligence and an in- in- innate ability to experience and and sensitize themselves they are extremely sensitive and extremely uh, prone to assimilating uh, experience in so many different ways so her uh, she was literally excited she said do you know mama he is the only gorilla in the world that can draw and paint really and that's how you know that's her take away from the book um so he she's so happy that he's ultimately ivan is so happy and you know stella though she's she's she's, she's gone away at least uh, she died though uh, you know at least ruby is saved and at least uh, everybody is together and happy and you know it's uh, everybody's friends and and they formed a way to forge these atypical relationships and so her way to process these atypical relations is something that you know i would i would not be able to do because the one thing from my adult experience as a physiotherapist and as you know as somebody who's seen the world and knows how harsh the world can be is um you know i have experienced abandonment first hand and so um so 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 many different factors will go on to my making and unmaking of the story whereas she will completely make and unmake the story in so many different ways and so even if those are misreadings according to adults let them just misread give allow them opportunities to be open minded enough to be to accommodate that difference you know so so that is one difference between storytelling what the teller wants to say and what the reader wants to assimilate from it um without really again essentializing childhood as an essential category and say well you know there's something prophetic about children no there is and just let the fun part organically you know uh, make its own interlinkages make its own forays into the imagination that's the point and uh, when we talk we were talking about uh, a uh, technology driven world you know in a technology driven world with the covid i i can tell you i am specifically talking in terms of covid uh the when covid happened everybody was pretty clueless teachers worked very hard at uh, allowing this bilateral this hybrid sort of um new uh, student teacher dynamics to evolve it redistributes agency it redistributes roles where the teacher has to be more mindful of the parents watching the teacher student roles are also redistributed and so the teacher is very mindful of that it's a challenge it's a challenge at multiple levels it's also a challenge for children at multiple levels to not go to school now one unique experience in my house was my my daughter is exceptionally happy in fact at one point when the schools were about to reopen and she loves her friends she's a very she loves her friends she's a very gregarious child but when schools were about to reopen she didn't really she was really upset oh my god schools will reopen again why because then i'll not get the time to read my books because again i'll have to get up early in the morning and then i get so tired then when i come back by afternoon so i think we have to slightly you know be like artists as parents as gatekeepers as they say you know not exactly if you really have to be a gatekeeper and filter information 
what we must do i think no i i we make mistakes but what we must do is channel children into reading in a certain way into getting those books and then telling them something which is not really uh, meant to moralize if you the minute you say this is good for you hmm, it's boring there's nothing that a child uh, hates more than the banal and uh, so technology can be a wonderful thing because if if used in the right way to the right extent at the right time in the right manner but if it is overdone then it can lead to a lot of hyper image uh, attention disorders eye problems so um, i think it's 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 a very useful resource but at the same time books and the very um, you know these are just some of the books that uh, she doesn't ask for chocolates or anything i mean it's not that i'm i'm really far from being the ideal parent but um uh you know it's it's really about uh, children just some children you do if you don't want they don't want to read a certain thing you can't really get them to read it some children may like to read books about certain themes that they really like to read like cricket some child child may really love to read about cr- cricket and not read about anything else so that's that and then um, pushpita ji you were asking another question um uh, the thing is a lot of compliments that are coming along uh, where you kahani kehna aur kahani sunna so how you made a distinction between them and there are a lot of uh, feedback that are coming in about from the responses uh, that you've talked about somebody has talked about technology and modernization also uh, so i think one of the constraint richer would be the time here definitely there are few more questions uh, that are coming in so i think uh, this connect because there have been question about like how do we define that this is a children literature not an adult literature but since uh, 2013 try undefining this so so, so you know defining so, that yeah try undefining for once try undefining everything every essentializing category just undefined am i a good parent i'm not am i a good gatekeeper i'm not so but just try and defining it because when you define something you set limits to it instead just slow down and like children do just immersively this is not again a global formula there there cannot be one formula for one size fits all but i think now the one thing that everybody is uh, feeling acutely is the hunger pang which uh, which i think everybody might want want to wind up for the day and uh, i'm sure that uh, we've all got great food for thought for the day so i i, I think we'll uh, you know um, conclude here for yes. the day i'm sure there are plenty mm-hmm. of very useful good questions yes. that we can address tomorrow because we are also sure. we also have a number of sessions tomorrow so i think uh, we can wind up and uh, i'm i'm so grateful to the wonderful audience extremely engaging audience and to pushpata ji for moderating my session and for being um so patient and so um, uh, uh, alert to all these various questions that have been asked thank you so much okay thank you dr recha thank you everyone and let's connect tomorrow again at 10 yes yes thank you thank you everyone good morning dr preeti um finally it's uh, so nice to have you here ma'am and um I am Dr. Richa Joshi Pandey. I'm the I'm an assistant professor and in charge department of English in Doon University. Yes. I welcome you along with all our participants. I we I welcome you on behalf of all of us at the academic study of children's literature, a workshop by Room to Read India in association with Doon University and with US Aid. Uh, ma'am, it's so nice to have you here with us today, and. Um, we are really eagerly looking forward to a lecture from uh, dr preeti joshi she is associate professor at the university of delhi dr preeti joshi has been a faculty member at the lady irwin college since 1990 and has taught undergraduate and postgraduate students the courses taught have covered the development of individuals across the lifespan dynamics that shape the life course with emphasis on diversity education and inclusion and research methods her re- interests include children's education in the year, in in the early years with a focus on curriculum and pedagogy along with exploration of children's literature and reading 
In the late 1980s and 1990s, she worked on several projects with Eklavya Madhya Pradesh, including on their primary education material. She has also worked with several NGOs in India on aspects related to children's development and the training of teachers and has assessed the digital library of materials used by world Le reader for young children leading to its recuration we welcome you ardently uh, ma'am and uh, we are eagerly looking forward to this lovely talk from you so without further ado uh, over to madam uh, preeti joshi so thank you uh, dr joshi uh, for introducing me uh, and for your very kind and generous words uh, good morning everyone uh, i'm happy to talk about uh, children's uh, literature and early literacy it is an area i have always been drawn to and my interest stems uh, from my childhood uh, and my subject child development uh i thank room to read for inviting me for this special talk series and uh, dune university for providing this forum uh, i would like to share my screen with you so please give me a moment so i hope the screen is visible um, yes uh, yes uh, it's absolutely visible okay so thank you uh, it's good to know otherwise you know you are staring into a screen <laughs> without having an idea about what's going on on the other side so um, i my topic is children's literature and early literacy and what i would like to say at the beginning is that you can see a child who is so lost in the world uh, it is said that the universe is made of uh, uh, stories not of atoms and that is what it felt like when i was a child and it still does mm, i remember uh, reading each book many times and would be lost in the world they created the courses i have taught at lady irwin college have allowed me to uh, explore uh, children's literature further with my students it is always very exciting uh, as students discover these books and analyze them from the many perspectives of our discipline uh, and to the extent uh, they would be implementing what they learn so the theoretical frameworks and all the approaches uh, that are part of our discipline now these opportunities when they get to see books uh, because uh, some of these books have been developed uh, in the say past 30 years in india it really captures the wonder of children's literature and has a transformative effect on students they see the value of literature and apply it in the diverse context uh, they work in and they always remember and talk about about it when we meet so i would like to uh, emphasize something important that the process of reading involves forming a bond between the book the child and you that is the adult especially since we are discussing the earliest period of a child's life so from the perspective of child development uh, what are these uh, some of the landmarks uh, and approaches and processes in the reading learning journey of a child so that learning uh, journey also parallels the learning journey of students because uh, they also get aware that the role of children's literature uh, its significance and how can books be introduced to children and what does it really mean to read to a child some might wonder what have books got to do with very young children who cannot read 
so i'm referring to the period of early childhood here uh, which extends from birth to 8 years which is our uh, main area of work with most of our students and uh, i am referring to this period because we are talking about early literacy so here we are not expecting uh, children to read nor merely telling them a story word for word because i'm talking about the period from birth to 8 years so uh, what our intent is to draw the child's attention uh, connecting her to the cognitive and emotional world of books and eventually reading and writing so this period actually sets uh the stage for all future growth and uh engaging with books uh those who are from the background of uh, education or are practitioners they are well aware of it but i'm also addressing uh the uh, students of doon university who may not be oriented to it in the way a uh, student of child development might be so there has been a uh, centuries a century of research uh, which has shown that early childhood years are an extremely significant uh, period for the development of a person and it sets the stage for all future growth uh, children are learning at birth and they develop and learn at a very fast pace in the early years and in all domains of their uh, uh, you know uh, cognitive emotional social language and as a person to so what is really needed here are interactions because we know that experiences make a person with adults environment and objects uh the emphasis here because we are talking about the bond is on uh, diverse bidirectional or two way interactions uh not one way because that would be really dam damaging for the child so it is not about telling what is in the book it is about drawing the child's attention to the book i will share a very interesting concept from child development which i mention here which is serve and return uh this really works like a, a game of tennis between the child and the caregiver the child serves by reaching out for an interaction uh, with eye contact or calling you out with facial expressions or gestures or touch and the responsive uh, caregiver will return the serve by speaking back uh, playing or sharing a toy or a laugh with affection and interest so these serve and re return interactions are also uh, building neural connections in different areas of the brain so when the child's attention and the caregiver's attention is mutually focused on a book uh, various components of the reading brain circuit begin to develop early in life now children play a very interesting role here they are contributing to this serve and return or bidirectional interactions because they yearn for physical contact uh, and they want attention uh, they want interactions play and communication so you have a willing partner in this whole process and this cycle goes on uh, and is the foundation of development uh, we can give it another name here uh, dialogic reading in which the parent and child form a kind of interactive communication uh, loop it is somewhat like serve and return and that builds both language and engagement with books so the early period in that sense is very important to capture the child's interest now you can see a picture here and i have already talked about that mutual focus on an object and i'm sure it is evoking some emotions in you uh so the mother might say uh, look at this 
uh, what a lovely picture. And the child will say, G. And the mother will say, oh, you like it? And she goes on. So these interactions might be short in the very early stage like this. The child is about five or six months. But it must include turn taking, listening to the child and waiting for a response. In, and in this manner, the caregiver will create or we can say co-create meaning and uh, creates a whole universe with the child. Now, since the child loves contact as well as the presence of caregiver, this conversation over the book becomes so pleasurable, which you would always remember as you are growing up and once you are a much older person. So here the important thing also in the title of the slide is nurturing a curious mind. You can see by looking at the child that he is so alive and interacting with whatever is going on. So children's literature will create this, you know, windows to the world and to the world of ideas. And here we can have a quick look at the range that children's literature covers. And in the slides that follow, I will show you some examples. Uh, books that have interesting content, rich vocabulary, uh, detailed illustrations, and are imaginative, are powerful in creating the world that the child wants to discover with the help of the adult. Uh, this is aided by many characteristics of the work itself. You are familiar with it, pictures, plots, mood, uh, including the repetition, rhythm, rhyme that children just love. And this creates an understanding of how language works in the early years. Now, this understanding is tacit. It is not being directly taught to the child. Now, we, can, we know very well that books are available by age levels, uh, by genre and styles. And children need to access adequate number of books. Uh, what is implicit in this is that the books must have the kind of qualities that I talked about. And here, the adult plays a very important role in acquiring the books. Uh, creating a network where the books might be available and uh, uh, continuing to be part of a community from where you can source books, uh, borrow books, or uh, if some resources are avail available, you can buy those books. So in the interface of the vertical and the horizontal, that is uh, where the books are available for every age group, uh, that is between birth to eight years. And horizontal is the kind of variety which we can, uh, you know, obtain for the child to experience. Uh, in this intersection, the mediating adult comes into action. So what does she or he do? Selects themes and topics of interest to the child. And the integration of aspects of books uh, to the daily life and activities of the child. So it is not an isolated reading uh, episode. It is part of the child's life and spills into her daily activities. It could be uh, singing a rhyme from a book while you are going to the market or making a drawing or focusing the child's attention in a playful way in what she saw in the book and the way it exists in reality. So this integration becomes a very important thing. And a word of caution here, which all of us know about, children's literature is not created to directly teach children decoding or mechanical skills of reading and writing, uh, or teaching with the use of drills, or testing or evaluating a child. So literature is much bigger than any of this. Uh, now, uh, whatever I have uh, said earlier about this uh, mutual focus, 
uh, I would just like to emphasize it again here since I am talking about uh, the stages in the period of early childhood and roughly uh, the first one is say from six months to two years. Books can be introduced early uh, if you are comfortable uh, or a little later, but very important to surely uh, introduce books in this period. So uh, this joint or shared attention uh, is a, a concept that has been very well researched in uh, learning and language development of infants. Uh, very simple, uh, it means that infants pay very close attention to the objects that adult point to or look at. So if you point to something with your finger or indicate it to the child in some way, the infant is primed to uh, share uh, your gaze or your pointing finger. Uh, and this is what we can capture in the early years to create that interest in books, which I have already mentioned. And uh, while all of this is happening, the caregiver encourages children to look, uh, to express and to communicate, focus being the illustrations uh, or the content or story. Uh, so this is the beginning of oracy when you are encouraging verbal, verbal expression at an early age. And uh, at the age of six to seven months, the child acquires the iconic skill of learning the difference between the real object and the image it represents. Uh, so she is basically entering the world of symbolic representation, uh, so significant in literacy. Now have a look at uh, some of the uh, wordless books, uh, picture books or board books, uh, which uh, we use in the early years. And as the name suggests, uh, there are either no words uh, in the books or very few are there. And you will notice that say in the first picture on the top, uh, Subtly, the uh, illustration is communicating proportion and perspective. So the caregiver or the educator can highlight that, talk about it, see what interests the child, and uh, it creates a very interesting conversation. So it is upon the mediating adult to create this caring, language-rich, child-centered context. Uh, just below this, you see two pictures. Uh, this illustrates uh, uh, the theory of mind. It is a concept that, uh, uh, which is both cognitive and social. And uh, it refers to actually the mind reading abilities of the children that begin to develop uh, uh, in context of other people, in interactions, and also books. Here we can see that the uh, very mischievous gorilla is taking away the keys uh, from the zookeeper's pocket. And in the next uh, scene, we see that all the animals are out and the zookeeper is saying good night to uh, Armadillo and uh, an animal there. So everyone gets to know that the zookeeper does not know while everyone knows. If only he would look back, he will find that all the animals have escaped from their cages uh, with the help of the gorilla. So the story has many interesting elements. Uh, this is not a book which was published in India, but I think it does communicate some of the very interesting elements in a children's storybook could be humor, mischief, and being able to guess what might be going on in the minds of each of the uh, animals or characters shown here. Books can take you to many places. And as the child gets older, uh, since I'm talking about uh, development within the 
stage of early childhood uh, books with simple text and storylines can be uh, introduced now the top book is a non fiction uh, work and it is uh, talking about tales and if you see tales on the left uh, a very interesting guessing game can be played with the child and this guessing game can be connected to what they have seen what they have not seen what they could see in another book and guess which is the cow's tail and what are the tails used for below you will see a very moving story about an elephant uh, set in a specific context and you can see children looking at the elephant with curiosity and some fear and you also get to know uh, about uh, the geographical context forests and what elephants do etc so these books would be uh, uh, used with older children though they are extremely cap captivating for uh, those uh, in the age group of 6 uh, uh, months to 2 years also now how does the role of adult change in this stage uh, the spotlight is on the page all that can be seen on the page and the adult will encourage a playful uh, interaction with the child uh, this communication is always two ways playful because this reciprocity is very important and so the the theme here is that how does the adult co construct co constructs and draws out the stories or concepts in the child's minds so she is not telling a story there would be parts she might read out but a lot is uh, uh, you know depends on how she involves so you find out what are the actions which are taking place who is doing what in the story what are the uses of objects which you can see on the page you might compare things uh, guess uh, you know uh, what is missing or you hide part of the picture and uh, find out from the child uh, what the picture is about of games such as i spy and uh, can you see this you know particularly in picture books that have a lot of details so through this process uh, the child gets oriented to the operational aspects of reading uh though i did say that there are books for a particular age group which might be more developmentally appropriate for the child however there are always blurred boundaries and you can actually use and adapt the same book to different age groups as well now this is a number book and it can surely tell a story uh, it does say on top it's not like six things but it talks about six things to do on a nice sunny day uh, many possibilities here uh, you could extend it to ask uh, about uh, you know how would it be if it is cold what would the people do and what would happen if it is raining will there be same activities and the children get very captivated and this can extend to many other areas other activities that they do so book stays a focus of a pleasurable experience for the child uh, which uh, is created by an adult and over the time period the child herself would enjoy uh, looking at the books and surely keep inviting the adult to join and uh, children love repetitions and these repetitions actually strengthen the representations that create uh, get created in the child's mind now in the age group uh, of 5 to 7 years uh, we have been moving from birth to 6 to 2 to 5 and 5 to 7 uh, coinciding with the period of early literacy Uh, books with 
short and simple storylines told with text illustrations and photographs i will show you the examples uh, now and then come back to this page so these are the kind of books which you might want to use uh, you will see that we have moved away from the immediate environment of the child uh, so basically the journey from known to unknown so a narrative set in the aftermath of tsunami so this book is about uh, how he is uh, their friend even if things really go wrong and in the worst form the book below is about a polar bear uh, called malu bhalu and these rhymes uh, they develop the active uh you know listening as well as phonemic aware uh, awareness uh, of the child here i want to go back to this slide and uh so literally as we see that the books expand uh and extend what the child's uh knowledge will encompass and so does the uh, way in which a caregiver will relate to children so ask children to imagine what characters in the story might be thinking or feeling so you are asking the child to imagine and express herself or what else could have happened uh can there be a different ending so attempt to create a different ending and children might also predict what will happen in the story when you are in the middle of the story and ask children to imagine uh what could happen if there were different characters so in many ways uh, you begin to uh, uh include uh, abstractions and uh, higher order thinking uh in this context the adult must must continue to focus on uh encouraging the child to communicate and much depends on the attentiveness of the caregiver and her availability and this is an important part of that reciprocity which we think is very significant and also waiting for the child to respond uh, so the child in that sense um, needs to have this privilege of somebody connecting uh, with her when she wants it and all this will be accomplished without an evaluation or a test so uh we create more inclusive settings uh and widen the range of experiences for children so here you can see a uh, bilingual box uh these will provide experiences to children say who have uh, never been near a river or do not know the mainstream language which might be used in school so there is another language which is there on the book itself the uh, book on the top actually uh, was developed for children uh of the tribes who might not have any books available in their own language and uh so the book is in uh, munda uh, one of the tribal languages in orissa and odia is the other language which is being used so trying to bring in a language which is a little bit closer to the home language of the child and in this way we introduce multiple worlds and diverse childhoods also uh, variations in the illustrations uh, awaken the aesthetic experience in the child and uh, the ability to note details and to be able to comment on that oh this picture has photographs it looks real while this one does not so there are many possibilities of uh, generating a conversation with the child uh difficult conversations uh begin with uh recognition uh respect and empathy 
So if, if people say all sorts of things, I limp, I lisp, all this and more. Sometimes I feel so sad and sore. Folks make fun. It is nothing new. If you were me, what would you do? So uh, creates an opening for discussing, reflecting, and uh, reading the mind of the other. What is going on in the child's mind? So in that sense, uh, uh, we are now seeing that many uh, books are, many kinds of books are available. I mean, I have been mainly showing books uh, which have been published uh, in our country, except I think two so far. And you can see that there is a rich range uh, uh, in the horizontal uh, space where we are talking about a variety uh, in that we can introduce to children. Now, illustrations captivate and inform and the child imagines and wonders uh, many details in the picture and could be a tree which the child has not ever seen. And uh, many explorations are possible right here on the page and beyond it uh, in an encyclopedia or in a biology uh, textbook or uh, an, um, you know, botanist who visits children. So there are many, many possibilities. And I think in the interface between education and child development, uh, we can create a very uh, rich experience uh, for children to go deep into understanding uh, nature as well as many other issues related to conservation and uh, connection uh, with the world of plants and to the uh, inner world of all beings. So here, uh, what is going on in the mind of the elephant? What could be the story? Uh, so there are many experiences which are on the page and beyond it too. Much to be discussed. Uh, you can see details of other creatures around and it creates a very rich tapestry. You know, the world of illustrations, it is, uh, you know, a second set of story that unrolls uh, at the same time and much to be talked about and reflected upon. And finally, uh, I talk about, you know, really beyond literacy. So nurturing, uh, thinking, imagination, and the empowering sense of self and agency in a young child. So with the frame of reference that I have been talking about, when a child is encouraged to take the lead, uh, she is beginning to think for herself, uh, give her views, uh, develop a voice. Uh, she discovers that uh, she has the freedom to ask questions uh, without fear. Uh, we could say, you know, the democracy of intellect. And uh, she can make things happen uh, when she imagines a story or pretends to be a character. She's a creator, uh, has the ability to change the story. She has been, uh, you know, interacting with books in this way where the text is not a given, uh, it can shift and change. And hence, uh, you know, uh, it leads to imaginary play or drawings based on recently heard stories. And this really creates, a, you can say, an unrestrained and a boundless experience uh, for, chil for children at this age. Uh, here we have been talking uh, more about when we talk about literacy, uh, the you know the unrestrained concepts uh, related to literacy, where the cognitive and emotional world is explored more through oral language comprehension and thinking skills. Uh, so this is what I wish for every child in this situation. So thank you very much uh, for this opportunity to share my perspective on um, children's literature and early literacy. Thank you, 
this was indeed a wonderful presentation and we were actually captivated uh you spoke about dialogic reading you spoke about co-creating meaning you uh, actually brought us brought brought the child out in us and uh when you spoke about uh, all the you know lovely illustrations from fictional and non-fictional books and you spoke about and you showed us slides with books with guessing games and picture and language games and you literally burgeoned into uh, the wonderful world of illustrations and uh, you know almost like saved us from this bushel of uh, of of abstract thinking into uh, into and brought us out into the light of illustrations and what they can do and how they uh, inspire and, uh, and 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 continue so um so i i'd like to take up any questions in case the participants would like to ask questions uh, to uh, dr preeti joshi ma'am um my, i've lost the chat so in case there are any questions please, please feel free to post them in the chat box well uh, uh, while you while you uh, come up with questions I, i think i'm going to take this little gap and i'm going to take this opportunity to interact with the uh, ma'am um i have worked a lot in the area of i i also have been a physiotherapist so i've worked a lot in the area of uh, pediatric neurology and i've worked a lot um in the area of sensory integration and um uh, have you uh, Uh, ever been associated with sensory integration um, ma'am uh, ever uh, so basically um what we do when we do sensory integration is um you know we we talk of different uh, different areas of sensory input and how they are integrated and this uh, seems so beautiful and in the way that you showed us these lovely picture books um and how they also give us a, a very um, a very pervasive and holistic kind of a cognitive development i'm also a little curious to to think how do you think books could uh, spatially uh, you know these picture books could spatially decolonize the kind of um you know uh, categories oppressive categories that are are so built in like for example uh i have a little daughter and uh, you know she 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 I, i've made it very very clear that well you know boys can wear anything they like girls can can wear anything they like but these are sometimes a little difficult you know difficult questions because the usual books that are available are ones that will uh, dress boys up a certain way and girls up a certain way and uh, will constantly reinforce those categories so for example dolls and uh, you know uh, girls playing with dolls and football mm. so it's not just the books it's around us probably you know so we have these singular uh, ways of looking at people or stereotypes as we call it so uh you know again uh, when i talked about books and since the focus is on literature uh you know curation is a very important uh, uh, activity for an adult who is interested in introducing uh, literature to children since i have been interested in this field like i might have about about 5000 children's books in my own house because i every time i go to a book fair i buy these books and uh, there is a network 
you know so you know that okay that person would know or if i can visit the uh, you know being in delhi uh, the national book trust library for children's literature so it opens up a big world for you and also being able to you know uh, order books online and uh, find them in uh, different bookshops so uh, this a single person cannot do it and that is why i to also yeah. talked about you know networks so be in touch with other people who can share books that they have because books can be exchanged it's a very interesting activity uh, for children to keep track of their books who took away what and they are they are not only very possessive <laughs> but they learn to you know catalog books so i've seen children who will mark out their books keep a record so all of these are the activities which are associated with reading and writing with a purpose uh, you are not reading and writing and you know just because uh, the you have to join the dots or you create a copy letters uh, there is a purpose why you need to keep records so even for uh, this explicit instruction in literacy uh, you will need to find something which children would love to do so in that sense the adult curates and uh, you know passes the excitement to children about how books are so interesting and significant and hence i have talked about the uh, you know thinking skills being able to question that why i cannot wear this or why does a boy wear something like this and why slotting happens for people so the the language and voice become very important yes uh so with that uh, apart from the wonderful uh compliments that uh, that come your way in the chat box uh i'd like to also read out uh, a few questions uh ch children's literature uh, helps children to recreate their natural uh, imaginative uh skill this is a question on youtube that has been put by devjani how would you respond to this statement children's literature helps children to recreate their natural Im imaginative skills uh, you know the entire pre presentation uh, i think ma'am has uh, given a beautiful presentation on precise i'm just going to uh, try and read out a few questions and then uh, you could uh, respond to them together ma'am yeah um yeah. Fatima writes in an environment where books are not so mu not much understood and encouraged how can we build a safe space for books would you like to respond to that ma'am yeah i mean there are no uh, you know some sort of black and white answers to it even if it is not respected it is something which is very significant and important and uh, we are not really claiming that it is easy uh to uh, introduce books which are non text books because first of all uh, adults must ardently believe in the significance of books and its value uh, not as a waste of time or money or what is its use so you know if you believe in it then uh, you would try and make it uh, possible and uh, you know create an awareness about it as room to read is doing and there are so many organizations uh, involved in this work so we have to persist another question hmm uh, yes yeah, uh, please, please. Uh, okay um and anjali agarwal asks whose point of view should a good children's book present um shivani asks in order uh, so literature is important for the child in order that she understands the world better in order to understand literature better is certain is a certain amount of observation exposure exposure and expression a prerequisite certain amount of observation exposure and expression a prerequisite in order to connect better to literature yes i agree so when she says uh, the uh, person who has asked this question whose point of view so uh, you know that's why we have talked about perspectives and drawing the child into the world of books uh, helping her to ask questions initially and then having the freedom to ask questions so points of view get created 
uh, we know that um, you know uh, people have uh, different feelings emotions context circumstances so we might talk about empathy we might talk about respect we might talk about recognition and we might talk about multiple views i mean many times uh, all views hold equally well i mean there is uh, no contest but if we are trying to problem solve we might have to come to uh, a few uh, you know core ideas which will help us to overcome but if you are talking about self expression then say uh, how a child draws an elephant or what the child sees in the story of an elephant you know the story of mahagiri uh, it has many perspectives like it talks about the kindness of the animal towards a little cat which was inside a hole where he was supposed to be uh, you know planting a big log and because he was not doing it he was uh, very cruelly hit by the mahavat so now here once the mahavat knows that what what was the intention of the elephant the story changes so points of view are also dynamic and keep changing so i think that is the purpose you know uh, of an adult to because there won't be always be one single child you might be interacting with 10 children so whose point of view the author the illustrator the children the reader so uh, it connects very well with the next question which is on uh, observation exposure and expressions that create uh, you know uh, uh, the meaning of uh, literature for you so it does matter you know if you have grown up with uh, you know different kinds of literature and you actually uh, work with literature and with children and you get a chance to observe them and carefully see what they are doing and what their feelings and desires are uh, you connect it with uh, 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 what their uh, needs are also true for authors and illustrators all great authors are observers and so are the illustrators so it does surely make a difference uh, in this area and all areas for that matter uh sunita bara asks uh, what is the difference between a picture book and a beginners beginning and a beginners book i think uh, a reader beginners reader book dolly narayan asks uh, she wants to she wants uh, that you know she she's she's asking if the presentation can be shared uh you can yes. get you can probably uh, it can be uh, get in touch with ma'am Uh, yeah uh, i have shared it with room to read uh, so most welcome to pass it on and uh, it sometimes helps to uh, you know uh, look up the concepts and uh, see how you can relate with them uh, this question regarding uh, difference between picture books and readers it is in terms of the uh, the the text which has been included so picture books might be uh, wordless or with very limited number of words while readers uh, easy readers might include uh, would include actually um, you know simple sentences simple story lines uh, some of those examples are there uh, in my presentation also so creates a developmentally graded uh, you know uh, developmentally appropriate graded level for uh, children of different ages Okay. Uh, Akanksha asks, "Are there any set parameters to judge a book as a good children's book? Each age group has different needs and different levels of understanding. Is diving into child psychology the right way to go about understanding the impact of these books?" Uh, yes, uh, um, she has given the uh, you know a part of the answer here herself. Surely, uh, you know, child development does help us. Uh, there is a, a good books guide which has been published by national book trust and uh, it uh, does talk about different dimensions of a book which you might consider uh, when you are making uh, an assessment of uh, a quality of the book and uh, you know in general books that 
uh, a child can relate to uh, are uh, very interesting and uh, uh, obviously i mean you go for uh, well reputed publishers so there are many guidelines in terms of you know the richness of language uh, storyline uh, the contextual connections uh, is it appropriate for the age uh, etc so um, yes i think the good books guide would be uh, very useful to uh, you know read on this um so there's uh, devjani on youtube she's asked if uh, she says through expressive the therapy through picture reading how far a child's cognitive skills may develop uh well uh expressive therapy through picture reading mm so you have to really know the child i mean you would be working uh as a teacher or as a parent and uh you know in terms of the age of the child her uh, ability to uh express uh, her thoughts and her ability to you know for oracy which you must encourage so this happens uh, you know over a period of time uh, there are no shortcuts to it yes surely there would be a difference uh, in the cognitive skills uh, of the child because um, we are talking about the world of knowledge and how we connect a child to it uh, so you know there is an element of uh, you know pedagogy that how would you uh, use a book with the intent of uh helping the child to think actively so uh that would advance uh the child's skill to think because it is not about the the content or just learning up the facts but the way you deal with it so i hope i have answered her question absolutely ma'am you have been so generous with your time and the with the way that you have shared uh, your ideas um, so i must thank you once again for uh, taking the time out to be with us and on behalf of doon university and room to read i take this opportunity to thank you uh, and i hope that we get to hear more from you in future um with that uh, we will um, and the compliments keep coming on the chat box thank so, you so much um, thank you for why <laughs> thank you so much for this opportunity uh, it was really interesting for me to talk about what i am really uh, you know interested in thank you so much and so passionately involved in <laughs> yeah. thanks you can see that <laughs> thank you ma'am uh, with you. that i uh, take this opportunity to Uh, move forward and invite pushpalata ji again uh, ms pushpalata rawat uh, will uh, take over and she will moderate the next session over to you uh, ma'am pushpalata for the next session please thank you dr richa so as we move into the next session it talks about uh, children literature in local language i hope the voice is audible uh is the voice yes clear? yes it, okay. it's it's all the you are the loud and clear <laughs> okay so as we move into this uh, panel discussion about children literature in local languages so what we are looking into is the lit children literature that is available in local language hamari sthaniya bhashao mein jo bal sahitya uplabdh hai और इसके साथ वी लुक आल्सो लुक इनटू द एकेडमिक इंक्वायरी दैट हैज टू वी हैव टू गेट इनटू व्हेन इट कम्स टू द चिल्ड्रन लिटरेचर इन लोकल लैंग्वेज सो जस्ट टू गिव यू अ ब्रीफ अबाउट दिस सेशन सो इफ वी टॉक अबाउट द वर्क दैट रूम टू रीड इज डूइंग इन दिस सो वी हैव बीन वर्किंग ऑन अ लिटरेसी प्रोग्राम व्हिच इज बेस्ड ऑन अ वेरी साइंटिफिक यथ अ वेरी कंटेक्सचुअलाइज्ड प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ अर्ली लिटरेसी and we talk about a comprehensive literacy approach and a comprehensive literacy approach we say it combines the science of reading and the magic of reading and we aim at developing independent readers 
So when we talk about independent readers, we talk about orality, orthographic expertise, and exposure to a variety of texts. And when we talk about the exposure to a variety of texts, then there comes a need to give space to every child's language, a diversified language experience for a child. So if we talk about a lot of Sahitya, we also connect with those Baal Sahitya which are connected to our Sani Parivesh. And if we look at a work of Room to Read globally, then Room to Read is publishing in 42 languages all over the world. And there are children literature that is available in different genres in all these languages that are there. So on part of Room to Read, there is an attempt to give space to all the different languages that the children have in different parts of the world. And that all their next generation will have access to all the local language literature that is so richly available across the different parts of the world. So taking this forward, I want to give my panel uh, members. Ka. So we uh, Dr. Diti Vyas. Diti Vyas is an academic in general literature and education. She has a rich experience of academic teaching, research, consulting, almost for uh, two decades. Uh, she is a PhD from Indian Institute of Technology, Gandhi Nagar. She has got a lot of awards at different level from International Research Society for Children Literature. She has lectured, she has presented papers at different national and international forum. And uh, just to name a few, uh, York University, there has been I am Bangalore, just to name a few. And uh, she'll be soon joining Anand National University as Associate Professor in Writing and Communication. Then I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Mukesh Nautial. Uh, he's a children uh, book author as well as an artist. He has written across different genres. So he's written for adults also. He's written uh, children's stories also, which have been published by Room to Read, UNICEF, Samay Sakshi. So the writing of uh, Mukesh Nautial has been around the culture and the society of Himalayas. He's been part of Himalayas for almost 25 years now. And interestingly, his stories do get broadcasted over uh, radio. He is also presenting literary programs at uh, Doodashi. Uh, I would also welcome uh, Nand Kishore Hatpalji. He is currently as a lecturer in SCRD. If you look at his work, it reflects art and culture of Uttarakhand. He has been part of the textbooks that have been written by the state government. And he has been associated with us when we were developing short stories based on local languages in the state. He has been editor for a number of uh, magazines that are published. And he writes poems, plays, and stories. And these have been well adapted at audio plays and have been broadcasted over All India Radio. I would also welcome uh, Mr. Manohar Chamuli. He is a teacher in education department and another person who is very well known in the field of uh, writing books for children literature. Almost uh, his books were part of Himachal Pradesh government's trainer program, which were there to develop reading habits among children. And his many of his uh, more than 20 stories have been translated also in Assamese and Bengali. He is also part of the textbooks for Hindi uh, that are developed by the state government. He has a long association with Room to Read. Many of his titles you can read if you look into Literacy Cloud. And they have been translated into different languages that I've been talking about. So once again, I would welcome all the panelists and thanking you all for giving your valuable time and look forward for an enriching discussion further. So I'll be putting up questions to the esteemed panelists that we have over here. So I would like to start with uh, Mr. Mukesh Nautyal. So uh, Nautyal, if we talk about the language of the people, if we look at the things that we have seen in the past, and if we look at the past 50 years, then we get to hear that it is 220. The fact is, in fact, it doesn't come to hear. फैक्ट है कि लगभग 220 भाषाएं जो हैं वो लुप्त हैं। हमारे संविधान की आठवीं अनुसूची में भी 22 भाषाएं हैं और सभी पे एक 
संकट हम लोग देखते हैं उनके बचने बचाने अब इस पृष्ठभूमि को हम लोग देखें और हम ये देखें कि अगर हम हायर स्टडीज की बात करते हैं और हायर स्टडीज में हम लोग देखते हैं कि क्या जो हमारी लोकल लैंग्वेज या मे बी नेटिव लैंग्वेज ये हैं क्या इनके पठन पाठन का कार्य है क्या हायर एजुकेशन में तो एक तरफ हम बात कर रहे हैं अपनी भाषाओं को उनके संरक्षण की और एक तरफ हम बात कर रहे हैं उच्च शिक्षा में इन भाषाओं के लिए स्पेस होने की तो आप इन दोनों चीजों में क्या कनेक्शन देते पुष्पलता जी पहले तो नमस्कार सभी मित्रों को और आपको भी मैं अपनी बात आपके आपका बड़ा बड़ा ला बहुत महत्वपूर्ण सवाल है ये और इसमें मैं शुरुआत बस केवल यहाँ से करना चाहूँगा कि पूरी दुनिया में अगर आप देखेंगे तो कोई भाषा किसी सरकार ने या किसी संस्था ने या किसी विश्वविद्यालय ने नहीं बचाई उस भाषा को वहां का समाज ही बचाता है अब उसमें सवाल ये आता है कि समाज किसी भाषा को क्यों अडेप्ट करे जैसे हम भारत में ही कहते हैं तो हिंदी अंग्रेजी फिर हिंदी और स्थानीय भाषाएं इस तरह का लगातार ये बहस लगातार चलती रही है तो हमारा अनुभव जो ये है अब इसमें सिद्धांत तो अलग अलग हैं भाषाओं को लेकर कई तरह के सिद्धांत हैं वो जो भाषाविद हैं वो ज्यादा बेहतर बताएंगे पर अनुभव में ये देखा गया है कि जिस भाषा को बाजार ने स्वीकार किया वो भाषा तो चल पड़ी उस भाषा को पर आपको बहुत कुछ करने की जरूरत नहीं है आप हिंदी में हमारे यहाँ आजादी के ठीक बाद हिंदी को लेकर जो कुछ बहस हुई जो पक्ष में विपक्ष में जो कुछ चीजें लेकिन जब उसको बाजार ने अडॉप्ट किया तो फिर तमिलनाडु में भी हिंदी चल पड़ी कर्नाटका में भी चल पड़ी केलरा में केरला में भी चल पड़ी और अब हम देखते हैं कि हमारी अंग्रेजी माध्यम से पढ़ने वाले बच्चे जब मीडिया की दुनिया में पीआर में तमाम दूसरे क्षेत्रों में जा रहे हैं तो उनको हिंदी सीखनी पड़ रही अच्छी हिंदी बोलना वो सीख रहे हैं तो ये ये करिश्मा कोई किसी सरकार ने किसी संस्था ने ये किसी विश्वविद्यालय ने नहीं बल्कि समाज ने किया क्योंकि समाज की जरूरत है बाजार की बाजार ने उस भाषा को स्थापित कर दिया है अब यहीं पर ये संकट आता है लोकल लैंग्वेजेस के साथ कि जो हमारी स्थानीय और जो आपने कहा जो ये आंकड़ा है ये बड़ा डराने वाला आंकड़ा है कि 220 भाषाएं ये यूनेस्को की एक एटलस में भी मैं पढ़ रहा था ये आंकड़ा कि 220 भाषाएं हमारी लगभग हो गई है अकेले भारत की बात करें तो अब स्थानीय भाषाओं में जब बात आती है तो यहाँ पर सरकार संस्थाओं और विश्वविद्यालयों विद्यालयों की भूमिका महत्वपूर्ण हो जाती है कि जिस भाषा में अभी जिस भाषा को बाजार ने उस तरह से स्वीकार नहीं किया या वो बाजार में उसकी जगह नहीं है उसको बचाने के लिए सरकार संस्थाएं और विश्वविद्यालय आगे आते हैं और इस मैं आपको बस केवल इतना भर इसमें और जोड़ दूं इसमें एक बहुत बढ़िया जिस पर कि हमारे यहाँ चर्चा नहीं होती है जब सोवियत संघ था जो आज रूस के तमाम जो देश में तो सोवियत संघ ने स्थानीय भाषाओं को उनके रूप ओरिजिनल जो मूल रूप था उसमें बचाने के लिए कुछ बड़े बहुत ही प्रैक्टिकल उपाय किए थे उनका अगर हम संज्ञान लें ये मैं आपको धीरे धीरे जब बातचीत होगी तो मैं आप इसका इस, इसको खोलूंगा इस पॉइंट को कि रसूल हम जातो की बहुत महत्वपूर्ण किताब है मेरा दागिस्तान पूरी दुनिया के लगभग सभी भाषाओं में वो ट्रांसलेट हो गई है तो उस जब आप मेरा दागिस्तान पढ़ते हैं तो आपको आश्चर्य होता है कि दर्जन भर गांवों का जो दागिस्तान वाला इलाका है उस इलाके में लगभग 20 भाषाएं हैं और 20 भाषाओं में ही साहित्य प्रकाशित भी हो रहा है प्रसारित भी हो रहा है उनकी संस्थाएं एकेडमीज तो यहाँ पर सरकार की भूमिका ज्यादा महत्वपूर्ण हो जाती है अंग्रेजी हिंदी यहाँ तक की तेलुगु कन्नड़ मलयाली इन भाषाओं को जिनके लिए बाजार में जगह है उनके लिए तो सरकार को बहुत कुछ करने की जरूरत नहीं है और लेकिन जो स्थानीय भाषाएं हैं लोकल लैंग्वेजेस है इसमें सरकार की विश्वविद्यालयों की और इसीलिए हमारी लगातार ये मांग है कि खासकर हमारी जो गढ़वाल यूनिवर्सिटी है कुमाऊं यूनिवर्सिटी है दून विश्वविद्यालय है यहाँ पर स्थानीय भाषाओं पर भी काम किया जाए तो कम से कम ये जो संकट है कि गढ़वाली कुमाऊनी जौनसारी धीरे धीरे उनको बोलने वालों की संख्या कम हो रही तो हो सकता है इस संकट से हम मुक्ति पाले 
ओवर टू यू उसमें लगा धन्यवाद नौत्याल जी और बड़ी महत्वपूर्ण बात आपने कही भाषा किसको बाजार का सपोर्ट मिल रहा है और किसको नहीं और जिन भाषाओं को बाजार का सपोर्ट नहीं है वहां पर भूमि का विश्वविद्यालयों की सरकार की उनके संरक्षण के लिए काम किया धन्यवाद नीतीश जी मेरा अगला सवाल मनोहर चमोली जी से तो चमोली जी जैसे हम लोग अमूमन ये मानना रहता है कि भाषा की जब हम बात करते हैं वो एक संप्रेषण का माध्यम है परंतु भाषा जब हम स्थानीय भाषा की बात करते हैं वो संप्रेषण से आगे बढ़ के एक आइडेंटिटी एक दर्पण होता है लोगों के लिए किसी एक रिच हेरिटेज को जानना तो जब आप स्थानीय भाषा को देखते हैं हमारे जो बाल साहित्य है उसको जो हमारे यंग रीडर्स हैं जो हमारे बच्चे जब उनको पढ़ रहे होते हैं तो आपको क्या लगता है कि उसपे क्या मायने निहित है इस लिटरेचर में जो कि उन बच्चों तक इस इस साहित्य को पढ़ते हुए पहुंचते हैं जी चमोली जी दरअसल कनेक्टिविटी गड़बड़ हो गई थी मैं सवाल नहीं सुन पाया जी, जी मैं रिपीट कर देती हूँ चमोली जी मेरा ये था कि भाषा की जब हम लोग बात करते हैं तो भाषा कहा जाता है अमूमन की संप्रेषण का माध्यम परंतु एक भाषा जो है व्यक्ति की पहचान उसकी आइडेंटिटी से भी जुड़ी हुई है और जब हम लोग अपनी लोकल अपनी भाषाओं की बात करते हैं और जब हम इसमें बाल साहित्य की बात करते हैं तो इन साहित्य के माध्यम से वो कौन सी ऐसी बातें हैं जो समाहित हैं इन लिटरेचर में यानी कि अगर एक बच्चा जो पढ़ रहा है इस लिटरेचर को जो लोकल लैंग्वेजेस में है जो कहीं पर एक लोकल कल्चर को एक उसके सामने प्रस्तुत करता है तो क्या मैसेजेस क्या सब उस बच्चे के पास आते मैं क्लियर कर पाई मतलब मैं आप सुन पाए ये बात सही है की हम सिर्फ बहुत छोटे तौर पर भाषा का जो असल मकसद है उसको मानते रहे हैं कि भाई भाषा केवल अभिव्यक्ति का माध्यम है लेकिन जैसा की इशारा से पहले भी जो सत्र चल रहा था उसमें भी था कि जब हमारे पास हम मनुष्य के पास जब भाषा नहीं थी तो भी हम हाव भाव से केतों से अपनी अभिव्यक्ति कर लेते थे और आज जब हम दून विश्वविद्यालय के साथ बात कर रहे हैं और जब पूरी दुनिया को हम लोग एक गांव और या एक शहर के तौर पर देख रहे हैं और अभी जो मुकेश नोटियाल जी ने कहा बाजार बाजार के तरीके से जब हम पूरी भाषाओं को मनुष्य को देख रहे हैं तो या तो हम विक्रेता हैं या फिर हम उपभोक्ता हैं तो भी हमको अपनी क्षेत्रीय भाषाओं को हमारी भारतीय भाषाओं को और पूरी दुनिया की भाषाओं को इस नजर से भी देखना चाहिए और हाँ ये बिल्कुल सही बात है कि जो नई पीढ़ी है वो इसको बेहतर ढंग से समझ रही है जान रही है जैसा कि हम देख रहे हैं कि हमारे बहुत सारे छात्र युवा बहुत मुश्किल भाषाएं सीख रहे क्यों क्या जरूरत है और ये जो चिंता अभी जाहिर की गई है रूम टू बीट की ओर से और आपने बताया भी कि बयालीस भाषाओं में हमारा जो लिटरेचर है वो छप रहा है क्यों हम किसी एक मुल्क में क्यों नहीं काम कर रहे हैं हम पूरी दुनिया में मुल्क काम करने की बात क्यों कर रहे हैं तो ये बहुत सीधी सी बात है कि कोई भाषा इतनी मुश्किल नहीं है अंग्रेजी पृष्ठभूमि में ही पले बड़े जो बच्चे है उनके लिए भी जो सबसे मुश्किल भाषाएं बताई जाती है अरबी और चीनी जापानी और कोरियाई उसके लिए भी ये भाषाविद कह रहे हैं कि अगर एक घंटा वो रोज दें तो 800 900 घंटे में वो भाषा सीखी जा सकती है अब जो आपका जो सवाल है हमारी जो आंचलिकता है वो हमारी पहचान है जैसे अभी से इससे पहले जो सत्र चल रहा था उसमें हम देख रहे थे साथ साथ बातचीत के लहजे से भी हमें मालूम चल रहा था कि कौन कहाँ से है अगर मैं अभी आपके सामने पिथौरागढ़ की बात करता हूँ तो एक छवि बनती है पिथौरागढ़ अभी मैं बात करता हूँ रुड़की तो एक छवि बनती है अभी मैं फिर हरिद्वार नाम लेता हूँ तो एक छवि बनती है और एकदम से मैं केरल कहूँ कुछ छवि बनती है वो छवि किसकी है जिसकी और मुकेश जी ने भी इशारा किया अगर मैं अफगानिस्तान कहता हूँ तो क्या छवि बनती है क्या कोई ऐसी फिल्म है जिसे हम ये कह सकते हैं कि हम इसको किसी पूरी दुनिया की फिल्म बताए नहीं हाँ किसी फिल्म में किसी क्षेत्र की दुनिया दिखाई दे सकती है तो ये जो भाषाई कौशल है ये जो भाषाई विशेषताएं हैं मुझे लगता है कि Uh, हमको पूरी दुनिया की बात करनी चाहिए और ये तभी होगा जब हम सारी दुनिया की 
भाषाओं को बचाएंगे जैसे कि अभी और इशारा भी हुआ मैं गढ़वाली हूँ आप जौनसारी हैं आप कुमाऊनी हैं आप बंगाली हैं हमारा जो घर का जो खान पान है हमारी जो बोलचाल है हमारे घर के जो लोक विश्वास है हमारी जो परंपराएं हैं उसको दुनिया कैसे जानेगी या हमारे घर में या हमारी रसोई में जो सामान आया है पूरी दुनिया का वो कैसे आया है तो ये जो मसला है ये जो नवीनता है ये जो अनुसंधान है ये जो कलात्मकता है ये केवल एक जगह पर रह के नहीं हो सकती मुझे ऐसा लगता है जैसे कि अगर इस पूरी दुनिया में ये जो खजूर है आम है अंगूर है काफल है लीची है अखरोट है ये सब खत्म कर दीजिए और सिर्फ एक फल हो पूरी दुनिया में पूरे बारह महीनों में एक ही फल मिलेगा तो कैसा लगेगा हमको तो इसका मतलब ये हुआ कि उत्तराखंड की बात भी हम कर रहे हैं जब या भारत की भी जब हम बात कर रहे हैं तो हम तभी बचेंगे जब हमारी भाषाएं बचेंगी और हमारी भाषाएं तब बचेंगी जब हमारे घर की जो दूध बोली है हमारी जो मातृभाषाएं और जो हमारे पड़ोस की भाषाएं हैं उसकी जो मनुष्यता है उसमें जो संवेदनाएं हैं उसमें जो स्थानीयताएं हैं उसमें जो लोक है उसमें जो संस्कृति है उसमें जो परंपराएं हैं उसका हस्तांतरण हम करें बातचीत में किस्सों में अब जैसे हमारे साथ अतवाल जी हैं जब वो आप किस्से सुनाते हैं तो हम सब लोग उस जगह पर पहुंच जाते हैं और अगर हम हटवाल जी को कह देंगे आप जो है अमेरिका में बैठ के सिर्फ अमेरिका की बात करें उनकी भाषा की बात करें तो हम शायद नंद किशोर हटवाल तो समझेंगे लेकिन हम फिर उनकी बात को नहीं समझ पाएंगे क्योंकि फिर तो वहां की बात करेंगे इसलिए जो बुनियादी स्तर पर हम जो लोग समझ रहे हैं हम और आप हमारी चिंता यही है कि बच्चे जो अपने घर से अपने परिवार से अपने पड़ोस से जो बातचीत लेकर आते हैं उनको उस बातचीत में बहुत कुछ मिले उनको उस बातचीत से हम स्कूल तक जोड़े तो मैं संक्षेप में अभी इतना ही कहना चाहूंगा कि ये चिंता हम सबकी चिंता है और ये सार्वभौमिक चिंता है और हम ज्यादा से ज्यादा लोक का घर का पड़ोस का जो साहित्य है समाज है उसकी जो दुनिया है उसको पूरी दुनिया में फैलाएं जी धन्यवाद चिमोली जी आपने जो बात कही कि लोकल से जो एक ग्लोबल लेवल पे कि मतलब जो स्थानीय हमारी लोक परंपरा जो हमारे अपने बाल साहित्य में है कैसे वो पास पड़ोस और पूरे व्यापक स्तर पे उसको अगर हम सोचे तो शायद ये एक एरिया है जिसपे हम लोगों को गहनता से विचार करने की आवश्यकता है धन्यवाद चिमोली जी मेरा अगला सवाल डॉक्टर द्विति से Uh, so, Dr. Deti, there has been talk about uh, books in the regional languages, and there have been talks about uh, books in other languages, which have a wider area of usage. The like uh, we often quote English as a language that is being compared. So, how do you look at the books publishing in a regional language and books publishing in an English language? So, how do you look at these uh, two dimensions of the thing? Yes, Dr. Deti. Thank you. Thank you, Pushpa Lata Ji, for the question and room to read and Boone University for this invitation. Uh, I'll be using English as uh, the medium of uh, communication. Please, maaf ki jaga. Uh, so, uh, coming to the question, uh, let us talk about the publishing industry at large. When we talk about Indian children's book, let's look at some statistics that we have handy. we know that the industry is very fragmented it is very scattered uh, unification is missing but if i put stray data together this is a picture that we uh, can see so india ranks and i'm talking about 2019 data publishing data india ranks third as far as books published in english are concerned across the world now if i do a further bifurcation we uh, get these figures which are very very alarming and which kind of resonate with what pushpalata ji um, notyal ji and jamoli ji are saying out of total 100% corpus of books published total as far as children's literature is concerned nearly 65 to 70% books are published exclusively in english and hindi तो बाजार की बात की नोटियाल जी ने सो आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट सम फिगर्स टू सब्सटैंशियट सो 65 टू 70 परसेंट आर इन इंग्लिश और हिंदी 
which means the remaining 30 to 35 percent are in regional languages and when i'm saying local languages all local languages put together तो एक बड़ा सा सेट है उसका एक सबसेट है और उसका एक छोटा सा सबसेट हो गया एंड विद इन दैट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट कंजर्वेशन ऑफ लैंग्वेज एंड लिटरेचर इन दीज रीजनल लैंग्वेजेस सो आई वांटेड टू हाईलाइट द सॉर्ट ऑफ चैलेंज दैट वी हैव एंड द सॉर्ट ऑफ रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी दैट पीपल हु आर इन एकेडेमिक्स पीपल हु आर इन द पाठ्य पुस्तक कमिटीज करिकुलम बोर्ड है as far as these um, uh, literatures in regional languages are concerned uh, i would also want to highlight very two distinct modes of um, circulation uh, of these books if we look at books the way they are circulated in english and hindi vis-a-vis -vis books that are circulated in regional languages these two are um, very distinct channels of circulation so if i look at how do i buy a book in english say for example typically i go to a bookstore you know so i would go to these very corporatized bookstores maybe i'd go to uh, a crossword um if i'm talking about physically going um so we go to a bookstore we find the book in english obviously um the the issue is uh, the bookstores will keep those books which are going to sell and english is a language of aspiration as far as broadly if i look at our nation so it's a language of aspiration for everybody so obviously um kitabe wo english mein rakhenge so that bit they will have the other very important channel of circulation that we see taking place uh, taking popularity gaining popularity is uh, book fairs and book festivals so in last few years we have seen a lot of book fairs and book festivals coming in and largely broadly um, this is uh, a platform which is going to uh, push in a lot of um, a um, uh, uh, lot of english books and hindi books but a minuscule um, amount of uh, uh, regional language books so talk about bookru talk about gurgaon festival or talk about kitabu uh, these book fairs i feel have a very very big responsibility of ensuring that the local languages also get equal platform in comparison to that agar hum uh, hindi uh, sorry agar hum regional languages dekhe beyond hindi तो इनका सर्कुलेशन का जो पद्धति है द मेथड ऑफ सर्कुलेशन इज लार्जली थ्रू स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स वुड यू नो प्रोक्योर अ लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ बुक्स एंड वी ऑल नो दैट एट टाइम्स नेक्सस हो जाता है बिटवीन स्टेट गवर्नमेंट एंड पब्लिशर्स तो काफी सारे रिपीट uh, पब्लिकेशन uh, देखने को मिलते हैं तो जो पब्लिश हो रहा है वो होता जा रहा है uh so state governments also have to play a very crucial role in ensuring that not only through awards sahitya academy uh, awards deti hai uh, um children's literature ke uh, proponents ko but beyond that they will have to ensure that there is a responsibility that they follow so um the channels of distribution are different the readership accordingly is going to be slightly different as far as uh, uh, both the uh, i mean i'm not i don't want to do a binary division between books in english versus books in local languages par jo bhed hai jisko bhed ko agar hame um, gap ko remove karna hai if you want to erase the gap we need to understand it and address it in the right way so if i were to look at the typical reader of um, english books uh, you would largely picture as the reader as uh, 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 an english medium educated elite urban child picking up uh, 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 an english book and of course the competition there is very high because you also have your harry potters and ronald dals and all of that um uh, to to compete to ye ek ek tarik ek uh, readership segment ho gaya and if i look at the other readership segment typically people assume that um the readership of regional language books is either in villages um or 
it is going to be uh, those urban uh, middle class uh, uh, people who uh, want to ensure that you know the parents the teacher want to ensure that uh, um, the, the regional uh, literature language is read matlab the idea is it's more of a nostalgia mummy papa ne jo kitabe padhi hai unko lagta hai ki ye kitabe hamare bacche bhi padhe so there is that segment and there is an nri um, expatriate jo puri community hai usme bahut interesting se usme kafi regional language books ki demand hai because they are physically cut off from their uh, roots linguistic roots and such communities want their children to be imbibing um uh, the local languages so ye ek ek chhota sa market hai but kafi important market hai and in this i think um in this scenario the digital platform is going to be a game changer and i want to mention specifically what pratham is doing uh, through story weaver तो स्टोरी वीवर के माध्यम के द्वारा प्रथम ने काफी रीजनल डायलेक्ट्स की किताबें बाहर लेके आए हैं यू हैव से बुक्स इन सुरजापुरी विच इज बिहारी लैंग्वेज बिहारी डायलेक्ट यू हैव बुक्स इन पावरी विच इज स्पोकन इन पोर्शन ऑफ महाराष्ट्र एंड मध्य प्रदेश एंड यू हैव गोंडी विच इज एसेंशियली एन आदिवासी लैंग्वेज तो वॉट दे डू इज आई थिंक इट्स अ वेरी डेमोक्रेटिक process where i can choose a story and i have the power as a child as a parent as a teacher i have the power to pick the language of my story so i can select that i think that's extremely empowering as far as uh, uh, you know um, uh, removing the compartments between languages are concerned and making them equally accessible and equitably available to anybody who wants to reach out also i want to end by saying that bilingual books or trilingual books are also very very important medium of um, ensuring that uh, uh, you know the languages go side by side so i would propagate hand in hand rather than saying english versus regional languages if we walk hand in hand i think uh, that's going to be an ideal world to be in thanks vidhi and uh, that brings to the core uh, what we, you were saying about there is a responsibility and there is a challenge so both of these things are there and how do we look at the world where these things go hand in hand and we talked about like the digital platform that are working in definitely that has been a game changer and that has been our experience in uh, room to read also so with the literacy club that room to read uh, launched uh, uh, this particular year where we have books in 30 different languages that are available and many of those languages even i am not able to understand that and uh, there have been uh, this and i think this should i would also relate to what chemuli ji also said that when we are talking about the regional language how that particular literature and subject which is like said to be very localized but let's have a global reach to that so that this particular thing goes hand in hand thank you dr deepi uh, i would go over to uh, dr uh, uh, to khatwal ji uh, so khatwal ji pichle saal se sabhi ke beech mein charcha rahi hai nayi shiksha niti ki aur nayi shiksha niti ne bahut focus diya hai ki jo hamari apni bhartiy bhasha hai unka vikas unka samvardhan kitna aham hai और उन्होंने बात कही है बहुभाषिता की मल्टीलिंग्विज्म कि हर बच्चे की जो भाषा है उसको हम लोग कैसे स्पेस दें तो इसको लेके आप क्या देखते हैं कि राज्य स्तर पे किस तरह के प्रयास हो रहे हैं और किस तरह के और प्रयास किए जाने चाहिए जी हरताल जी मल्टीलिंग्विज्म की जो बात की गई और बहुभाषा जो है वो अगर उस परिप्रेक्ष में नीति 2020 के परिप्रेक्ष में हम राज्य में वर्तमान में अगर इस त्रिभाषा फार्मूले को या बहुभाषावाद को देखें तो वो, वो पहले से एग्जिस्ट कर रहा है अब यहाँ पर पूरे राज्य में प्रारंभिक स्तर से ही हिंदी को अनिवार्य रूप से पढ़ाया जाता है और कक्षा तीन से संस्कृत भी पढ़ाई जा रही है अंग्रेजी भी कक्षा एक से पढ़ाई जा रही है 
और जहाँ मुस्लिम बच्चे हैं वहाँ पे जहाँ उर्दू पढ़ाने की भी व्यवस्था है उर्दू अध्यापक भी यहाँ पे है तो जो राष्ट्रीय स्तर की जो बड़ी भाषाएं हैं इसको लेकर के तो यहाँ पे कहीं कोई दिक्कत नहीं है वो जो पहले की जो पहले जो एन सी एफ दो हजार पांच है इससे पहले भी जो समितियां थी इन्होंने भी जिस तरह से त्रिभाषा फार्मूले की बात कही थी वो राज्य में एग्जिस्ट है वो लागू है और तीनों भाषाएं यहाँ पे अच्छे से चलाई जा रही है और वो सुविधा है लेकिन अब आते हैं मातृभाषा पे तो मातृभाषा को लेकर के हमको जो एन में जिस बात पर सबसे ज्यादा जोर दिया गया काफी जोर दिया गया है और एन पी एफ दो हजार पांच में इस बात को आ, इस बात पर जोर दिया गया था कि मातृभाषा के माध्यम से बच्चों को पढ़ाने के अवसर राज्य में उपलब्ध हो बच्चों को इस बात को लेकर के यहाँ पर काम किए जाने की जरूरत है ये नहीं हो रहा है दो हजार पांच से लेकर के भी और आज तक भी ये मातृभाषा के माध्यम से हम बच्चों को प्रारंभिक स्तर पर पढ़ाने की सुविधा मुहैया नहीं करा पा रहे हैं इस पर बहुत गंभीरता से काम किए जाने की जरूरत है और ये कार्य जो एन में फाइव प्लस थ्री प्लस थ्री प्लस फोर फोर का जो एक फार्मूला दिया गया है इस पर इस परिप्रेक्ष्य में सोचने की जरूरत है इसको कि हम प्रारंभिक स्तर पर जो फर्स्ट फाइव ईयर है तीन प्री स्कूलिंग का और ईसीसी का और दो वर्ष जो है स्कूलिंग का तो इसमें से क्या हम फर्स्ट फाइव ईयर में बच्चों को राज्य स्तर पर मातृभाषा के माध्यम से पढ़ाने की सुविधा क्या दे सकते हैं सबसे पहले ये तय होना चाहिए इस पर सहमति होनी चाहिए शासन स्तर पर कि ये दिया जाए उसके बाद इस पर आगे काम किया जा सकता है बहुत अच्छे से आप लोग हैं सब हमारा जो स्ट्रक्चर है पूरा एजुकेशन का इसमें बहुत छोटी छोटी चीजें तय करने के कुछ गलत फहमिया भी दूर किए जाने की जरूरत है मातृभाषा के माध्यम से शिक्षण को लेकर के असल में लोग ये भी समझते हैं कि मातृभाषा के माध्यम से जब शिक्षण की बात करते हैं तो लोग सोचते हैं मातृभाषा शिक्षण की बात करते हैं मातृभाषा शिक्षण अलग चीज होगी मातृभाषा के माध्यम से शिक्षण अलग बात होगी हम मातृभाषा के माध्यम से शिक्षण की बात कर रहे हैं फिलहाल जो एनईपी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी में कहा गया है जिस पर बहुत काफी फोकस किया गया है इसमें यह तय करने की जरूरत है कि अब जैसे उदाहरण के लिए कक्षा अगर हम ये तय करते हैं कक्षा तीन से मातृभाषा के माध्यम से हम शिक्षण मुहैया करवाएंगे ये गलत फहमी रहती है कई बार ये भी सोचा जाता है कि शायद अब ये गढ़वाली पढ़ाएंगे या कुमोनी ही पढ़ाएंगे ऐसा नहीं है विषय वही है उदाहरण के लिए कक्षा तीन में हिंदी भी पढ़ाई जा रही है हिंदी तो हिंदी में पढ़ाई जाएगी अंग्रेजी पढ़ाई जा रही है अंग्रेजी अंग्रेजी में पढ़ाई जाएगी संस्कृत पढ़ाई जा रही है संस्कृत संस्कृत में पढ़ाई जाएगी गणित है गणित को आप दो और दो चार और गुणा भाग वैसी पढ़ाना है आपको सिर्फ मीडियम और इंस्ट्रक्शन मातृभाषा रखनी है ये ये तय होना चाहिए और अब एक विषय रह जाता है ईवीएस परिवेशीय शिक्षण अगर शासन स्तर पर यह तय हो परवेशी शिक्षण को आप मातृभाषा के माध्यम से पढ़ाएं तो इस पर काम किया जा सकता है और ये भी तय करने की जरूरत है किस तरह से हम क्रमोत्तर तरीके से इसको आगे कक्षाओं में जैसे कि इस बार इस साल कक्षा तीन में पढ़ाया गया अगले साल कक्षा चार में पढ़ाया गया ये इस तरह से भी एक ठोस भाषा नीति को उत्तराखंड में मातृभाषा के माध्यम से शिक्षण के लिए एक ठोस भाषा नीति बनाए जाने की जरूरत तो इसमें मोटे तौर पर यह है कि हम इस कक्षा से शुरू करें जो आंगनवाड़ी केंद्र है यहाँ पर अगर बातचीत होती है तो यहाँ पर मेरा तो यह सुझाव है यहाँ पर टोटल जो हम बातचीत करते हैं पूरी की पूरी जो पढ़ाई करते हैं पूरी की पूरी जो भी बातचीत करते हैं वो सब मातृभाषा में हो और प्रदेश स्तर पर एक पूरी भाषा नीच तय हो और कि हम किस तरह से किन कक्षाओं में कैसे और ये कैसे संभव हो इसके लिए आगे कुछ तो शॉर्ट टर्म तय करने निर्णय लिए जाने की जरूरत है जैसे किस कक्षा में हम पढ़ाएं कैसे इसको पढ़ाएं कि कैसे शिक्षक इसको दें और कुछ लॉन्ग टर्म नीतियां बनाए जाने के लंबे समय के लिए नीति निर्धारण की जरूरत है जैसे कि अगर मातृभाषा में शिक्षण की बात होती है 
हमको फिर हमको डीएलएड के कोर्स में भी सुधार की जरूरत पड़ेगी शिक्षकों की जो नियुक्ति नियमावली है अगर आगे हमने लंबे समय तक ये चलाना है तो उसमें भी हमको सुधार करने की जरूरत पड़ेगी परिवर्तन की जरूरत पड़ेगी और एन जो ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी है उसके हिसाब से पूरे पूरे जो एजुकेशन सिस्टम है हमारा उसमें काम किए जाने की जरूरत है उसमें अपडेट सबको सब चीजों को अपडेट किए जाने की जरूरत है चाहे वो बी एस का पाठ्यक्रम है डीएलएस का पाठ्यक्रम है नियुक्ति की नियमावली है सेवा नियमावली है इन सबको एन ई पी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी के हिसाब से अपडेट किए जाने की ऐसा मेरा सुझाव है और इसमें एक जो सबसे महत्वपूर्ण बात है वो ये ये है कि पहले इस पर एक इस तरह की चर्चा हो एक ऐसी गोष्ठी ठोस एक नीति बनाई जाए ठोस एक आधार बनाई जाए कि मातृभाषा शिक्षण को लेकर के एक एक बिंदुवार इस पर चीजें तय हो क्लास किस क्लास में कौन सा विषय पढ़ाया जाए कैसे पढ़ाया जाए कैसे ये संभव हो और इसको डिसेंट्रलाइज बहुत डिसेंट्रलाइज करने की जरूरत है स्टेट में भी डिसेंट्रलाइज करने की जरूरत है हमारे पास बहुत स्ट्रॉन्ग स्ट्रक्चर उपलब्ध है शिक्षा में हमको इसको जिलों में जिला स्तर पर और जैसा कि मैंने पहले भी कहा था जैसे हमने प्रशासनिक इकाइयां गठित की हैं डाइट बनाए हैं बीईओ कार्यालय बनाए हैं डिस्ट्रिक्ट कार्यालय बनाए ऐसी भाषाई इकाइयां भी गठित किए जाने की जरूरत है जिस रीजन में जो भाषा है वहां वो इकाई गठित करके और उस रीजन में बच्चों को प्रारंभिक स्तर पर और कम से कम प्री स्कूलिंग जो इसी हम बात कर रहे हैं आंगनबाड़ी स्तर पर उन बच्चों को मातृभाषा में लिटरेचर उपलब्ध करा जाता है उस पर काम करके उसमें जो हमारा माध्यम है शिक्षण का माध्यम है वो हम कैसे उसको करें कैसे एग्जिस्ट करें उसको कैसे इम्प्लीमेंट करें इस पर डिसेंट्रलाइज तरीके से काम किया जाने की धन्यवाद हटपाल जी और जो आपने बात कही ये वाली कि मातृभाषा माध्यम से शिक्षण और मातृभाषा का शिक्षण ये गलत है और जो आपने बात कही कि किस तरह से जो वर्तमान हमारी नई शिक्षा नीति है उसमें किन किन स्तर पे किन किन चीजों पे हम लोगों को बातचीत करनी है तो आपने उसका एक पूरा खाका इसमें प्रेजेंट किया है कि एक लॉन्ग टर्म पॉलिसी को लेके और आपका भाषा इकाई वाला शायद इस दृष्टिकोण से ये एक नया नजरिया है चीजों को देखने का धन्यवाद हरपाल जी मेरा अगला सवाल मुकेश जी से होगा मुकेश जी जैसे अभी जब से हमारी चर्चा इस पैनल डिस्कशन की शुरू हुई है ना चाहते हुए भी एक कंपैरिजन हमेशा होता है क्योंकि तो जब भी कोई एक भाषा होती है उसका एक बड़ा पैमाना कई बार ये रहता है कि कितने क्षेत्र में वो भाषा जो है वो बोली जा रही है और जब ये बातचीत होती है तो एक तुलना होना स्वाभाविक सा होता है कि भाई इसका बहुत यूसेज लिमिटेड है इसका बहुत व्यापक सभी स्पीकर्स की बात है अब आप इन सब के साथ ये हमारा एक प्रयास भी है कि कैसे हम अपनी स्थानीय भाषाओं को और समृद्ध करें तो इसको लेके आपके अपने अनुभव जो आपका लंबा अनुभव इन स्थानीय भाषाओं के साथ काम करने का आपके इसको क्या सुझाव आप इसमें देना चाहेंगे मुकेश जी जी प्रफुल्लता जी मुझे तो ये सवाल और ये प्रश्न ही अपने आप में बेमानी लगता है कि कोई भाषा बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है और कोई भाषा कम महत्वपूर्ण है ये अलग बात है कि परिस्थितियां कुछ कुछ भाषाओं को बहुत महत्वपूर्ण बना देती हैं कुछ को मेन स्ट्रीम तक वो आने से रह जाती हैं लेकिन भाषाएं सभी महत्वपूर्ण हैं और आपसे ये शेयर करने में मुझे अच्छा लग रहा है कि पूरी पूरी दुनिया में जो पूरा विश्व साहित्य जब आप पढ़ते हैं तो तो जो आपको सबसे बढ़िया साहित्य मिलता है जो बड़ा ड्यूरेबल है मेरा दागिस्तान की मैं अभी चर्चा कर रहा था एक दर्जन भर गांवों के समूह में रसूल हमजातो ने एक किताब लिखी अवार भाषा है और पूरे पूरा विश्व उस किताब को पढ़ रहा है या तो मेरे ख्याल से जितने लिखने पढ़ने वाले लोग हैं वो तो पढ़ ही चुके हैं तो कोई भाषा भाषा के बारे में आप एक एक अकेला शब्द बनने में सैकड़ों साल ले लेता है और एक शब्द की जो यात्रा है वो यात्रा इतनी लंबी हो सकती है जितनी की मनुष्य जाति ने आज तक नहीं की हो एक दिन वो जगुड़ी जी मुझे बता रहे थे अभी कुछ दिन पहले कि जो शैम्पू शब्द हमारा है वो हमारे यहाँ से जो चंपी हम करते हैं बालों पर जो चंपी करते हैं उससे निकला है तो वो शैम्पू था फ्रेंच यहाँ आए उन्होंने चंपी कराई वो वो उनके यहाँ शू फ्रेंच में शू 
जो शौ है शौ उसकी ध्वनि ज्यादा है तो उन्होंने चंपी को शैम्पी बोलना शुरू किया वो शैम्पी घिसते घिसते शैम्पू हो गया अब हम सब शैम्पू बोल रहे हैं वो है तो चंपी तो भाषाओं के एक शब्द की जो यात्रा है वो बड़ी अद्भुत हो जाती है और इस इस नजरिए से अगर आप देखें तो आ, कोई भाषा मुझे नहीं लगता कि विश्व में कोई भी अभी जो मनोहर चमोली जिस तरह इंगित कर रहे थे ऐसी ऐसी अद्भुत भाषाएं हैं और पुष्पलता जी अभी आपने तो रूम टू रीड ने तो एक बड़ा शानदार काम जो किया था ये पंद्रह भाषाएं जब आपने गढ़वाली कुमावनी जौनसारी में पब्लिश की तो आपने ख्याल किया होगा इस बात पे कि उसमें जो मुहावरे आए हैं वो कितने अद्भुत मुहावरे हैं और एक ही मुहावरा अपने पूरे कालखंड को एक युग को दर्शाता है अगर आप उसके समाज उसके उसके सोशियो पोलिटिकल स्पीयर पे अगर आप डिस्कशन करेंगे तो पूरा एक कालखंड आपके सामने आता है सो so, मैं नहीं मानता कि कोई भाषा बहुत और ये माना भी नहीं जाना चाहिए बहुत खराब होगा ये बहुत आज के डेमोक्रेटिक वर्ल्ड में जब हम पूरी दुनिया में बड़े बड़े तानाशाहों को भी हम लोकतांत्रिक होने के लिए नसीहत दे रहे हैं और ऐसे में खासकर भारत की परिधि से तो अगर ये बात जाती है तो बहुत गलत बात है इस बात का हम हम तो मजम्मत करते हैं कि चाहे वो बहुत कम लोगों से बोली बल्कि वो बहुत महत्वपूर्ण भाषा होगी जो बहुत कम लोगों से बोली जा के बीच बोली जा रही है उसको बचाने की हमको ज्यादा जरूरत होगी वो ठीक है कि उसके तरीके उसमें सरकारों की क्या भूमिका होगी संस्थाओं की क्या भूमिका होगी वो एक अलग तरह की का बहस की बहस है लेकिन भाषाएं सभी महत्वपूर्ण है और कंपेरिजन वाला हाँ ये कंपेरिजन आप किया जा हम कर सकते हैं कि हमारे बच्चे के लिए पढ़ने के लिए जो अभी हटवाल जी शिक्षा नीति और खासकर नई शिक्षा नीति के संदर्भ में भाषाओं की चर्चा कर रहे थे कि स्थानीय भाषा में कौन सी भाषा भाई अब उत्तराखंड में ही अगर हम देखें तो लगभग आधा दर्जन तो भाषाएं हमारे पास हैं ही जो आज भी एग्जिस्ट करती हैं तो उनमें से हम कौन सा माध्यम लेंगे इस तरह की बहस हो सकती है लेकिन इस बहस में कि ये कि कौन भाषा महत्वपूर्ण है कौन नहीं मुझे लगता है कि अगर मैंडरिन और अंग्रेजी बहुत शानदार भाषाएं हैं तो मैं मानता हूं कि हमारे यहाँ से हमारे यहाँ की जो भूटांतिक समुदाय की भाषाएं जो बहुत खतरे में हैं वो भाषाएं भी उतनी ही महत्वपूर्ण है ओवर टू यू कुछ थैंक यू नोटियाल जी आपका एक शब्द की यात्रा ये बहुत ही एक रोचक प्रसंग था कि जिसने पूरी भाषाओं के आपस में किस तरह से जुड़ाव और मिलन की और आपकी जो ये बात कि कुछ भाषाएं मेन स्ट्रीम होती हैं और कुछ नहीं और कैसे इस पे जो है हम लोग इस एनालिसिस या ये कंपैरिजन हो इसको हम अवॉइड करें अपनी तरफ से क्या एफर्ट हम लोगों के लोकल लैंग्वेज हमारी अपनी नेटिव लैंग्वेज है उनको किस तरह से और बेहतर कर सकते हैं धन्यवाद माता जी uh over to you diti i have a because like if we look at all the discussions that are happening into so how do you feel and why an academic inquiry into children books in local language is a need over to you diti so uh before going to the exact question let me spend a few minutes uh, i mean a minute to talk about how children's literature whether in local languages or english has always been a subject of suspicion as far as academia is concerned uh there was there's a notion and i'm talking about anglo american children's literature also which is apparently assumed to have progress quote on quote progress very well so when i talk about this this body of writing and if we can pull out some uh, lessons from the way it has now established itself in the academia very powerfully i'd say that in 1960s this was you know the time when the academic suspicion started waning and the waning happened when um, there was this whole burgeoning of uh, the study of popular literature or popular culture and children's literature found a home in popular culture before that it was very much a part of education and librarianship you know obviously we wanted our children to read write that prescriptive sense was very much there but the little problem when we talk about fitting something into librarianship or education is that again the academia and i'm talking about the academia with a capital t and a capital a would find it very lightweight 
अच्छा बच्चों के लिए है अच्छा अच्छा टू मच फन यू नो जूवेनाइल किडिश ये सारे वर्ड्स होते थे तो इन सिक्सटीज दिस चेंज एंड इन एटीज आई थिंक अ बिग चेंज हैपन्ड व्हेन द होल बैगेज फ्रॉम क्रिटिकल थियोरी एंड लिटररी थियोरी वाज लिटरली बोरोड बाय चिल्ड्रंस लिटरेचर एक्सपोनेंट्स एंड द मैरिज ऑफ लिटररी थियोरी एंड चिल्ड्रंस लिटरेचर हैपन so this is uh, uh, you know the background in which i would want to place our present discussion so abhi tak jitni bhi baatein hui hai there is a sense that i am getting very it is found that children's literature is a language keeper agar bachcho ko padhaya jayega it's a way of conserving the language i would want to flip the equation with everybody's permission and i would say it's not only um, the um, uh, the language and the literature that will benefit children's literature that will benefit if we bring children's literature in the academic inquiry that is going to hugely benefit the mainstream criticism about for the sake of differentiation i am calling literature for adults uh, why and how is this going to happen let me substantiate with two examples my one of my researches focuses on very disturbed why because i come from a gujarati speaking language though i teach english but i speak gujarati at home there's like kya gujarati mein there isn't anything i mean and and the the critical studies told me there isn't anything because um, when we are talking about language politics gujarati is supposed to be a language which is known for its apathy for gender issues so i started digging up and when i started digging up i found a tattered book written in 1957 managed to get its author 85 plus uh, inke author the harish nayak ji and this book is the entire feminist feminine version of the tarzan tale so it's it's and it is published way before um, you know what was believed to be the beginning of feminist thinking so this whole thing changed the historiography of indian children's literature and um, uh, you know uh, i s s c l uh, uh, that is irish academy of uh, study of children's literature invited me to present this work there so that's one the other uh, the other generalization that prevails in um, the realm of indian children's literature is that um uh, english is equal to modern cosmopolitan extremely um uh, you know uh, non traditional and progressive salman rushdi ji ki den hai salman rushdi ji who started the whole debate of english versus regional languages so this is what thought came and by default regional languages are seen as conservative parochial now i tried exploring this whole myth ki kya gender ke paripeksh se dekhne se is this holding true and the answer was it was so surprising that i found that the whole idea of binary conservative versus modern doesn't work so pura jo adult literature mein discussion hai Um, जो 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 थीम चल रहा था डिस्कशन का ट्रेंड चल रहा था व्हेन आई ब्रिंग एग्जांपल्स फ्रॉम चिल्ड्रंस लिटरेचर इन कंपैरिजन विद ईच अदर रीजनल वर्सेस इंग्लिश द होल डिस्कोर्स द मेटा डिस्कोर्स व्हिच वाज गोइंग ऑन स्टैंड्स corrected and that is what i feel um, academic inquiry should do so we should interrogate unqualified uh, generalizations we should challenge the illusions and erasures kyu erasure hai and we should cross the predefined boundaries and thereby create newer ways of reading so i think if 
if we bring in regional languages we can do all of this to the mainstream also the bhala dono side hoga not only ek benefit karega and the other will be at the receiving end that's an uh, excellent idea diti like uh, crossing the predefined boundaries and we talked about uh, how the mainstream what we say the mainstream it's going to help the local language but now you are saying that let's look at the reverse equation let's look at how, not about adult literature like uh, benefiting the film literature but let's look at it the vice versa and that's i think one of the area when we say that academic inquiry has to look in so that opens up a new frontier thank you diti So my next question would come to uh, Nand Kishore Hardwal ji. Uh, Hardwal ji, जो हम लोग बात करते हैं uh, हमारी अपनी भाषा है उत्तराखंड की अपनी भाषाओं में बाल साहित्य होने की तो कई बार ये बात कही जाती है कि बाल साहित्य मौजूद है परंतु शायद वो उपलब्ध नहीं है हमारे बच्चों को या हमारे हमारे युवाओं को और दूसरी ये सवाल ये उठता है कि क्या ये बाल साहित्य सामायिक है कंटेम्प्रेरी है तो इसमें जब आपका जो भी जितना वृहत काम है क्या डिफरेंट शेड्स हैं क्या जो हमारा उपलब्ध है बाल साहित्य जो हमारी स्थानीय भाषा राज्य की है इनको अगर आप सामयिक दृष्टि से देखें तो आप इस पे क्या कहना चाहेंगे जी अटल हटपाल जी आपका अनम्यूट करना होगा अभी आप म्यूट पे हैं हटपाल जी अभी जी जो हम जो उत्तराखंड की स्थानीय भाषाएं हैं जनपदीय भाषाएं या बच्चे की जो घर की भाषा है इसमें ये बात सही है कि इसमें बाल साहित्य उपलब्ध नहीं है अलग से स्पेशल जिसको बाल साहित्य कहते हैं वो नहीं है लिखा नहीं लिखा गया लेकिन जो लोक साहित्य है दो तरह के साहित्य के बात करते हैं जैसे उदाहरण के लिए मैं गढ़वाली का अगर उदाहरण दू तो गढ़वाली भाषा में जो लिखित साहित्य है उसमें बाल साहित्य अलग से नहीं लिखा गया बच्चों के लिए अलग से नहीं लिखा गया लेकिन जो लोक साहित्य है हालांकि लोक साहित्य की भी ऐसी कैटेगरी नहीं होती है कि ये लोक बाल साहित्य है ये लोक बाल साहित्य नहीं है लेकिन उसमें बहुत सारा साहित्य ऐसा है जो बच्चों के हिसाब का है बच्चों के लिए हम उसको दे सकते हैं उसका चयन कर सकते हैं तो जैसे जैसे लोक कथाएं हैं तो लोक कथाएं हमारे जो पूरा स्थानीय भाषा है उन सभी भाषाओं में लोक कथाएं उपलब्ध है लोकगीत है ये लोकगीत बहुत तरह तरह के लोकगीत हमारे तो इन लोकगीतों में से बहुत सारे लोकगीतों का चयन हमको देखना होगा कि बच्चों के लिए कौन सा उपयोगी है कौन सी कथा बच्चों के लिए उपयोगी है इसी तरह पहेलिया है कुछ बाल गीत है खेल गीत है ये सब लोक साहित्य में उपलब्ध हैं तो हमको सिर्फ इनका आज के परिप्रेक्ष्य में इनका चयन करना होगा इसमें सभी तरह के हैं कुछ बहुत ही जिनको अभी आप कंटेम्प्रेरी की बात कर रहे थे तो बहुत सारा ऐसा लिटरेचर भी है ऐसा साहित्य भी है जिसको हम सामयिक कह सकते हैं और उसको बनाया भी जा सकता है सामयिक हाँ लेकिन इतना करने की जरूरत है कि जो लोक साहित्य है उसमें बच्चों के हिसाब से उसका चयन करके उसको रिजाइट करने की जरूरत पड़ती है बाल साहित्य भी इस तरह का रिजाइट ही होता है लोक साहित्य का जब आप मौखिक रूप से उपलब्ध लोक साहित्य की जब हम बात करते हैं तो उसका जब हम निपटांकन करते हैं उसकी स्क्रिप्ट बनाते हैं तो एक तरह से वो भी रिजाइट ही होता है कोई लोक कथा है और तो लोक कथा जो मौखिक रूप से उपलब्ध होती है हमारी लोक भाषाओं में स्थानीय भाषाओं में मातृभाषाओं में लोक कथा जो मौखिक रूप से उपलब्ध है उन लोक कथाओं को बच्चों के अनुरूप लिखे बच्चों के हिसाब से लिखे जाने की जरूरत है वय वर्ग के बच्चों के वर्ग एक तो चयन चयन करके इसमें एक बात मैं ये भी बता दूं कि बहुत सारा लोक साहित्य लिप्यांकित है लिखा गया है बहुत सारी लोक कथाओं के संग्रह है हमारे पास लोक गीतों के संग्रह है पहेलियों के संग्रह है बाल गीतों का उतना संग्रह नहीं हुआ उतना लिप्यांकन नहीं हुआ लेकिन उपलब्ध है बाल गीत है खेल गीत है बच्चों के लिए 
आज के परिप्रेक्ष्य में एन ई पी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी के परिप्रेक्ष्य में वय वर्ग के हिसाब से उम्र के हिसाब से इन इस बाल साहित्य को रिराइट करने की जरूरत है लोक साहित्य को रिराइट करने की एक तो ये है दूसरा आ, दूसरी बात कि और ये जो कंटेम्प्रेरी होने की बात कर रहे हैं हम रिवाइज करते समय इनमें इतनी गुंजाइश होती है इतना इतनी सरलता होती है इतनी फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी होती है इस साहित्य में कि आप इसको बच्चों के हिसाब से कंटेम्प्रेरी भी बना सकते हैं बहुत सारे हमारे साथियों ने इस तरह लोक कथाओं को आज के हिसाब से बच्चों के हिसाब से उसको प्रस्तुत किया है बच्चों के तो ये काम हुए भी है इसको एक बार देखने की जरूरत है सारे लोक साहित्य को और बाल साहित्य दूसरी बात स्थानीय भाषाओं में जो बाल साहित्य की बात ये तो लोक साहित्य की बात कर रहा था जो लिखित बाल साहित्य जो आधुनिक साहित्य है वो बहुत कम लिखा गया है उसका कारण जो भी हो प्रकाशन की दिक्कतें या उसकी ज्यादा हो रही थी इसमें लिखवाया जा सकता है असल में मेरा तो ये मानना है कि बच्चों के लिए जो स्थानीय भाषा है मातृभाषा है उनकी मातृभाषाओं में बाल साहित्य को बकायदे सामयिक और आधुनिक शिक्षा देने वाले बाल साहित्य को लिखवाए जाने की बहुत जरूरत है ऐसा किया जाना बहुत जरूरी है खासकर कुछ जो शिक्षा हम अगर हम आप इंफॉर्मेशन को एक तरफ रख दें सूचनाओं बच्चों को सूचना देने की बात न करें और हम एक भावनात्मक रूप से बच्चे को तैयार करने की अगर बात करते हैं तो वो मातृभाषा में ही सबसे बेहतर तरीके से हम इसको तैयार कर सकते हैं खासकर जब अगर हम बच्चे को उसके परिवेश से जुड़ने की शिक्षा देते हैं पर्यावरण के प्रति संवेदन संवेदनशील बनाने की शिक्षा देते हैं एक दूसरे के भाषा के प्रति विभिन्न सामाजिक वर्गों के प्रति उसके अंदर संवेदनशीलता के विकास की जब बात करते हैं तो ये लोक भाषा में ज्यादा कारगर तरीके से ज्यादा भावनात्मक तरीके से इसको किया जा सकता है क्योंकि सूचना संप्रेषण का मामला नहीं है ये बच्चे को भावनात्मक रूप से तैयार किए जाने का मामला है भावनात्मक रूप से बच्चा बहुत अच्छे से मातृभाषा में ही तैयार हो सकता है अपनी आसपास की भाषा जो उसने घर में सीखी है उस भाषा में वो बेहतर तरीके से तैयार हो सकता है और जब वो स्कूल में आता असल में इसमें भाषा सीखने जैसा भी कई बार ये सवाल होते हैं कि हम माना गढ़वाली में या जौनसारी में कुमाऊनी में अगर हम आ, कोई बाल साहित्य उपलब्ध कराते हैं आ, लिखते हैं उसको गढ़वाली कुमाऊनी क्योंकि उसको वो घर में अगर तीन साल में स्कूल में आ जाए तो घर में वो उस मातृभाषा को जानता है अपने परिवार में वो उस भाषा को बोलता है विद्यालय में आके उसको उस भाषा में कोई छोटी सी कथा पढ़ने को मिलती है जिसमें राष्ट्रीय मूल्यों की बात की गई है सामाजिक मूल्यों के संरक्षण की बात की गई है परिवेश जीव जंतु पर्यावरण के संरक्षण की बात की गई है तो वो उसके दिल में जल्दी उतरती है शिक्षा का एक बहुत बड़ा उद्देश्य कहा गया है और एक जो शिक्षा का एक बहुत बड़ी बात जो शिक्षा में कही जाती है कि कक्षा तक शिक्षण को अपने बाह्य जीवन से जुड़ना असल में अंग्रेजी हिंदी में पढ़ाने में कई बार ऐसा होता है कि बच्चा क्लास में जाता है और कक्षा में पड़ी हुई चीजों को एक सूचना की तरह ग्रहण करके बाहर निकल जाता है और उसको अपने जीवन में नहीं उतारता उसे लगता है कि मेरा जीवन तो दूसरे तरह का है मुझे तो जो शिक्षा मिली है वो तो गढ़वाली में तो ऐसा बोल रही मेरी माँ ऐसा बोलती थी पिताजी ऐसा बोलते थे तो अलग अलग रहता है वो तो मातृभाषा में अगर हम बात करें तो स्तर पर काम किए जाने की जरूरत है एक तो जो उपलब्ध मातृभाषा का साहित्य है लोक साहित्य है उसको बच्चों के अनुरूप पुनर्खन की जरूरत है रिवाइट करने की जरूरत है और दूसरे में मातृभाषाओं में बच्चों के लिए बाल साहित्य को लिखवाए जाने की जरूरत इन दो शब्दों पर काम किया जाना बहुत जरूरी है धन्यवाद हकमान जी और जो बात आपने कही कि बाल साहित्य सिर्फ सूचनाओं का आदान प्रदान या संप्रेषण नहीं है किस तरह से बाल साहित्य जब वो अपनी स्थानीय भाषा में होता है तो बच्चों का एक भावनात्मक जुड़ाव उसके साथ और उसके साथ जो अपने आसपास की जो रिच हिस्ट्री या रिच हेरिटेज है उससे उसका जो जुड़ाव बनता है शायद वो किसी और तरीके से संभव नहीं है और आपने ये री राइटिंग वाली जो एक कही की मतलब किस तरह से जो एक सामयिक दृष्टि से चीजों को री राइट किया जाने की आवश्यकता है धन्यवाद अपाल जी
मेरा अगला सवाल चमोली जी से होगा तो चमोली जी जैसे ये बातचीत हो रही है कि बच्चा एक अपनी उसकी घर की भाषा होती है जो वो क्लासरूम में आता है तो उसमें जो भाषा जो हमारे मीडियम ऑफ इंस्ट्रक्शन है उसके माध्यम से हमारी पढ़ाई लिखाई की बात होती है तो बच्चा जब ये अपनी होम लैंग्वेज से मीडियम ऑफ इंस्ट्रक्शन वाली जो भाषा है उस पर मूव करता है तो क्या इससे और अगर ये दोनों भाषाएं अलग हैं तो क्या इससे बच्चे के अपने लर्निंग आउटकम या बच्चे का जो एक समझ के साथ धारा प्रवाह पठन की बात है क्या इस पे कोई असर पड़ता है जी चमली जी 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 आप सुन पाए सवाल जो मैंने पूछा जी जी जी, 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 जी हाँ, जो मैं सुन पाया मैं उस पर अपनी बात रखता हूँ कि बुनियादी स्तर पर तो ये बहुत जरूरी है कि हम सब सहमत हैं इस बात से कि जो घर की जो भाषा है उसमें हम लोग सब सहज होते हैं जैसे ये आज बातचीत हो रही है ये मुझे लगता है कि यह हमारी आम बातचीत है यह घर में जैसे हम लोग घर पे बात करते हैं और मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि अगर मैं हिंदी में सोच रहा हूँ मैं गढ़वाली में पढ़ता हूँ मैं गढ़वाली हूँ या मैं कुमाऊनी हूँ मैं जोनसारी हूँ तो जो मेरे सपने हैं उन सपनों में शायद इतालवी भाषा या फ्रेंच भाषा के सपने नहीं आते मुझे मुझे मेरी दुनिया के सपने आते तो ये जो दुधबोली वाला जो मामला है जो हमारी मातृभाषा वाला की बात करें जहाँ बगल में कुमाऊनी है बगल में जोनसारी है वो बच्चे भी वो उस भाषा में बड़े सरल है क्योंकि कक्षा तक आते आते बुनियादी स्कूल तक आते आते वो रोज खेलते समय आते जाते समय वो तीन चार भाषाएं जो उनके आस पास की भाषाएं घर की भाषा भी और अपने आस पास की भाषा लेकिन जैसे ही वो स्कूल में आते हैं तो जाहिर सी बात है हम केवल उत्तराखंड की ही बात करें बड़ा अंतर महसूस करता है एकदम से वो वहां पे स्कूल में जाके या तो उसको हिंदी में सब कुछ बोलना पड़ रहा है या उसको अंग्रेजी में सब कुछ समझना पड़ रहा है तो ये जो भारत की भाषाएं हैं और जो विदेशी भाषाएं हैं ये मेरे घर तक कैसे आए ये कैसे होगा ये एक महत्वपूर्ण सवाल है जिसकी तरफ इशारा हटवा जी ने भी किया और जो अभी तक की जो बातचीत हो रही थी कि बा जीव है उनको बचाने की भी जद्दोजहद हो रही है क्यों सवाल इस बात का नहीं है कि कोई भाषा बहुत छोटे से इलाके में बोली जाती है तो उसे छोड़ देते हैं या सवाल इस बात का भी नहीं है कि बहुत सारे लोग अंग्रेजी की ओर जा रहे हैं बहुत सारे लोग चाइना चाय जो हमारी चीन की भाषा है हम उस तरफ जा रहे हैं बहुत सारे लोग जो है पश्तो जानना चाहते हैं सवाल इस बात का है कि चाहे छोटे से समाज में बोले जाने वाली एक भाषा है उसको क्षेत्र की भाषा है उस क्षेत्र की जो संस्कृति है उस क्षेत्र का जो आम जीवन है उसको कैसे जानेंगे हम हम जब लोक कथाएं पढ़ते हैं फ्रांस की लोक कथाएं जापान की लोक कथाएं मलेशिया की लोक कथाएं श्रीलंका की लोक कथाएं नेपाल की लोक कथाएं तो वो होती भले ही वो हमारे हिंदी में होती मैं तो हिंदी में ज्यादातर पढ़ता हूँ लेकिन जब मैं लोक कथा पढ़ता हूँ किसी इलाके पूरा का पूरा उनका साहित्य पूरा पूरा का पूरा लोक जीवन वो कैसे सोचते हैं वो मेरे सामने आता है तो जो एन की बात हो रही है या हमारे जो शिक्षा के जो दस्तावेज हैं वो भी इस बात को कह रहे हैं कि कैसे अच्छा साहित्य हमारे स्कूल तक पहुंचे कैसे हमारे तक पहुंचे अभी पिछले सत्र में शंकर जी की कहानी महागिरी की बात हुई जब हम महागिरी को पढ़ते हैं जिसमें वो हाथी की चर्चा आई की हाथी है उसको डाल ही नहीं रहा है सारे प्रयास कर लिए गए महावत ने भी प्रयास कर लिया जब वो गुस्सा आ गया हाथी को तो उसने महावत को भी पटक दिया वो क्रुद्ध हो गया हाथी जबकि वो इतना शालीन हाथी था किसी के कुछ समझ में नहीं आ रहा है महावत का जो औजार होता है लोहे का नुकीला उसने उस पर से भी धार धार उस पर प्रहार कर दिए हाथी पर लेकिन हाथी फिर भी जो है उस खंबे को जिसपे वो मंदिर के सामने किए जाने को तैयार नहीं जब भगड़ मचा दी उस हाथी ने महागिरी ने और उसके बाद उसने उस खंबे को यानी वो पेड़ का जो बड़ा पहना है उसको फेंक दिया फिर वो हाथी घुटनों के बल पे उस गड्ढे के पास झुकता है और सूंड से उस गड्ढे के नीचे गिरी हुई 
में दिल्ली को उठाता है और बाहर रख देता है सारा मंजर बदल जाता है तो ये चर्चा यहाँ पर क्यों हो रही है कि ये जो हमारी अगर ये अंग्रेजी उंगलियां जब ये मुट्ठी बनती है जब ये मिलती है सॉरी तब ये मुट्ठी बनती है जो इस मुट्ठी की जो एकता है मुझे लगता है जिस और हटवाल जी भी इशारा कर रहे हैं जिस और रूम टू जी रीड फ्री भी जो चर्चा है जिस और मुकेश जी ने भी कहा कि इस ताकत को बनाए और बचाए रखने के लिए हमको हर भाषा को इतना विस्तार देना होगा इतनी संभावनाएं उसके अंदर रखनी होगी कि उसको लेकर का विभाग वहां का स्कूल उसको बचाए और बनाए रखने की कोशिश करे उसको आगे बढ़ाए ये अगर नहीं होगा तो हम कितनी ही भी कोशिश कर लें लगातार भाषाएं मर रही हैं अगर ये बातचीत जो हमारी हो रही है कि तमिल में होती तेलुगु में होती अभी अरबी में होती तो शायद हम हमारे समझने वाले या बोलने वाले या हमारे सुनने वालों की संख्या शायद कम हो जाती कुछ लोग लीव हो जाते इस कार्यक्रम से क्यों क्योंकि हम इसमें सहज हैं ऐसे ही हमारे बच्चे अब इसका जुड़ाव कैसे होगा जब हम कक्षा में सारी भाषाओं को महत्व देंगे चाहे वहां बच्चा एक बंगाली है चाहे वहां बच्चा एक मुस्लिम है चाहे वहां बच्चा एक उड़ीसा से है हम उसकी बातचीत को भी पूरा इंपॉर्टेंस दें स्कूल में और शिक्षक भी समझने की कोशिश करें कि यार हाथी को तुम्हारे यहाँ क्या कहते हैं तो इससे एक जो संवाद बढ़ेगा कक्षा में वो एक बहुत महत्वपूर्ण होगा और जैसा अभी अगर हम लॉकडाउन को ले कोरोना को ले जनता कर्फ्यू सुना हम हमने फिर कोविड नाइन्टीन सुना फिर हमने आइसोलेशन सुना फिर हमने क्वारंटीन सुना कोविशील्ड वैक्सीन अब स्पुतनिक लेकिन हम इसको रिलेटेड नहीं कर पा रहे थे इसके साथ आए तो हम इस कोरोना से अपने आप को स्थापित कर पाए कि हाँ यार ये महामारी जो है पहली महामारी नहीं है बल्कि ऐसी महामारियां पहले भी समाज में आई अब इसका इससे संबंध क्या है इसका इससे ये संबंध है कि जो हमारे स्थानीय संदर्भ है वो जब तक हमारी क्लासरूम का हिस्सा नहीं बनते हैं जब तक स्कूल तक आने वाला बच्चा अपने घर से स्कूल तक आते समय अपने परिवेश के संदर्भों से नहीं जुड़ेगा भाषी राज्य में जाते हैं तो हम बड़ा अनकंफर्टेबल महसूस करते हैं बड़ा ऐसा है महसूस करते हैं या हमारे दक्षिण भारत के जो साथी यहाँ आते हैं वो बड़ा ऐसा है महसूस करते हैं जो गैप है भाषाओं का इस गैप को पाटा जाना चाहिए और इसमें हमारी जो स्थानीय भाषाएं हैं उनको सम्मान देना उनको कक्षा कक्ष में पूरी की पूरी तवज्जो देना और उसके साथ फिर हमारी जो क्षेत्रीय भाषाएं राज्य की भाषाएं देश की भाषाएं विदेश में भाषाएं उन सब का कैसे तालमेल बैठे अगर ये नहीं हो पाएगा तो फिर वो मुट्ठी नहीं बन पाएगी फिर वही सब उंगलियों के तरीके से हम लोग काम करते रहे तो ये जो मुट्ठी अगर बनानी है पूरी दुनिया की भाषाओं को लेकर तो इसके लिए हमको किसी भी भाषा का विरोध नहीं करना है हमें हर भाषाओं के साथ तारतम्य बिठाना है मैं तो इतना ही कहना चाहूंगा और ये जो घर की भाषा है हम देखते हैं मैं माफ, माफी चाहता हूँ उन साथियों से सबके सबसे माफी के साथ में कहता हमारे बहुत सारे साथी स्कूल में अपनी कक्षा में और अपने समाज में स्थानीय भाषा में बोलने से झिझकते हैं और अगर किसी ने कह दिया गया कैसी बात कर रहा है यार रुक थोड़ा थोड़ा तो हम जो हमारी आत्मा में बसी भाषा है जो हमारी दुर्बोली है जो हमारी मातृभाषा है जो हमारी बोलचाल की भाषा है उसको बोलने में हमें तकलीफ क्यों और अगर कोई बोल रहा है उसको हतोत्साहित क्यों कर रहे हैं बच्चा अगर प्रातःकालीन सभा में समाचार सुना रहा है और उसने कोई स्थानीय घाम कह दिया धूप की जगह तो हम बरस पड़ रहे हैं उस पर क्या बोल रहा है घाम क्यों कह दिया हम पिल पड़ते हैं उसको तो कैसे हमारे बच्चे स्थानीय भाषा के साथ आगे बढ़ेंगे कैसे वो उस स्थानीय भाषा में रोजगार की बात करेंगे कैसे वो स्थानीय भाषा में अनुवाद करेंगे मैं तो ये कहता हूँ कि हमारे अब तो कह भी रहे हैं हम सब लोग कह रहे हैं रूम टू रीड ने कितना अच्छा काम किया ये जो दुनिया भर की जो का जो साहित्य है दुनिया भर का जो जीवन है वो गढ़वाली में क्यों ना आए में हमारी कुमाऊनी रंग भाषा में आए जौनसारी में आए कैसे आएगा 
जब स्थानीय भाषा में जोनसारी बोलने वाला बच्चा गढ़वाली बोलने वाला बच्चा जब जर्मन पढ़ी की कहानियां पढ़ेगा तभी तो उसका अनुमान करेगा कैसी पूरी हमारे एक गुरु जी को कहते थे बेटा उर्दू सीखो दो त्याई दुनिया को जान पाओ मेरी समझ में नहीं आया मैं कैसी बात कर रहे हैं आज समझ में आ रहा है कि किसी भाषा को जानना समझना उसमें पढ़ने से हम किसको जान पाते हैं तो मुझे तो ऐसा लगता है कि जो ये घर की भाषा और स्कूल की भाषा है इसमें जो गैप है इस गैप को पाटा जाना चाहिए और ये इसमें हम बहुत देर कर चुके हैं जैसे दुर्लभ प्रजाति क्या होती है भाई हमने दुर्लभ बना दिया ना किसी जीव को तभी तो दुर्लभ प्रजाति में आ गया अति संकटापन्न जीव है साल की नौ साल की सजाएं हो रही है फिर भी वो लगातार अति संकटापन्न में आ रहे हैं तो भाषाओं के साथ भी ऐसा ही है मनुष्यता के साथ भी ऐसा है संवेदनशीलता के साथ भी ऐसा ही हो रहा है कैसे जानेंगे हम कि जो साल के लोग अतिथियों का देवताओं की तरह सम्मान करते हैं कैसे जानेंगे हम कि मुंशियारी में जो मेले हैं लोक विश्वास हैं परंपराएं हैं उसमें कैसे किन्नी छोटे छोटे जीवों का बड़ा रोल है हम कैसे जान पाएंगे कि केरल में जो है एक पूरा महीना नदियों के साथ उत्सव मनाने का होता है हम कैसे जान पाएंगे हम कैसे जान पाएंगे समुद्र के किनारे रहने वाले जो बाशिंदे हैं वो समुद्र को किस तरीके से देखते हैं हम कैसे जान पाएंगे कि जो आसाम असम की जो नदी है उसको क्यों जो है देव, देवी भी माना जाता है और क्यों उसको आपदा का राक्षस भी माना जाता है जब हम वहां जाएंगे या हम वहां का साहित्य पढ़ेंगे तो मुझे लगता है पूरी दुनिया की भाषाओं को एक करने की जरूरत है जी धन्यवाद धन्यवाद चमोली जी और जो आपने बातचीत कही कि किस तरह से जो ये एक गैप है एक हमारी घर की भाषा और जो हमारी क्लासरूम की भाषा क्यों जरूरी है इसके बीच ऑलरेडी जो इतना गैप है उसको हम लोग पाट सके और कितना जल्दी इसको कर सके उत्तम बेहतर और आपने कई सारे अनुभव और कई सारे आपने एग्जाम्पल्स दिए जिसमें इन चीजों को हम लोग हाईलाइट तरीके से सोचते हैं थैंक यू चमोली जी और अब पैनल डिस्कशन का मेरा एक लास्ट सवाल डॉक्टर दिप्ति से कि अभी जितनी वॉट ऑल डिस्कशन प्लेस इन डिफरेंट कंटेक्स अबाउट द लैंग्वेजेस अबाउट द स्प्रेड अबाउट द पब्लिशिंग अबाउट द चैलेंजेस एंड ऑल सो व्हाट आर द डायरेक्शन दैट यू थिंक दैट एकेडमिक रिसर्च इन इंडियन लिटरेचर बुक्स इन रीजनल लैंग्वेज शुड टेक ओवर टू यू डॉक्टर दिप्ति thank you for that question i actually was getting to there in order to end um uh, in fact hamari puri conversation automatically is funneling into this question uh how abhi baat ye nikli hai that uh, schools have a very important role to play but i would also want to put some onus on the university students that are listening uh, to us uh, to students who are doing their graduation and post graduation aapki bhi equal responsibility hai when you are on to your uh, journey of studying literature it is very vital that we incorporate these um, uh, children's literature in various languages into our research into our study so i am going to share some directions which you can immediately put into practice after the, the workshop is over and sit with your advisor and go ahead so one of the first things that i would want to mention is we should not be treating children's literature in regional languages as a, as an isolated category the problem all these years that have ha- that has happened is we have treated children's literature jaise gujarati hai to gujarati ka ek island ho gaya and it is unconnected to the main mainstream um, uh, works so we what we need to do is uh, to ensure that do we embrace the terminology of uh, children's literature studies we embrace um, uh, you know the the specialist language we also have to ensure that um, the sense of separation goes away let me substantiate it through an example there's a very renowned magazine which i'm sure a lot of our uh, young students would have read it's a, sorry a journal which is called the book review kafi jana pehchana sa respectable sammaniya journal hai india ka now book review does monthly uh, journals right it has monthly issues 
Eleven issues are dedicated to literature for adults. One issue, which is around um, the Children's Day, is dedicated to children's literature. Now, my question is, why this sense of segregation? जब हम किसी और चीज का स्टडी कर रहे हैं, can't we incorporate children's literature also? So uh, the academia has to be sensitive that if I'm doing say gender studies or ecofeminism, I can look at children's literature as a body of writing rather than doing a specialist study on children's literature. The linkage, inclusion is extremely important. Uske alawa, what are the directions? One very important direction is what is called prescriptive criticism which is one of the age old functions of children's literature studies just me up ye bataye ki is this an appropriate work to go to a certain child so say for example um, um your zuba press has come up with a work like 101 children's books we love they do a small review they talk about efficacy of giving these books to uh, readers in specific age groups to aise study aap kar sakte hain the other method, the other way of researching is what is called bibliographic or historical method. So, just may aap apni khud ki local language ka pura history trace karke shiruat aur hamare yaha aaj hi kafi sare it's a treasure trove. I think Nan Kishore ji, Nautial ji and Chamoli ji are treasure troves. In ke in se aap ye workshop ke beyond baat kare aur pura ek historical perspective kare and you can immediately create a journal paper out of it. So, that's another method. Uh, the the third method that I would request, agar kisi ko bahut interest hai, ye bahut interesting sa tarika hai, it is called reader response criticism. To jo padhne wale bachche hai, unse aap mile, you do a survey of how they are responding to certain works and real children ke responses ko coordinate karke, you can utilize what is called reader response criticism. Uh, apart from that, you can also use what is called, what Aiden Chambers uh, calls uh, implied reader, implied author uh, model, where what you can do is um, uh, there is a way of thinking which says that agar hum bacho ki kahaniya padenge, if you are reading works for children, normally that is not what the children themselves have created. Kisi or ne bacho ko kya acha lagta hai and wo jo koi or hai wo mostly adult writer hai. To wo samaj ke uske bacche ki shoe mein pair rakke literally stepping into the shoes ye puri rachna ki hai. So this way, this strand of criticism which is also called childhood studies says that there's no point relating the, uh, the, the written work to children because um, uh, so then in that case focus on um, things like authorship uh, areas like what is called intertextuality uh, rather than looking at children so childhood study ek tarika ho gaya. one of the biggest ways in which you can research about children's literature just i'm just going to give a give a term to it is called um, looking at children's literature as a as an instrument of culture studies. So Peter Hahn says that more than any other literature, children's literature reflects society as it wishes to be. हम ये मानते हैं कि अगर हम में ये qualities नहीं हैं, बच्चों में ये होनी चाहिए. So as it wishes to be, as it wishes to be seen, हमारी जो नुक्स हैं, we don't want those to come out in public and give it to children. So as it wishes to be, as it wishes to be seen, and in the process, how it unconsciously reveals itself to be. So these are gaps. हमने क्या कहा हम क्या अपने आप को दिखाना चाहते हैं और हम क्या है सो so, ये एक बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग सोशियो कल्चरल स्टडी होगा एक एक भाषा के फोकस में सो यू कैन टेक अप अ लैंग्वेज एंड डू सच सॉर्ट ऑफ सोशियो कल्चरल स्टडीज एंड यू कैन आल्सो डू साइकोएनालिटिकल स्टडीज व्हिच 
focus on the the act of producing for children so the 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 uh, directions are limitless but what we need to do is focus on this body of writing as a valuable uh, tool for understanding the society understanding the act of writing and also in the process recreating the future so uh, it will be lovely if many of the students here pick up their summer projects based on uh, uh, what the discussions have taken them to thanks dr deepthi that was like uh... wish we were also the college students right now <laughs> because the way you narrated like different ways that we can explore into this subject be it historical methods you talked about uh, childhood studies you talked about reader response and that was an interesting like how the child actually is reading what is the child feedback i hope that would have been very helpful for the students here so in terms of the questions i think a lot of uh, some of the questions have been answered by deepthi when they are coming on the zoom and uh, there are few questions that are coming on the youtube also so there is one question that i'll put up for all the four panelists and i would like to listen to your opinion ek sawal isme jo youtube mein hai ki jab bhi hum logon ne literature ki baat kari hai to hum sabhi ne quote kare hain literature jo alag alag bhashaon mein chahe wo hindi mein hai isme mukesh ji ne quote kiya hai aur humne baat kari hai ek mang ki regional language mein to ek question isme aaya hai ki are we able to develop quality children literature in regional language yes or no and what should be done because if the literature jo hai ek agar us quality us gunvatta purvak hoga to uski mang apne aap banegi to kya ye ek point hai jise hum shayad is pure discussion mein shayad mujhe bhi laga ki shayad humne nahi touch upon kiya to main is cheez par ki regional language ki jo hum baat kar rahe hain kya isme quality reading material available hai यदि नहीं यहाँ जो भी आपका है उसमें आप ही क्या सुझाव होंगे तो इसमें ये कॉमन क्वेश्चन है जो मैं चाहूंगी सभी पैनलिस्ट इस पर जवाब दे मैं मुकेश जी आपके ओपिनियन जानना चाहूंगी इसके पहले पुष्पलता जी भी बड़ा महत्वपूर्ण सवाल है जहाँ से आया है और ये इसलिए भी जो आपका सवाल है की क्वालिटी मटेरियल अवेलेबल है कि नहीं आप इस बात से आश्चर्य करेंगी की हमारे यहाँ खासकर भारतीय परिधि की अगर मैं बात कहूं आप अमित त्रिपाठी को ले सकते हैं आप ठीक हमारे पड़ोस में मसूरी में रस्किन बॉन्ड है उनको ले सकते हैं उन्होंने जो बिंब उठाए हैं वो बिंब कोई बहुत आधुनिक या अति आधुनिक समाज से नहीं उठाए हैं उन्होंने हमारे जो गांव हैं हमारे जो आदिवासी अमित त्रिपाठी ने तो अगर आप पढ़ेंगे उनके शिवा ट्रायलॉजी या ये जो सीता रावण वाली जो सीरीज है आप आश्चर्य करेंगे कि उन्होंने उन उन चरित्रों को जिस ढंग से कंपेयर किया है और आधुनिक परिपेक्ष में उसको उसको हमारे सामने जो लाए हैं तो उसमें उन्होंने कोई महानगरों के किसी चरित्र को थोड़ी लिया है उन्होंने आदिवासी समाज के हमारे लोक जीवन के जो चरित्र हैं उन्हीं में उनको एक तरह से निरूपित किया है नए रूप में और मुझे तो आश्चर्य होता है कि अगर हम हिंदी वाले लिखते तो अब तक तो कब की मार खा चुके होते अंग्रेजी के पाठकों में इतनी इतनी सहनशीलता तो है कि वो चरित्रों को नई रूप में स्वीकार कर लेते हैं तो पुष्पलता जी बस इतना बार कहना है कि बहुत शानदार साहित्य है ये जरूर है कि जब आप उसको आप बाल साहित्य की परिधि में ढालेंगे तो थोड़ा सा हमारा जो लोक जीवन है उसमें कुछ कुछ बायसनेस तो है ही वो तो जातियों को लेकर हो संप्रदाय को तमाम लोगों को लेकर हो अगर उसको आप थोड़ा उसमें हल्का सा संशोधन कर दें वो तो आपको मानना ही पड़ेगा कि उस आप आज, आज का समाज समाज तो हमारा वैसा नहीं है तो बहुत शानदार साहित्य है और मुझे लगता है कि अगर इसको जैसे हटवाल जी की भी मांग है नए रूप में लाया जाएगा तो बहुत अच्छा रहेगा और पाठक इसमें रुचि लेंगे और लोग का तो भला होगा ही होगा हमारे पठनीयता का भी भला होगा शुक्रिया हाँ जी हटवाल जी तो जो आपने कहा ना कि रीजनल लैंग्वेज में क्वालिटी रीडिंग मटेरियल अवेलेबल नहीं है ये तो इस, इस पर तो मैं मैं स्पष्ट बात रखी है ना कि हम रीजनल लैंग्वेज में दो तरह के रीडिंग मटेरियल हमारे पास उपलब्ध है एक तो लोक साहित्य के रूप में जो 
परंपरागत है क्या ओरल फॉर्म में जो हमारे पास उपलब्ध है और इसको इसको हमको इसका चयन करके जो है हमारे पास उसमें पहले चुनना होगा बच्चों के हिसाब से और उसको पुनर्लेखन की जो मैंने बात की रिराइट करनी तो वो बहुत जरूरी है वो एग्जैक्ट हमारे लिए आज क्वालिटी रीडिंग मटीरियल आज के परिप्रेक्ष्य में आज की जो कंटेम्प्री हम जो बात कर रहे हैं टाइमिंग वो उपलब्ध नहीं है उसको हमको थोड़ा सा रिजाइट करके बच्चों को अनुकूल बनाना होगा अनुकूलन ये तो बड़े साहित्य में भी किया जाता है प्रेमचंद की बहुत सारी कहानियां हम बच्चों के लिए अनुकूलित करके हम पढ़ते हैं दूसरा ओरिजिनल लैंग्वेज में जो लिखा गया जो लिखा जा रहा है वो बच्चों के लिए अलग से नहीं लिखा जा ये भी मैंने बात कर दी थी जितना भी हमारा मैं गढ़वाली की बात करूँ कुमाऊन की बात करूँ गढ़वाली में लिखा जा रहा है बहुत सारा लिखा जा रहा है क्योंकि बच्चों के लिए बाल साहित्य गढ़वाली में नहीं लिखा जा रहा बाल साहित्य कुमाऊन में नहीं लिखा जा रहा इसको लिखे जाने की जरूरत है बकायदे इसको बच्चों के लिए रीजनल लैंग्वेज में आज के परिप्रेक्ष्य में जो हम चाह रहे हैं उद्देश्य परक तरीके से लिखवाए जाने की जरूरत ये चमुली जी आप चमुली जी आप सुन पा रहे अच्छा मैं भी अगर शायद चमुली जी का नेटवर्क इशू है डॉक्टर दीति के नाइ रिक्वेस्ट योर ओपिनियन ऑन दिस क्वेश्चन आई थिंक आई आई हैव थ्री सजेशंस टू आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन the issue of quality is very uh, closely tied with a lot of other issues one of them i feel is the respect that is given to children's authors children's literature ki kitabon ki agar hum baat kare if you go to any fair i am sure you will find thousands of books which are going to be anonymous ठीक okay, है तो पंचतंत्र का कोई वर्जन आ गया या कुछ आ, ज, आ, से आ, आपने सिंड्रला का एक वर्जन आ गया एंड दे बी अनोनिमस ऑथर कौन है इलस्ट्रेटर कौन है आ, किसी को पता नहीं है और थोक में आई मीन आई एम नॉट श्योर दिल्ली में मैंने ये देखा है यू कैन बाय चिल्ड्रंस बुक्स बाय वेट यू नो आई थिंक दिस मेंटेलिटी हैज टू गो अवे in a very very big way children's author deserve the respect for the work that they are doing and they are doing foundational work i think i would rank them even higher than authors who write for adults so that is one respect to the authorship and uh, acknowledging their authorship secondly i think um, uh, awards uh there are awards i'm not saying there aren't but uh, you know jis tarah se uh, ireland ne ireland when it wanted to revitalize its children's literature they came up with an award called children's laureate imagine nobel laureate ka ek duplicate version hai children ke liye version hai nobel laureate and uh, sibohan parkinson uh, who's a very dear friend she was a first children's laureate Uh, in um, uh, dublin she told around the entire ireland unhone puri mobile libraries ka pratha introduce ki aur 2 saal ke liye unhone bahut powerful kaam bachcho ke liye kiya so awards aise ho ki uh, thode uh, you know ek thoda sa uh, incentive deke chhod na de because i can imagine the sort of struggles that the author go through you know in terms of publication in terms of royalty i mean huge it is massive to so, ek um, samman uh, de is tarah se ki ek national honor ban jaye children's author hona that is another uh, the third thing that i want to mention is um, thorough quality checks anything that is unfiltered should not be allowed अनअडल्टरेटेड फूड को कैसे हम कंटेमिनेटेड फूड को कैसे स्टॉप करते हैं तो कंटेमिनेटेड रीडिंग्स क्यों जाने दे बच्चों तक सो आई थिंक क्वालिटी कंट्रोल थ्रू पॉलिसी हो गया एंड आई थिंक इन दैट केस आई एम अगेन गोइंग बैक टू द होल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ दो आर इन द एकेडेमिया ये क्वालिटी कंट्रोल का बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट काम टीचर्स प्रोफेसर्स रिसर्चर्स 
स्टूडेंट्स इन सबके ऊपर निर्भर है कीप राइटिंग इफ देर इज समथिंग दैट यू थिंक इज नॉट अप्रोप्रिएट रेज योर वॉइस एंड इफ समी डिजर्व अ पैट ऑन द बैक प्लीज डू दैट आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट यू ऑल्सो टू हैव बीन शेयरिंग अ लॉट ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन डिटेल्स यू नो विच लॉट ऑफ यंग स्टूडेंट्स माई फाइंड हेल्पफुल यहाँ पे ग्रांट्स वगैरह मिलती है जो चिल्ड्रंस लिटरेचर के ऊपर काम करता है सो यू कैन एक्सप्लोर आई वुड ऑल्सो वॉन्ट टू मैंशन समथिंग कॉल्ड यंग इंडिया बुक्स जो एक इंडियन रेपोजिटरी है ऑफ चिल्ड्रंस ऑथर्स देर इज देर इज देर आर रिव्यूज दैट आर पेस्टेड देर सो यू कैन डू Uh, you can you can start maybe a website uh, a student website which is something similar so um, i i think put together um, ye ye sari cheeze agar ho to quality ka issue automatically resolve ho jayega thanks dr diki uh, chamuli ji aap jud paaye hain चमोली जी आप सुन पा रहे हैं मेरी आवाज एनीवे अगर चमोली जी आप आवाज नहीं सुन पा रहे तो जो चैट बॉक्स है उसमें अगर आप अपने रिस्पॉन्सेज दे देते हैं तो वो सभी जो हमारे पैनलिस्ट एज वेल एज जो हमारे अटेंडीज है उन तक पहुंचता है Uh, मैंने टाइम पंद्रह मिनट ज्यादा ले लिया इस पैनल डिस्कशन में बट डेफिनेटली एक जिसे कहते हैं कि बहुत ही एक एनरिचिंग अनुभव जिसमें चिल्ड्रन लिटरेचर और उस uh, में एक एकेडमिक इंक्वायरी सी चीजों को देखना इट हैज बीन लाइक कवरिंग डिफरेंट डायमेंशन टू दिस पर्टिकुलर डिबेट अबाउट दो क्रिटिकल इशूज ऑफ वेर इट कम्पेयर एंड वी से शुड नॉट बी डूइंग इट हाउ interchange has to take place between adult and the children literature how this opens up new areas of academic inquiry inquiries or critical things about local literature during that space of an emotional attachment that a child can develop and uh, not just a matter of uh, information exchange it's much more beyond that when a child looks into the literature page how that has to be given a space in our own uh, classes and how our current national education policy also talks about promotion of indian languages as well as about multilingualism giving that space to child language in the classroom so i would once again thank uh, mukesh ji nam kishor atpal ji manohar chamoli ji and dr diti for giving their valuable time for this and hope we continue this discussion move forward i especially like the this uh, suggestion that has given by dr diti and this was something in fact we have been discussing uh, with kg hatpal ji and chamuri about this why the award doesn't come for the children literature writers <laughs> so thank you once again to all the panelists uh, over to you dr richa thanks everyone thank you ma'am thank you uh, pushpalata ji and to all the panelists uh, for that eclectic and wonderful thought provoking uh, discussion um i would now like uh, i uh, i also would like to share um that dune university is now uh, this year it's introducing three certificate courses in kumauni garhwali and uh, jonsari we also have an ma in theater studies being introduced uh, which is going to take up a major component of uh, kumauni garhwali and jonsari so today's ideas i'm sure uh, you know will be conveyed and we will uh, get we will have a lot to process in terms of all that is a take away from today's uh, wonderful uh, discussions a uh, lot of discussions a lot of a uh, lot of thoughts that were put up by dr deepi vyas i will um, uh, I, i'm sure you know there's they 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 are uh, going to be very useful for us uh, and we are going to keep them in mind we also have uh, a ba english honors course uh, where and, a, and an ma course where we also have one of the electives where we've got translated works in um, in english from translated from languages from uttarakhand uh, and um, here a couple of works are works uh, by the, the works related to children's literature so that's again um, you know so this blindness about children's literature needs to be revisited and we need to revitalize 
the whole field of language studies and literature studies at large is the takeaway. There are, of course, uh, this is not a this is not going to be a very simple, um, you know, unambiguous territory. It's going to need a lot more research. It's going to need a lot more investment, and it's truly worth it. So thank you so much for today's uh, wonderful ideas. And uh, I'd now like to. I'd also like to thank all the participants. It was wonderful listening to uh, Dr. Deeti Vyas, Dr. Nandkishore Hatwalji, uh, Dr. Um, Mr. Uh, um, Mr. Manohar Chamoli ji, and uh, now we will, and Mr. Mr. Mukesh Nautial ji. So now we will move on uh, to the next session, which is going to be uh, a session by Mr. Shakti Brata Sen. Uh, this session is entitled Children's Literature in a Digital World. Mr. Shakti Brata Sen is the program director at Room to Read. Mr. Shakti Brata Sen is he leads the literacy, literacy program and the girls' education program for Room to Read. Room to Read India's literacy program is a unique program that develops both literacy as a skill and a habit of reading among children. The girls' education program supports girls to finish secondary school and work with government stakeholders to advocate for girls' education. He has earlier worked with Pratham and is well recognized for his work in the area of children's learning in early grades. Shakti has been acknowledged for his work on literacy in Indian languages and scripts on scale and with the government for the last 15 years. So welcome Mr. Shakti Brata Sen and we eagerly look forward to this session from you. Thank you, Dr. Joshi. Uh, it is indeed an honor that uh, you know, I could be a part of this uh, wonderful series. I am myself learned so much. Uh, before I start, I would want to talk about certain things that, uh, you know, I would be talking about. So certain things on certain things that I would be talking about. First, um, for a change, you all are going to listen to the perspective of a practitioner. So we are thinking practitioners. We are not academics in the truest sense of the word. So room to read has given us enough opportunities to sit with books and with children and trying to teach them reading, trying to support them to become independent readers. So we could see the child, we could see the language the child wants to read in, we could see the script that the child is trying to learn to be able to become automatic readers. We uh, could see how teachers help. We could see how the government system works we could see what's the larger language politics of the region. We could see the larger multilinguistic mapping of that particular region. And we could see the larger thought apparatus, as uh, Foucault would put it. Let me just borrow his words. The larger thought apparatus between in, within which this entire thing was happening. So we could just sit in a classroom and we could see this whole thing. This has been one of our most enriching experiences. And that is just what I'm going to share with you. Number two, um, we are talking about children's literature in the digital world, in the digital format, in the digital space. And we aren't, as room to read, we aren't only talking about, um, we aren't only lamenting that children are not reading. Because we realize that whether it's on digital or whether it's on print, we are reading all the time. And so are children doing. The question is, what is the quality of the reading experience in these different formats? And what are we bringing to our children? So we are going to discuss that. And we will see uh, what, according to a practitioner, uh, a practitioner's perspective, is going to be is going to be relevant and worth inquiring. And number three, which is which is slightly personal, uh, I would want to uh, switch to Hindi as much as possible. Uh, 
but you will have to excuse my very very tattered hindi because hindi is not my mother tongue i will try to speak mai koshish to zarur karunga aur mujhse matlab acha sahi hindi sunne ka ummeed mat kijiye just just tolerate me so that's my only uh, request to all of you before we do all of this i think i will really get into and somebody needs to help me uh, with the time uh before i get into this let's understand how reading is happening where and, and especially in the child's brain because we say that learning happens at school learning happens at home learning happens close to a caregiver that's all true but what's the prime seat of learning is the human brain and we must take the help of cognitive neuroscience to be able to understand how literacy learning how reading happens in the brain and this is extremely important if we really want to take right decisions about the formats that we want to give children reading materials in digital or print um reading fundamentally is an ability to negotiate the script the code that's in front of you think of yourself as an adult reading is an ability to negotiate with the script with the code that's in front of you and go deeper and deeper and deeper into meaning when we say that if you if you look at yourself once as an adult as an adult reader you would notice that you are reading the script and as well as delving into meaning all simultaneously this is extremely important for us to understand which means that the text that in, is in front of us is a conglomeration of letters is an orthographically dense rich visual uh, you know stimulus that uh, wants us to give a response so it is a conglomeration of letters but it is also a coded human experience simultaneously so a word when you read the word elephant i mean i i used to i used to remember a child um you know she used to be really confused about i mean priti joshi today was talking about the symbolism in literacy she used to be really confused about when we used to say, when we used to say the word elephant she used to often say that you know the the word elephant is not the elephant i said completely so i mean that's true the word elephant is not the elephant but at the same time the picture of the elephant is also not the elephant so the ex, the the, the the experience of seeing an elephant that is in the child's brain and the experience of seeing the text somewhere if they are not coordinated well enough reading doesn't happen so the experience on the text and the text itself they have to come together and how does that come together to be very honest if i am reading with an effective speed let me use the word effective speed uh if i am reading with an effective speed when i'm reading something deep thinking pausing reflecting on what i'm reading when we do all of that we are maybe reading two words ahead thinking going back to the beginning of the sentence to understand it again so when this is going on our brain is processing the orthographic information automatically and this automaticity is key in letting me think while i am reading this is extremely important for us to acknowledge that are you thinking while you are reading now this thinking is not only about what is written written down just there it is also about 
are you thinking about what you are reading in various ways, in various perspectives? This is a practice children need to do right from the beginning. The entire uh, uh, you know, gamut of things where a caregiver sits with a child for shared reading, you know, strict literacy disciplines happen. Everything put together is all about initiating this independence that are you dealing with the text with all kinds of perspectives, through all kinds of perspectives? And are you thinking while you are reading? And mind you, you are, you are, you are free to think in various ways. And while you are inspired to think in various ways, you must be thinking about what the other is also thinking. So empathy. So putting all perspectives together, then when we process that information, we develop our own. We develop our own through our inner quest for meaning. But all of this just helps us doing it so. So the, if we have understood that if you want to become an independent reader, you have to think while you are reading and think deeply while you are reading. Let me ask everyone. I can ask myself. I mean, when I, as an adult now, get a message on WhatsApp suddenly, or when I see a Facebook, well, I'm not on social media, but when I do see a Facebook message and everything, which is talking about, you know, you know some political upheaval, some political statement, things like that, do I think and forward it to my friends or do I just impulsively forward it? Am I, as an adult, thinking while I am reading? This is a major question that we need to ask ourselves today. We will ask this question to our children for sure, but this is not only for children. This is actually when you are helping children to develop, to search for their authentic self. So the question is, are you thinking while you are reading? And more importantly, while you are in the digital media, when you are faced with an influx of information, with an avalanche of information, when बहुत सारे इंफॉर्मेशन इकट्ठा आ जाता है तब आप पढ़ते समय उसको फॉरवर्ड करते समय एक ओपिनियन uh, बनाते समय क्या आप सोच रहे हैं आई हैव ऑफन बीन टोल्ड बाय पेरेंट्स दैट ये तो हम ही बहुत कम कर पाते हैं आर वी are we thinking enough when we are interacting on social media? Let's not blame the social media for this. The question is, there is a unique proposition that every media brings in. The book allows you to sit in one corner and delve deeper. This is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful human experience that has been passed down to us through generations. Books provide us with the inner sanctuary. The question is, why do we forget this inner sanctuary? Why do we forget that what makes us sensitive, sensible human beings is this ability to think. And when this inner sanctuary for thinking is only restricted to books, I have a problem. We must be able to bring this deep experience into the digital media. The question is, I mean, you know, we, we talk about, uh, we lament, we lament about screen times. But you bohot zyada mobile dekh rahe hai. I'm, that's true. Dekh rahe hai. Uh, in fact, uh, ek, ek, humare ek, uh, um, सर्वे में देखा गया था कि पता नहीं अगर मैं अपनी भाषा में बोलूं पता नहीं अगला 
यू नो खाना कब आएगा बट हाथ में मोबाइल जरूर है एक स्मार्टफोन जरूर है एंड गॉड नोज वॉट द चिल्ड्रन आर लुकिंग एट डर लगता है सवाल ये है कि एज अ सोसाइटी आर वी डूइंग इनफ जिसके जरिए हम डिजिटल रीडिंग एक्सपीरियंस को भी एक डीपर कॉम्पिटिशन एक्सपीरियंस बना सके फॉर अस टू थिंक आई आंसर आई मीन मैं भी पता नहीं कब मतलब जरूर होगा कि मैं कभी कभी कर नहीं पाता हूं I think it's important for us to understand this particular issue. Um there is tremendous amount of cognitive neuroscience research in the world today which is uh showing us that uh one of the uh biggest casualties one of the biggest casualties today in 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 the digital sphere of reading is deeper comprehension this is a problem i do not think you know if if the child is using screen time a bit too much i would be too bothered because whether we like it or not we are almost here in a digital world so the question is if we are already there and look at covid and look at the covid responses that we all had to do uh since last year we had to go online we had to think of on sending online materials to children in our communities in in to our students we ha- we were bothered about the digital divide of india we were bothered about access by the children especially we were bothered about whether girls have the access to that one mobile phone in the family it's 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 a, it's a crisis of resources so we were bothered about all of that but at the same time we all created flip books we all created um online materials and we sent them to those children on whatsapp groups we asked teachers to forward it to uh, children we asked parents to show it to children and children were busy with the mobiles mobile screens so screen time is something which i personally have not been able to save the child from especially since last year but the question is if this is becoming a reality for us are we giving it enough thought are we giving it enough thought kya hum soch rahe hain that how to bring in that inner sanctuary like experience that we that we can create with a book within the digital media or are we only getting swayed away by the superficial aspects of you know dekhne mein acha hai bachcho ko excite kar raha hai cheeze i mean give them a football in the classroom they'll all be excited the question is are we giving them are we giving them that culture are we incorporating that culture in our families of deep reading i think this is the biggest question that i would want to ask all of you um do i have a little more time yes absolutely please uh, please go ahead mr sir okay right so uh let's understand this a little better uh i mean since uh, i mean richard ji has given me a little more time uh, i will just uh, i'll just just speak a few more things you know what uh when interestingly when that you know this new technology i i mean my words are mine the new technology called writing is going to ruin debate the culture of debate because the richness the lead intonations with its various hues and layers of meaning that an oral speech can bring into the table will not be possible in writing because writing is muted it is a text but it's muted and more importantly 
you will really need to think while you are reading a piece of writing to be able to understand what that does mean. So, सवाल ये है कि जब writing discovered हो रहा था, invented हो रहा था, तब भी लोग सोचते थे ये सवाल आ रहा था that what is the uniqueness of writing will do to the spirit of debate, to the spirit of inquiry, to the spirit of self-search. And well, as you can see, human history did march forward and did shape itself in various ways. I think very similarly with the digital world, uh, with, the, with, with the digital world, it is, it is extremely important for us to understand that once again, we are facing an important point in history. We are looking at a new technology, which is invading our space of reading, which is invading our space of discoursing, which is invading our space of thinking. How independently thinking are we? Sawal vapas usi pe aata hai. It's a newer technology. It's a, it's a newer space that we are dealing with. And more importantly, look at, a, I, mean, I, I mean, I don't know uh, whether children have Facebook accounts or not, but just look at yourself when you have a Facebook account. Um, they would give you several linkages to, to various, various things. So once you enter, you have options to click on and see connected things. So when you are watching, um, let's say, uh, mm, you know, something to do with uh, saints, you also have a link which takes you to the newest, uh, of, uh, you know, leather apparels that have been that has been created with snake uh, skins. That is also there. Do not think at this particular point that why is it there? Is it sensitive enough? It is just there because somebody needs to market a product. The question is, when I am getting these linkages, what through what framework of knowledge, through what framework of knowledge are we actually assimilating all of these reading experiences? The question, I mean, I think I have just one question in life. Are we thinking while we are reading? This is the most uh, uh, important. In fact, uh, when I'm dealing with education these days, when I'm dealing with various state governments, various uh, universities, various, uh, uh, I mean, you know, scholars, when I'm talking about, uh, you know, reading achievements, this is the only question I want to ask. And I promise you, I want to ask this for the next 50 years. Are you thinking while you are reading? Because thinking in what way are you developing an opinion for yourself, whether the digital uh, media is there or whether you're reading on print. Remember, this is a world which is demanding a biliterate brain. Imagine you are reading all the time whether it's on a TV screen, whether it's on a mobile screen, whether it's on a tab, whether it's on an iPhone or whether it's on a book. I'm sure you take, I mean, many people take books uh, very less, but in, in spite of the fact that they're never free from, uh, you, know, you know, an opportunity of reading. But the question is, if you are reading all the time on digital media, are you thinking while you are reading? And therefore the question is, what is uh, what is the uh, you know steps that we need to take for children? Because you are trying to, in a sense, have them prepared for an adult world that they will be forced to reckon with one day. So, how are we developing this discipline 
of not only ethical information processing, but also about deeper search for an authentic self. I think this is the most important, important, important aspect of digital reading that we need to highlight today. Well, that's my opinion. Over to you, uh, Dr. Joshi. I, for some reason, I wasn't able to unmute uh, myself. I hope I can be heard now. Yes, yes. So, uh, Mr. Sen, that was, uh, again, a brilliant discussion. Uh, I would like to take questions for Mr. Sen at all. Uh, does Do we have questions for Mr. Sen? Yeah, we do. Um, quite a few of them. Uh, Devjani Mitra um, asks, uh, in what ways cognitive neuroscience, in what ways is cognitive neuroscience relevant in children to develop learning and reading habits? Um, I would want to. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, this is unfortunately um, what the B8 colleges or, you know, you know, B8 institutions in our country have ignored. So um, they have taught, I mean, you know, learning psychologies, they've taught child psychologies, but they've often ignored, many of these B8 institutions have often ignored uh, the, uh, the basic tenets of cognitive neuroscience because that's the basis of learning. It's, as I've said, it's the brain is the basis of learning. So it's very important for us to understand how the brain learns to read. And there is a plethora of research. So, uh, you know, I can't go on and on and on, on, on with that, but there, are, there is a plethora of research. So one just needs to look under the guidance of, of a good professor. There's another question by Devjani. She asks, are there any significant differences between digital reading skills and non-digital learning skills she means here, she refers to all age groups of school students, among student, school students. Is there any, mm, are there any significant... I, I will talk about the primary grades. I will talk about the primary grades. You know, uh, the question is not, uh, it's, it's not a biological difference that we are talking about. It, so all learning is fundamentally about, you know, how the biological evolution of the brain interacts with the cultural evolution of the brain. So we are biologically programmed to read in a certain way. I mean, of course, but that's a statement with a pinch of salt in the sense that our brain wasn't designed to read at all. So it is a learned behavior in any sense of the term. So the question is, once we learn to read, we have taken help of certain biological circuits that were otherwise used for other things in the brain. So once we have learned to do that, and we are interacting with the, with, the, with the larger archive of human knowledge that has come to us for the last so many centuries, this interaction is what learning is all about, is what reading is all about. So this is fundamentally the premise. But the question is, what difference would, you, uh, would it make when it comes to a digital versus a non-digital media? is, I feel, is extremely dependent on the caregiver with whom the child is trying to read something. For example, for example, if a sensitive caregiver can actually take a tab and have the same experience as, as reading a book, I think it's not going to be anything harmful. But the question is, we must understand that the child loves a book it's very, very important for a child to handle a physical book. The physical book can never be replaced. The question is, in the digital space, can we recreate that for the child? If that is something which we are able to do, I think we will mitigate the difference. Otherwise, as media, for example, if, if a digital media, for example, if a child is seeing something which is... Uh, which is, which, is, which, is, which is full of, I would say, many, many distractions. 
and the child is looking at all of that but is also missing the fact that reading has got certain processes then uh, it is important to uh, think how would you mitigate that so there are differences but these are social differences these are not biological differences the question is how does a sensitive caregiver handle that i hope i have been able to answer that question uh, that's that's so uh, that's so um, true dr sen mr sen and there's one more uh, thing that you know i'd like to add here we've we've no we've known if i may if i may just uh, button for a bit um we've known very little about consciousness and the way it works you yes. know like uh, we don't really know about okay. her, the consciousness algorithm as such um so this is <laughs> the problem with other minds you know so uh, yuval noah harari in fact uh, talks about this you know in the modernist times this equation of talk what is knowledge you know you spoke about hmm. why are we reading that's the point you know why are we reading readings misreading and then knowledge is not just simply information overload it's he gives this if at all it can be put into a box he gives this formula knowledge is equal to experience times sensitivity true i think i think what you said is uh, is is almost i think prophetic in the sense that this is uh, something we need to really do why are we reading um, yeah. and that's a yeah. wonderful question as well put up by devjani so i think uh, dr sam mr sen really answered it quite well and um, makes us think a lot more uh, upasna asks um, if i may put up some more questions to you mr sen yes please upasna asks so uh, could you please share some things you have found useful in deepening the digital experience for children i'm going to maybe just ask two questions so that you could uh, then flow into another uh, the other question is uh, by upasna could you okay it's the same same question by devjani there's another question during this pandemic situation students are more dependent on online education than otherwise will it any way interfere in any way will it in any way interfere with general learning and reading habits in schools i think mr sen also uh, partly he said his worry is not so much about the screen space as much as it about it is about whether you know it's the seriousness and the deep reading that is actually happening so mr sen could you please answer that for us um okay i'll first take a pass on our question um the point i mean let let me let me look at this question how do we deepen a digital reading experience my question would be how do we deepen a reading experience first i mean what do we do about a reading experience so that it gets deeper and deeper and deeper if you figured that out please do the same thing for the digital experience there is i i i mean you know i have not been able to gather anything which says that for digital it is it is something special or it is something more modern or it is post modern or it is something terribly smart no it is not if one has figured out what is the way to deepen a reading experience anywhere you would do it in the digital media as well uh today priti uh was talking about a lot of deep reading experiences i don't know want to uh you know uh reiterate uh, all those it's it's already there so i'm sure you have heard it so the question is if 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 you can if you can think about what the text is telling you the text is a window to the world and the text is also the premise where you are creating your own meaning if this interaction is clear in your head you just need to do that in the digital media what's special what's so special about it nothing that's my opinion though i mean when i read why when i read i mean one day i realize that i read research papers more on my laptop screen rather than i get to see them on a piece of paper 
And I can tell you, I can guarantee you that I have developed this discipline that I can think while I'm reading on digital. It's not a problem for me. So the question is, are we independent readers? If we are, we are, we are going to do it anywhere. Hmm. Neuroplasticity. So um, Devjani Mitra asks another question. She asks, um, during this, um, no, Sharvani. Sharvani asks this question, in this modern age of smart education and the use of smart boards to promote education, could it be possible that in the attempt to, attempt to better education, it proves or it ends up being counter in, uh, counterproductive because it curbs the imagination of children in the classrooms by limiting it to what is being projected on the screen. In the sense, I think she means yes. uh, repetitive, you know, the kind yeah. of repetitiveness and teachers sharing yeah, smart boards. It's it's not only um, it's not only uh, that. In fact, somebody else was also asking about you know what's happening in the pandemic. The question is the the huge influx of digital uh, resources that we are seeing today, unfortunately, are not made according to the principles of learning. So that becomes a problem. You know, for example, when I'm teaching a child to read, the font size matters. What time frame, what is that working memory that you allow the child to concentrate with onto the screen to be able to process a simple sentence? What is the psycholinguistic grain size of the orthographic unit that you are processing there? All of these needs, these are technicalities that one needs to look at when one is creating those materials. If you really, really want to help children become independent readers and you're not just thinking about business, then you can create sensitive reading materials. We all learn digitally. I mean, I mean, we all do. I mean, it's nothing to be afraid of. The question is, are we doing it with the right information? Are we creating those resources with the right information? So if you are exposing children to, to, to digital ways of learning without actually helping them prepare to deal with this complex piece of learning, then it's not helpful. But if you're really, this is a paradigm shift that we need to do in the society. If we are doing it, then we are helping them. But most importantly, while we can get excited about the digital resources, everywhere on earth, we have to be very, very careful. Are we following brain science? Are we following culturally contextual and sensitive practices of learning? And are we actually thinking before creating resources for children? And are we thinking well enough when we are with them in this journey of learning? So that's what I could say in short, I can actually go on and on and on with this. Over to you, Dr. Joshi. Yeah, so uh, I mean, what I was saying is that, uh, you know, as we have said that if we are sensitive enough when we are creating materials for children, when we are helping children negotiate this newer form of learning, which is a complex form. Let me, let me, let me very clearly say that when we are interacting on a screen, when we are supposed to self-learn through our own motivation, not every age group or not every strata of the society is actually geared up to do this. The question is, are we helping them? Are we really thinking on equity issues? Are we really thinking on how to help children mitigate this larger Digital gap divide. of learning? You know, how do we help children to mitigate this new forms of learning if we are doing so? They, they have that space. We all have that space within ourselves that if we are thinking well enough and if we have developed a certain amount of automaticity, we will really think while we are reading. We just need good role models. We need the right kind of opportunities and we really need the right kind of culture. And that is where Room to Read is so committed to bringing uh, up a good reading culture for everyone. If I may ask uh, 
two more questions, Mr. Sen, would you be able to accommodate yes, that, please? please? Yes, uh, Sindhu, yes, yes. Thank you. So Sindhu Khanduri asks uh, that it is believed that children can develop good reading abilities simultaneously with speaking abilities. Um, and they can they can come at par with everybody. I think she's here trying to talk about the issues relating to equity, as you were talking about. Do you think children's books can help with that? And then I'm sorry, Dr. Rushke, I need to I need to hear that again. I lost it for a minute. Oh, I'll just repeat the question. Sindhu yes, Khanduri asks that it is believed that children can develop reading abilities simultaneously with speaking abilities, and then they can come at par. Uh, I think she here refers to both the speaking and the reading abilities that can simultaneously, beyond the point, can, can, can then pick up uh, simultaneously. So she, she's asking whether you believe that children's books can help with that, can help bridge reading and speaking abilities. Um, yes, but let's also understand this better, uh, that speaking abilities are often natural, but developing through social interactions. Whereas reading has to be explicitly taught and explicitly learned. Reading is not as natural as speaking is. So a book which actually mitigates and gives space to both is probably the best book. But you don't often get so, such uh, good books everywhere. So the question is, it is really, really the job of a caregiver. It could be a very, very uh, uh, systematically trained primary teacher or, a, you know, or an educated mother or a caregiver in the family who understands these things, at least the basics. I'm also a layman. I've just understood these things through experience. So when we are doing this and when we have understood how to actually help children learn and read, I mean, that has to be a passion for you. If you've understood that, you can actually help and that's helpful. Uh, so one question that has come up is that, um, Mr. Sen, why have you chosen that background? Would you like to <laughs> say a few words on it? <laughs> Okay. That's, I think uh, so, made everyone uh, so that's the evolution of the Brahmi Lippi, the Brahmi script. Uh, it's, it's the evolution which is there on, on a table for the last 2000 years. And uh, from, the, from the left, it starts from Brahmi and to the right, it goes to my mother tongue's script, Bengali. So I love the evolution of language and script in India. So that's why it's my, it's my background screen. No other reason. <laughs> uh, Devjani asks, uh, helping a student to be an independent reader is needed, but there are digital hazards as well. Does uh, psycholinguistic, uh, does psycholinguistic uh, skill in any way decline uh, due to overexposure of digital learning? Yes, it can. The question is, it is, the question is not about overexposure to digital learning. It is an overexposure to an influx of information, which is not getting processed with the right kind of time and deep processing skills. So if we are not thinking deep while we are reading, if we are not thinking deep while we are processing information, you know, I am talking about processing information as, as, as the prime definition of reading, but let's also not forget that reading is fundamentally for that inner sanctuary. It's for pleasure. You know, so if we have not reached that space and if we are only exposing children to, um, you know, to an influx of information, if speed, if we are just, in, in, just skimming through things, then deeper comprehension and various other psycholinguistic uh, skills are at a loss. So that's a problem. So the question is, how do we do it? I mean, that's, that's my first, I mean, you know, that's my foremost question to every educator, material creator, that have you really understood how the brain works? to be able to create something for children, to be able to create good reading opportunities for children. This is extremely important. 
Aastha Ohri asked, how is the digital play relevant in this pandemic for children? Digital play digital relevant play. in this pandemic. How to incorporate play um, through digital use? Um, you know, uh, I do not know much about digital play. Uh, but I am sure that, yes, theater, play, you know, these various modes of self, self-expression actually are wonderful to build up the real background knowledge for deeper engagement with the text and the society. I have, I mean, I'm sorry, I have not seen how a digital play works, you know, how a digital participation works. If it works, I'm okay with it, but I do not know, I'm sorry. So with that, I think uh, we may be able to conclude this session. This was a very productive session. Thank you, Mr. Sen, for being so generous with your time and for being so patient. You answered so many questions uh, with so much verve. And uh, thank you once again uh, here from Doon University. And uh, it was a pleasure associating. So Pleasure is mine too. Thank you. So we now um, move on. We uh, will, I, I request all the participants to fill the online feedback form, please. It's been made available to you in the chat box. Um, and once you've done that, I'd like to welcome Mr. Saurav Banerjee. Do we have Mr. Banerjee with us? Yes, I'm there. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Banerjee. Uh, I'm Dr. Richard Joshi Pandey from Doon University, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Doon University. Um, I welcome you to present the vote of thanks and uh, talk about the way forward. Thank you. Thank you, and good afternoon. It's a real pleasure to be part of this very enriching discussion for the last two days. I have been uh, a bit off and on on the sessions, but uh, I could gather the information that was being discussed in each of the sessions, and it, I would, I am blown away with the kind of uh, discussion that happened in the last two days. It's really, really so enriching. Uh, so uh, I'll just talk a bit about, um, and I think many of you already know that Room to Read as an organization has been working in the area of early literacy for quite some time now. And we, we have programs uh, to improve children's uh, learning uh, across several states of India. We are across nine states at this point, uh, including Uttarakhand. And, and when you talk of children's literature, uh, as has been discussed in the last two days also, children's literature, we believe, are a very important component of a child's literacy development. And therefore, it is very natural that as an organization, we focus a lot on good children's literature, make them available to child, and, and ensure that they have their rightful place in children's literacy development. Uh, as an organization, therefore, also it makes sense for us as, uh, as Room 3 to, uh, to continuously try to promote uh, children's literature among governments, among various other stakeholders, and, and basically even among, among parents to promote and popularize children's literature is, is a uh, key aspect of our work. Um, however, as you would have noted from the discussions in the last two days, children's literature is a vast field. I mean, it's, it's just so much just that you can talk about on children's literature uh, that there's no end to it. And we, we, uh, there's, there's the technical part of children's literature of what constitutes a good children's literature, what, sh what should be the components of it, how should the illustration work, how should the, uh, you know, the text work. Uh, so, this, so there's a whole range of discussions around that. Uh, there's this whole mirror and window concept, which was very articulately expressed by Alicia yesterday and then by Dr. Joshi, uh, Risha Joshi herself, uh, about the aspects of children's literature. Uh, the Honorable Vice Chancellor Man, uh, Dr. Dangwal, and uh, also Dr. Usha uh, Mudigandi, they also talked uh, at length about good children's literature. So there's this whole discourse around 
uh, quality of children's literature and how to kind of um, get to better children's literature. Um, then there's this socio-cultural uh, context and issues around children's literature, you know, things like language, things like identity, uh, gender, uh, what are the subtexts that we are talking uh, we're promoting, inclusion, and all of those kind of issues which are also related uh, to children's literature. And I think uh, Dr. Uh, Anto Thomas very eloquently talked uh, a lot about that yesterday. And today also during the, the panel discussion, a lot of these issues uh, did come up. So that's the second aspect of children's literature. The third aspect of literature is the business aspect. I mean, we didn't talk too much about it, but you know, this whole thing about supply and demand and how do you, and, and we seem to be in a busy circle because if we go to a publisher, they will say that, well, there's no demand for children's literature and that's why we don't publish. While if you go to a parent, they will say there's no supply in the first place. So there's, that's why you can't buy. So this whole supply demand gap, um, you know, financing, pricing, and all of those issues. Again, we didn't talk more about that. I think it was briefly touched upon by uh, Alicia yesterday and by Dr. Diti Vyas uh, today. But that's a whole area of discussion and discourse again around children's literature. <clears throat> Thirdly, I think um, there's this whole issue about chill using children's literature for literacy development. And again, a uh, very eloquent expressed today by Dr. Diti Joshi and some of the other discussions how how uh, literature can be a very powerful tool uh, for early, early child development in general and definitely uh, literacy development in particular. And then finally, the uh, emerging issue about, you know, uh, digital, digital content, digital literature, digital uh, books, and how uh, that's going to influence uh, our way forward in how we look at children's literature going forward. And and um, Shakti Patashen just talked about the pitfalls of uh, of overemphasizing and digital content, um, but also the fact that it's going to uh, be there. It's uh, there's no wishing away digital content, and how therefore, what are the steps that we should take in processing digital content and in, in trying to uh, promote digital content, and what should be the checks and balances that we need to have. So this. Because all of these various aspects of uh, children's literature, and while we touched upon all of this uh, in the last two days discussion, I think uh, in no way could we do justice to the various nuances of each of these trans and that and that can um, you know, that can be discussed ad nauseum uh, on all of these. Um, so as an uh, as an organization, our endeavor uh, will be to keep on, uh, you know, facilitating this kind of discussions uh, to, uh, you know, continuously keep the dialogue going. Uh, and 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 again, in terms of, uh, you know, our partnerships with the organizations like Doon University, uh, we'd also like to explore if, if we can have specialized courses on children's literature in some of the universities as well. So these are these are the ways which we think we would want to keep this uh, discussion going forward because we realize that there's much less discussion around children's literature that happens in India compared to many of the other developed countries. And, and there's a need and there's a uh, scope to further uh, up, uh, up the uh, discussion levels around this. And, and academia, universities, do play a very significant role on that. So we'll, we'll be happy to continue uh, this partnership with Dune University going forward uh, and, and look for uh, more ideas of collaboration uh, as we go forward. Um, finally, I think I'd uh, like to take uh, the opportunity to thank everyone who, uh, who were associated with this excellent workshop for the last two days. Uh, my sincere gratitude to uh, Dune University uh, to have partnered us in this workshop and to USAID who supported this initiative. Uh, uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. Surekha Dangwal, ma'am, and Dr. Risha Joshi. I think you have been uh, sources of constant inspiration and support and I, I can't thank you enough for, uh, for facilitating this workshop. Uh, quite naturally, Dr. Uh, Dangwa's introductory speech, where she so eloquently talked about her own life experience on this field, 
was so apt and so set the perfect uh, setting for the workshop, I would say. Thank you, Vice Chancellor Mann, for your thoughts. Uh, I would also like to thank each of the speakers, uh, Alicia Berger, Dr. Andrew Thomas, and Dr. Usha Mudigandi, uh, Dr. Risha Joshi, Dr. Preeti Joshi, Dr. Diti Vyas, uh, Sri Mukesh Natyal, uh, Sri Nand Kishore Hathwal, uh, Sri Manohar Chamoli, and uh, Shakti Vatasen for sharing their excellent thoughts on such important aspects of children's literature all through. Uh, special thanks to Pushpaka for facilitating the uh, panel discussion today. Um, I would also like to thank uh, all the students and faculty of the Dune University who have been such excellent audiences and any other audiences that I know there, apart from the university students, there were a lar large number of other audiences who also participated. My sincere thanks to them. I, I have been reading the chats and such excellent questions, queries, such thoughtful uh, expressions are really lovely to have this uh, discussion going forward. Um, last and not the least, I would like to thank the Room to Read uh, Uttarakhand team, uh, Room to Read quality uh, reading materials team, the IT team of Room to Read, uh, and all uh, others from Room to Read and from Doan University who have been working tirelessly at the back end to make this uh, program a grand success. So thank you to all of you and have a good day. Thank you.